Hey. Hey. Yeah. What's the minute? Hey. Crying machine started again. Oh. Flipping it. She can't be hungry. You're worse than flaming Oggy. Oh, stop using bad language, silly, are you? Oh, it must be a nappy again. Oh, you go and change it. I'll get breakfast. No danger. Oh, suit yourself. Ah, thanks, love. Come and get your breakfast. Oh, I'm not bothering. Oh, come on. Since when have you been so concerned about whether I have my breakfast or not? It's a long time. I mean, you don't eat, you're going to eat skin and bone, aren't you? I am skin and bone. Sit you down. What's up with you? Do you want your bread buttering or something? <sighs> oh, Stan. <laughs> Serves me right. I thought you hadn't remembered. Thought I had. Ah, oh, sure. Happy birthday from your ever-loving husband, Stan. Well, you don't always. What? Remember. If I don't remember, it's because of pressure of business. Yeah. Yeah, I know, Chuck. I know you've got a lot to think about. I wasn't going to mention it, you know, I mean, with us having such a run of bad luck and that. I was going to give up birthdays. Don't be daft. It can't go on forever. Oh, uh, this game as well. Oh, hey, that's got a stamp on. Ah, oh, well, I didn't post mine. See, you, you can't trust the post these days, can you? Oh, bless them. Oh, isn't that lovely? With love and every good wish for a smashing birthday from Trevor, Polly, Damien and baby Jane. Oh, of course, that's her, you know. She's a very nice girl. How do you know it wasn't him? Oh, well, if Trevor had sent it, he wouldn't have put his own name first. He's got better manners, he'd have put hers. And he wrote Snorri's writing. Look, Chuck, isn't it lovely? Hey, yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah, it. Oh, I say. Oh, aren't they good? Uh, yeah. Do you know what, Chuck? I think our look's changing. And it's ever since we decided to change the numbers on that front door. Oh, we should have known, you know. I mean, me, with my perceptation, living in number 13 and not bothering. <laughs> Here, we'll have to get this fixed up legal. Now, it's post office and town hall for you this morning, Milado, right? Right. You just see. A new chapter's going to get itself wrote in the history of the Ogdens, and not before time. <laughs> Oh, go on, ma'am. No. Please. I said no, and you live with me long enough to know that when I say no, I mean no. But you like changing her. I know I like changing her, and I like a bit of cooperation and all. I won't be here forever, you know. Thank God. There, you see? Oh, leave him, ma'am. Leave him be blowed. Much as I love her, I am not lifting another finger until Idle Jack stops twiddling his thumbs. Idle Jack is getting ready for work. Idle Jack's been getting ready for the last 20 minutes, hoping that somebody else will change his daughter. Look. You do it a lot better than he does. I do a lot of things a lot better than he does. But that doesn't mean he can shelve all his responsibilities. Ma! Look, Deirdre, I'm telling you, I'm not leaving you here to a life of drudgery. Oh. Now, in this game, it's share and share alike. And so far, he's shown as much intention of doing that as flying to the moon. Right! What do you want? Your daughter needs her nappy changing. Right. And if you ask proper, instead of behaving like someone not right, you might get a bit more of that cooperation what you're on about. Don't worry, I'm saying nothing. As long as he does his fair share, he can shoot his mouth off all he likes. Oh, he does his best, ma'am. Yeah. Well, it's a flaming poor best. Hell, oh, it's a shock, Father Hutt. Sharks wake you up, love, not put you to sleep. Oh, that a bit district nurse. Hey, have you got the bottle ready? Yes, the bottle's ready. I 
what you're shouting at. You do it very well. I'll tell you someone else I enjoy it. Except when that mother of yours is shouting the flaming odds. Oh, no, she's only thinking about me. I am her favourite daughter. You're her only daughter. Right. And you're her only son-in-law. Who else has she got to have a go at? Well, no, as I was saying, it will be a delight to drive to Derby next time I go to see our journey. Had some nightmare trips by rail. Yeah, well, they don't care about you unless you're going to London. It's like nationalisation, isn't it, Alf? Oh, what? don't start me on about that. <laughs> you know, I, I remember when that happened. It was great. New Year's Eve, let's see, was it 48, 49? All train drivers blew the whistles. I were at a dams that night with me auntie and uncle. How old were you in 1948? I were a child, weren't I? What, up at midnight? It was a special occasion to stop interrupting. It was a celebration dance at Railway Club. <laughs> my uncle were a signals engineer. And when they all blew the whistles, everybody got dead maudlin. How it was the end of the regime. From now on, it was going to be more efficient, cheaper, cleaner, brighter, happier, because now we owned it instead of them. Yeah. Didn't work, though, did it? Not so you'd notice, no. This new man's not much better, is he? No. All he's learnt is to put up the prices. Oh. Tell me, how come you remember all that as you were only a child at the well, time? Well, it all comes back to me every time I get a handful of oil off a carriage door. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, how, are you, how are you thinking again? It's a derby. Oh, yeah. Changing the subject, I Hey, <laughs> let's talk about post office, Alf. Hey, is it true they're going back to stagecoaches? Yeah, and little fellas with cleft sticks. Oh, shut up. <laughs> no, what I was thinking, though, um, your best way, you know, is on the motorway. M62 and then straight down the M1. Oh, you're going a bit out of your way that way, aren't you, Alf? It's still a lot quicker, though. That Ashbourne to Derby road, terrible. You get behind an oil tanker on there, you've had it. I think I'll have to take that risk, Alf. I've always preferred the country route to the interminable mm. motorways. Mm. Well, suit yourself, love. It's a bad road, though, he'll tell you. What are you stand? Well... Leak Ashbourne Derby. Bad road. Too much heavy stuff. Never used it much myself. Hey, uh, you all right, lad? I've got something on my mind. Yes, you haven't got your hat on, Lenny. Oh. It can't be out else. Oh, full of comedians, <laughs> aren't we? Our elder wants the numbers changing on our doors. So I've got to go to the post office and the town hall. I'm planning the campaign. Post office and town hall. Look no further. Alf runs both of them. Oh, why? You know what goes on, don't you? Yeah, well, I know you don't have to go to the post office. What you have to do, you have to, go to make an ac application to the engineer's department, tell them what you want and why, and then it goes before the Highways Committee. By gum, it's your lucky day. Alf runs the Highways Committee and all. What have I ever done to you? Well, that <laughs> could be the reason. Hey, Are you on the Highways Committee? Yeah, yeah, Stan, look, I promise that when your application comes through, I'll vote for you. Cross me off. Ah, great. Have a drink. Now, I haven't any more of this chicken baby food left, love. Shall I make it up with something else? Aye, right, all right. Now, there's decision-making for you. That kid's lucky having a dad like that. What's this Donald Duck soap? Um, well, Deirdre says you can get bars of soap shit like Donald Duck. It's for kid. <laughs> I hope it is. Anyway, I haven't got any. All my tablets of soap are shaped like tablets of soap. Well, leave it, then. Have you that, Albert? Now, how many fellas do you know are going to a shop and ask for bars of Donald Duck soap? One more crack out of you, mate, and I'll fill you in. Save your strength, Dad, for all them moonlit walks. <laughs> Have you seen the bags under his eyes? They're like underweights and nutty slack. Ah, oh, is she keeping you wet? Much. Well, will you put them groceries up and, and lesser the cheek? It's a shame, you know. You see, my mate Monkey works at this club that serves some of the United players, and they give him a couple of tickets for today's match. Now, I bought them off him thinking that my friend Raymond might like one on account that he used to be a masculine sort of fella who liked football. Now, what do you think, Albert? Any point in asking? Don't talk your dad talk to me. Of course, I can see the problem. I mean, you can't get them prams through the turnstiles, can you? Listen, Diddy, man, get your ticket, slap it on the counter, tell us how much you want, and then shut that mersey tunnel of a chops. It's a pleasure to do business with you. Give us a quid and we'll call it straight. Done. Now, can I have my groceries? Hey, you're never going to that football match in this weather, are you? You want your brains testing. It's freezing out there. Listen, if I can get rid of my mother-in-law for an afternoon, I'd sit and watch North Pole flaming nomads and my wife runs. And if you don't, there's nothing lost, because I bought the ones I like. Oh, how lovely. Do you know, it's funny, that. Stan was only saying this morning I was going to skin and bone. That and these will fatten me up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and might I say, I don't believe all I hear about the younger end. You can show your elders up when you try. 
I mean, there's Elsie Tanner lived next door to me since the year dot. You could snuff it for all she cares. Do you know, she wouldn't lift a finger. She paid half towards them. Oh. Oh, well, uh, will you thank her on my behalf? <laughs> Must be improving in her old age. I'll tell her that. Oh, no, no, just just thank her. And thank you again. Pleasure. Hey, uh, did I see Stan out there when I let you in? Yeah. What's he doing? I've not to say. Oh, up to his tricks again, is he? Well, uh, if he's still there, will you tell him his dinner's nearly ready? Yeah. Smells good and all. Ah, so it should. Like a lamb. Like a lamb? Oh, only a little one. Well, I mean, it's like eating gold, isn't it? <laughs> Still, it is my birthday. Can't be miserable all your life, can you? But I'll tell him. Right, tell. Tell, tell. Elda! I'm in here! Elda! What do you want? Come here, I've got something to show you. What? Come here! Well, what do you think? Well, what do I think, what? The door! Where did you get them? Woolies. They had black ones, but I thought you'd rather have rust. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're very nice, then. Very nice indeed, Jack. Ah. I'll give us your key. Yeah. Holding me old trousers. How many you got yours? What, in my pinny pocket? Don't talk to us. Back door off. With our luck, what do you think? Well, Stanley, it's another fine mess you've got me into. Search though you may, you'll never find who sent this loving valentine. Ah. Well, that's a waste of rotten money. Why? Well, what's the point of sending it? If whoever receives it never go it knows she got it from. Well, that is the point of valentine. Is it, take? Well, I know they're not signed, but you're supposed to have some idea who sent it. Oh, no, Rita, you've got it all wrong. Oh, I mean, these aren't ordinary messages. Oh. No, they're declarations of secret love. Oh, now stop it, Rita. <laughs> declarations of secret love? What the heck's the use of them? Oh, I've told you, Rita, you'll only get me annoyed. I'm being serious. I mean, there you are. Sat at home without a shilling for gas. Your tummy flapping against your backbone. And next door, there's this fella. And all he wants to do is whisk you off in his big car for T-bone steak and chips. And does he ask you? Does he egg? Send you a valentine instead and you starve to death never knowing. Oh, I see. So what you're saying is that you'd rather have steak and chips than a valentine. Which do you want? The long answer or the short answer? Not that it makes any difference. They're both the no, same. How do you feel when you're singing all them love songs? What's that got to do with Price of Fish? A lot. Now, just think of the words you sing. Once I had a secret love, you'll never know just how much I loved you. Well, don't they mean anything? Cheer off. I'm not singing to me. I'm singing to them daft punters. Oh, I see. So, what you'd rather sing is keep your valentines, just send me steak and chips. Now, do you know that could get in charge? Oh. Oh, yes, Mr Tatlow. I'm after a bit of a present for Langton's baby. Oh. Uh, a dollar summit. Oh, you want something fluffy, then? I want something cheap. Oh, there speaks a realist. Get yourself on pension and see if you can afford to be hotels. Albert, just answer me one question. What? Would you send this valentine? Search though you may, you'll never find who sent this loving valentine. How much? 55p. 55p? What do I acres like? If I'd paid that much, I'd want them to make sure that they knew who it were from. See? I'm not the only one. I've told you, send me other cakes. Oh, you. Oh, here, hang on. We used to keep one on top of the door. No, not now. Well, Luke. No, oh, that won't be there. You told me to move it when they broke in the rovers. It's under the plant pot in the front room. Oh, very handy. All right, trying to knock it down, are you? Oh, I'm thinking of knocking him down. He's got us locked out. Oh, well, it happens to the best of us, doesn't it? Here, tell you what, let me have a go with my key. Oh. You never know, you're locked. No, no good. Try yours. Same as yours. Try yours. No. No, I tell you what. I'll see if Eddie's in pub. He'll get you in. He got me and Trisha in once. Aye. Uh, he got me in once and all, and I knew nout about it. Not a bad idea, that, you know. About time something useful come out of that fat lump. Which is more than you can expect from every fat lump. Uh. 
um, Albert's bought her a present. He says, can he give it a... Oh, isn't that nice? I've just this minute got her off, Mr. Tatlock, and I don't want to disturb her. Do you mind? Oh, it'll, it'll be all right, then. Uh, happen that can come back sometime when she's awake and give it to her then. We'd appreciate that, wouldn't we, Ray? Yeah. I'll walk down with you, Albert. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, are you sure you don't mind? Look. As long as she's asleep, I don't care where you go. Football match, moon, anywhere. As long as I can get my head down for an hour. I'll see you. We are the champions! Oh. You, Burke! Sorry. Right. Get your coat off, you're not going. I've paid for this ticket, love. I don't care if you bought the flaming team, you're not going. Oh. It's no use looking, Ray. You are not going. Don't blame me. Blame him. You! I forgot! I mean, it could happen to anyone. No, it couldn't. Not if they've got a brain in their head. Oh, shut up the pearl of you. What's done can't be undone. If you're not going to use that, I'll take it off your hands. Hey, hang on. I, I thought you said it was freezing out there. Yeah, you said anybody going to a football match today wanted their heads testing. Listen, I wasn't talking to you. No, and no, I weren't talking about myself. I was talking about you two youngins. I can stand the cold, I can. Hey, come on, save your face. There's a special football bus starting outside UCP tribe shop. Come on. What can I say? Goodbye. Forever. What are you doing, hypnotising it? I'm thinking, aren't I? Oh, don't you think we're in enough trouble? He's not in there, he's not in cabin. True, he wouldn't be, would he? Where's Elsie? Round the back, trying to spot a way in. Well, the map marvelly tries to mesmerise the door open. I'm told you, I'm thinking. Thinking. Well, there's no doing round there. There's a lovely smell coming through the keyhole, but nobody's doing out much about it. Smell? Oh, me like a lamb. Oh, so help me, Stanley, I'll swing for you. It's not my fault. Now, where's that spare key? Under the tramp pot. In the windowsill? Aye. Put your elbow through the glass. Hey. Go on, I'll put your head through in a minute. Oh. Go on, you daft apron. Oh, mind, mind, mind. It's too far. Give me strength. Come out the way, you fathead. Come on. Oh, it's our house. Oh, uh, I'll vouch for that. Ah, now don't you just stand there. Do something. May I ask what you're trying to do exactly? Look, there's a spare key under a plant pot inside there. We're locked out. You do surprise me. It's just across this side if you can reach. Oh, he's got it. Oh. Ah, madam. And if the opportunity arises, perhaps you'll put in a good word for the police. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> I know. Now, you stay where you are. If that leg of lamb's ruined, I'm liable to stuff the whole lot down your throat, bones and all. Oh, no! I can't stand violence. I mean, the grapes aren't actually grown in Britain, are they? I mean, it's only bottled here. That's why it's called British Sherry. I mean, where are the grapes actually grown? We don't ask. You got nothing cheaper? I'll have a bottle of malt vinegar if you're not particular. Now, is it for me? Ask yourself. Do I spend money on luxuries for myself? Luxuries? <laughs> oh, it's for Hilda's birthday, actually, which hasn't been too spectacular so far, on account that she's been locked out and her leg of lamp Don't being Don't tell me. I've had a blow-by-blow blow account. Have you seen Stanley lately? Not since the misfortune started. Bottle of tonic wine wouldn't come amiss. Mm, dear, oh dear. Stanley in the walls again, is he? Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is to get me into Hilda's good books, so she might take me back as a lodger. You crafty monkey. Well, you've got to do it for yourself in this life, you know. Take it from one that knows. The world does nothing for the single fella. How's your Terry, by the way? Oh, it's not so bad. Joined up again, you know. Yeah, good idea, that. I mean, if you're going to get shot at, you may as well get paid for it, mightn't you? <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll take this. You're a brave lad. Ariel says you wouldn't have minded, only legs of lamb don't grow on trees. Do you know what she wants to do, Stan? She wants to get herself a freezer and take you down to Willie Piggott's and have you cut up. Cos I reckon there's enough on you to last her two years. <laughs> Juicy and all. Girl off. Well, we've all to make sacrifices. Where's the birthday girl, then? Well, she's got a headache. Do you wonder? Give her that with best wishes from an anonymous admirer. What anonymous admirer? Me. Uh, don't open it now, you'll have Mrs Walker jealous. Tell her to take it home and enjoy it in front of her own fireside. 
Thanks very much. And next time she comes in, tell Mrs. Ogden to have a drink on me. Oh, thanks. Uh, I'll just have a pint. And a pint for Mr. Ogden. I said things would get better. Why don't you change those numbers? Well, don't push your luck, Stam. She's got a leg of lamb like a lump of lead, a broken window and a blinding headache. And a fiver from our Trevor. Which it'll cost to pour in a pane of glass. Like she said, don't push your luck. Yeah. There's only one consolation, Stanley. Things can only get better. I yeah. won't bet on that. Who said you could change your number? You did. You said it was all right. I said I'd vote for you. I didn't say the others would. You know what you've done changing your number? You've offended against the Towns Improvement Clauses Act of 1847. He hasn't. He has. Hey, it's hanging job, that, at firing squad, won't it, too? Ah, well, anyway, he's liable for prosecution and a fine. You want to get them numbers changed back again before anybody notices? Life's not worth living, is it? I don't know, Stan. It's Hilda's birthday, isn't it? Yeah. And she has something to be thankful for. What? Well. She's got you. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. And I'll tell you something else. No, Stan. Yeah. We're all thankful she's got you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Look, I said, come here. Well, why not? There's plenty of room for you. Hotels be blowed. I mean, if the worst comes to the worst, you can sleep with Ray. Right, then. Now, you know where to find me. Don't forget the M56 and the M63. Aye, and I miss you and all. That's why I'm glad you're coming. See you tomorrow. I know you own this house, but we do live here. And we've a right to be consulted before you saddle us with your friends, fancy man or not. Ray! And I'd just like you to know that if you had asked if you could stop here, I'd have said no, for the simple reason that I ate his guts. What's he on about? We've heard you talking to Dave Smith and he... You didn't. You mean it wasn't Dave Smith? There's a clever girl. Well, who was it then? Ask your loving husband. He's the clever dick round here. Cheese in pot, toast on table. Right. Have you fancy something more substantial than some eggs? That uh, tastes if you want. Tell me a food of milk, Jen. Huh? One thing I ate is a milk bottle stuck on the table. All right, all right. From now on, you'll get it in a milk jug. We do have one, as it happens. It just seems a bit pointless to me, pouring it in a jug and then pouring it in your tea. I'm all for cutting out the middleman. I thought you'd appreciate that, being in business. This doesn't happen to be a business, darling. It happens to be the place I'm living in. Well, all right, don't worry. From now on, you get it in a milk jug. Oh, you want your butter in the butter dish as well, dear love. I'll tip the marmalade into a little pot with ears on the side and a pixie hat for a lid. Great. Wouldn't mind an improvement all round. I mean, look at this. It's chaos. There's a plate there from last night. I hate mess. You don't hate it enough to help me to clear it up, I notice. And what about those shirts, eh? I mean, what are they doing? They're waiting for me to iron them when I get a chance. Oh, yeah, when you get a chance. Look, lovely. I was working till 11 o'clock last night. And if you think I'm coming back here and stopping up all night, polishing teaspoons and dusting cornflakes... Well, it doesn't have to get in a state like this, you know. Not if you clean up as you go along. One thing I hate is a mess. So you keep saying. Well, if there's one thing I can't stand, it's a load of grumbling and moaning. I get enough of that at the Rovers. I can do without it here. Especially over my breakfast. Breakfast? Breakfast? A cup of tea and a slice of burnt toast? You call that breakfast? Some breakfast. You could have had some eggs. I said I'd do you some. Oh, sorry. Oh, I've let that letterbox get filthy. Get away, you can see your face in it. Here, I'll have my lunch in the Rovers, if that's all right with you. Uh, shall I see you there? Well, I, I'm not sure. I can't remember if I'm on early lunch or not. Oh, well, have a good day, then. Yes. Bye. Bye. Morning. Morning. Here's your weekly. Oh, thank you. Friendly lot across there, aren't they? Well, that's always a good thing, I think, when people work together. Yeah, of course it is. See ya. Am I getting bags under my eyes? No, more like briefcases. Oh. Taking a notice of him, love. You look lovely. Well, I don't feel it. I feel haggard. Honestly, I know I'll never get used to it. Dragging myself to the surface out of a nice peaceful sleep just to feed Fred there. She never got off again properly last night, not after that last feed. Well, I must say, I never heard her. Well, you wouldn't downstairs, would you? 
Honestly, I nearly came in and got in beside you last night. And you were no help, pulling bedclothes over your head and whimpering. Father's privilege. Oh, father's fiddlesticks. Hey, ma'am, when can we expect this mysterious guest of yours? This, um, what's his name? Steve Bassett. And there's nothing in the least mysterious about him. I expect he'll be here about lunchtime. What's happened to Dave Smith then, eh? Give me the elbow, has he? No, he hasn't. I'm exactly the same as when I first went down there, Dave's manageress. And I'm on perfectly good terms with him. Oh, Ray, that'll bit milk, man. We go and sort him out. I think we owe him for last week and all. Okay. Listen, ma'am, I know Ray were a bit crude there, and he does tend to wade in a bit, but. Well, you must admit, you are being a bit of a dark horse about this bloke. Well, I tell you honestly, love, I'm not trying to be. But, I mean, it isn't the best time, is it, for questions like, who is he? What is he to you? I'm only asking for an approximate handle. Like, raise me husband, you're me mother, that bundle of washing in there is me baby. So, who's Steve Fassett? Three quid on for two weeks' milk. Your dad's going to be skint, young Tracy. Hey, don't wake her up. And what's all this Tracy business? It's her name. It is not, you know. She's going to be called Lynette. Well, I suppose either of them's better than going on calling her Fred. Look, what's wrong with Maureen? Nothing at all for some other kid. That one's Tracy. Lynette! I like the sound of it. Lynette Langton. Your auntie Maureen's got a bobber too, you know, Deirdre. Call her Maureen and you'd have something to show for it, wouldn't you? Your auntie Maureen can leave the lot to a cat's home for all I care. And your own if aunties are coming into it, what about my auntie Teresa? Now, she'd be really thrilled if we called the baby Tracy. I never knew you had an auntie Teresa. Well, I don't go around shouting about it, do I, Tracy? No, I don't. Tracy knows all about it, Tracy does. Harrison's in Kitchener Street, they're at worst. They still owe for December's. I've sent them two reminders. You've let it drag on a bit, haven't you? I mean, let them go right through January without having paid December. Well, I thought they were a bit short after Christmas. I thought they'd settle both payments at once. I wish people I owed money to were as soft as me about paying up. Ooh, you were not soft. No. No, not unless you call a stone wall soft. You're trying to take a rise out of me. A rise? That'll be the day. Well, I tell you what, ask me again when Harrison's and all the other people who haven't paid for their papers have paid me. How do you do? Yes, love. Uh, I'm after a Valentine. Aren't we all? Uh, no, I mean, one to send like. Yeah, I know, love. I'm just thinking out loud. Well, there's the selection. Is it something special you're after? A card that says it all, or one that just drops a gentle hint, or what? It's very hard to decide. You work across at Mike Baldwin's place, don't you? That denim factory? Yes. Yeah, I thought you did. I saw you going in this morning. Well, how about a funny one? There's plenty of them. Some a bit near knuckle and all. I mean, just look. Just look where that Cupid's got his arrow. Um, no, I don't want to joke one. I see. Serious affair, is it? Perhaps if I knew who it were for. Fiancé, perhaps? Oh, no. Somebody at work? Um, I think I'll have this one. Well, you could do worse. At least he can't mistake that for a tax demand. Whoever he is. Fly. It's different from this morning, isn't it? Oh, you've noticed. And guess what? I've got some bacon in for proper breakfast. Well, that's terrific. I'm sorry I was a bit ratty this morning. No, you were entitled. All these shirts nice and iron too. Blimey. You must have been zooming around like mad. You, uh, you needn't have done all this, you know. I didn't. Hey? I said I didn't. I got a professional in, Il Drogdin. Threatened I'd let Stan run a slate up at pub if she didn't do a proper job. Just a minute. You're supposed to be running this place. Housekeeper, that's what you tell everybody. That's just for public consumption, love. You're dead right it is. And I'm not having Hilda Ogden making an hole in the image. And I'm not paying too lots of housekeeping either. You can pay for what she did this morning. All right, I will. And I don't want her here again. If you can't keep the place clean, I don't want you acting as an agent for a woman that will. I can cut out the middleman. God, gets more like home every day. That's one thing I don't miss now that I'm no longer my own boss. It's worrying about money I'm owed. Oh, I am. Yeah. Dead right. You mean to say there are things you do miss? Yeah. Well, you would miss them too. I mean, for example, the freedom to choose when you'll work and when you won't work. 
And you do miss being the bloke who makes the decisions and gives the orders, you know. Mind you, when I was giving the orders, I was only talking to myself. You've got a damn sight more security nowadays, though, you know. I mean, if things go wrong, the welfare state's going to look after you a damn sight better than they did when your business went bust. Well, could you spare me a minute? My darling, yes, anything you like. I need your advice, actually. It's about my car. Now, I feel sure that it's due for servicing. I just don't know where to take it. All these dreadful things one hears these days about garages. Could you recommend anyone? That's a tricky one, that, Ellie. I know it is, love. You see, if only Billy were here, he'd do it for me in a flash. If Billy was here, he could have done your service for you. He wouldn't charge you a penny, and you'd know that a good job had been done. Exactly. Well, give us a second, love. I'll see if I can think of someone, eh? Oh, hello. Uh, it is bitter you drink, Ernest, isn't it? Yeah. Is that for me? Oh. It's for way of saying thank you for taking me on from the dance the other night. Oh. Um, I never did ask you. You didn't get in trouble, did you? For being home late. No, 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 of course not. Well, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> See you later. Yes, yes, of course. Your little dancing partner, isn't it? Yes. Another pint? Yeah, the way of a refuse. A uh, pint for Len, Betty, please. I'm all right. Hey, Annie, love. I uh, <clears throat> think you might be in a bit of trouble, lovey. Pardon? Shh! Keep your voice down. Emily just popped in. Popped out again. Emily, in here? When? Well, just now. She came in and saw you talking to her from your factory. I don't think she liked what she saw. Not from the way she looked. She just turned round and went off out again. Oh, blast it. I, I thought I'd better tell you, love it. Oh, thanks. Yeah. One pint, love. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you darling. Ah. Good help. Yeah, excuse me. Oh. All right. Don't all shout at once. I'm only having a quick, quick half, so I'll pay for my own. I didn't hear nobody shout at all, Langton. No. What are you dashing off for, any road? Deirdre got your train for washing nappies? Oh, I'm a very modern father, me. You know, I can do anything for that kid. Change it, feed it, wash its gear, anything. Not that I have to, of course, with bland shovering. Baby's still quite well, is she? Oh, yeah, smashing Mrs. Walker. I've uh, been down the register office, make it official like. She's a proper little citizen now. I've put her on the country's books. Oh, is that the birth certificate? That's right. Of course, you'll not have seen one of them, Leonard, never having had one yourself. No, you, darling. Mercy. Right. Yeah. Personally, I prefer the traditional Christian names, but I do think that Tracy is rather nice. Hey, I thought Deirdre were calling it Lynette. You talked her out of that, did you? Well, no, no, exactly. Uh, let her have Lynette in middle. Uh. Doesn't she know you've done that? Well, she will do when I go home and tell her, won't she? You crackpot Langton, she'll go mad. Well, it's just bad luck, isn't it? Ah, she'll come round. Any road, it's a bit too late to do nothing about it now. You wait till she sees that. And their mother. Just wait. They'll have your head for a game of hopscotch. Back to the hospital. Yes. Oh, isn't she lovely? Well, we think so. Oh, she is. She's beautiful. <sighs> Have you settled on a name yet? Well, it's not definite, but we thought maybe Lynette. Lynette? Oh, yes, that has a very nice ring to it. Lynette Langton. <laughs> <laughs> She's smiling. She won't be if I don't get her home. She's due for a feed in 20 minutes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, Lynette. <laughs> Hi. Hello. There's fresh tea in the pot, if you fancy a cup. Thanks. Where's Deirdre and Tracy? Deirdre and the baby are in there. Tracy's a smashing name. Well, I don't happen to like Tracy. So nothing's decided yet, is it? I don't think you've given Maureen proper consideration. Ah, there she is, little love. Are you two still arguing about names? I wasn't arguing because there's nothing to argue about anymore. Here. What's that? Birth certificate. I registered it this morning. You did what? What's wrong? He's only gone and registered her as Tracy. I don't believe it. You went down there to that registry office without saying anything, without asking me. Well, somebody had to do so much instead of just arguing about it. You'd no right to do it on your own. Excuse me, but it's nothing to do with you what the baby's called. Well, it's got something to do with me. I just happened to be her mother. And I just thought that we waited... You had no right. I said this is between me and Deirdre. I don't know how you could do such a thing as go down there like that. 
sly, of course. Well, somebody had to make a decision. I hope you're pleased with it. Oh, come on, <laughs> love, never mind. It's not the end of the world. It's not that I'm dead against Tracy, I'm not. It's, it's just the way he did it. Sly. <laughs> I was not being bloody sly, just practical. <laughs> oh, that's all we need. I suppose that's my fault and all. Her name is Tracy. I'll go. You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm sorry, love. I didn't mean to upset you. You don't care what I feel. I do. I didn't mean to upset you. I just thought it was silly to keep falling out over a name. It was silly, wasn't it, Tracy? You always do exactly what you want. You're just dead selfish. Come on in. Deirdre, uh, I'd like you to meet Steve Bassett, a very good friend of mine. Steve, this is my daughter, Deirdre. Hello. Heard a lot about you from your mum. Oh, very nice to meet you. And this is Deirdre's husband, Ray. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah. Forgot the baby, Gran. This is Tracy. Oh. Got a present for her. It's in my bag. A panda. Is that all right? Oh, lovely. Isn't that nice, Deirdre? Yes, that's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Hello, Tracy. Nice name, that. A quarter of bullseye. Bull's eyes? Mm. We haven't got any. What? You're supposed to be running a toffee shop, aren't you? You must have some. Well, I'm telling you, we haven't. There's no demand for them. Oh, but there is. I'm demanding them, aren't I? Albert, as well as bull's eyes, I don't stop. Poke bonnets, spats and smelling salts. Times change, you know, and so do customers' demands. But there's still a demand for bull's eyes, only you won't admit it. Listen, if I get a stock of them in, will you come in regular and buy them? You didn't bother yourself. Folks are all the same these days. Out it's a little bit of trouble, they don't want to know. Oh, I bet. Ah. What's up with him? He's spoiled, that's all. His mother should have smacked his legs harder. Ah. Now, what can I do for you? And if you say bull's eyes, I'll strangle you. It must be years since I had a bull's eye. Have you got any? I just sold the last. Oh, well, not to worry. Now, what I really want is a box of chocolates. You know, something really nice. For Emily. Well, who else would I be buying chocolates for? Well, all right, all right. Don't jump down my throat. We're only asking. How about these? Gosh, yeah. One pound, twenty pence. Yeah, go on, that'll be fine. Ernie, it's a dead giveaway, you know this. You must have been a real bad lad. No, I haven't. Then what are you going on with a box of chocolates for? From what Deirdre said, he just drove from Warwickshire to see Blanche. Well, he's in a bit of a rush to visit her, isn't he? She's only been up here a day or two. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. He's not bad looking, are they? You've got a flipping romance going, you haven't you? I don't know, if it's a man and a woman, you always think there's something up. Well, most of the time there is fair cloth, except in your case. <laughs> He's a vet, I gather. Oh, yes. I wonder how she happened to meet him. Mm. Did she say managed? <laughs> happened. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. There is a vet quite near us. Uh, you know that place on Albert Road? I think it's mostly cats and dogs with him. The odd budgie yeah. and tortoise. I don't suppose it's like that, were you, Harry? Well, I get my share of domestic pets, but it's mostly a farm practice. Plenty of good farmland in Warwickshire. Sounds very nice, from what my mum says. You'll have to come and see her for yourself. Have you still no regrets about moving down there? None at all. Why should I have? Hello, love. What are you having? Nothing. I haven't got time. I just popped in for a quick word. Well, that's very nice of you. There's you, rushed off your feet. You haven't even got time for a drink. Yeah. Yet you still find time to come round here to tell me how sorry you are for shouting at me earlier on. <laughs> Listen, I've got a client coming up tomorrow to look at some gear. Now, he's an important fella. If he likes his stuff, a lot of money could be involved. So what? So let's lay on a nice feed for him, eh? Some uh, home cooking, only the best, you know. Oh, so I'm chef as well as housekeeper now, am I? Well, you can do it, can't you? Yes, I can do it. Right, that's it then. And you make it good. He's very important, so none of your northern rubbish, eh? Your every word is my command, or mighty one from the warm south. <laughs> good. Could I have the same again, please? Yes. I'll attend to this, gentlemen. Thought you would. So where does this leave Dave Smith? I'm still working for Dave. Still running the club for him. That's where I met Steve. And does Dave know about you and him? What's it got to do with Dave? Well, I thought you and Dave. I were... just work for him. If you say so. I do. And what about this Steve? Is he married? No, he isn't. He's a widower, as it happens. But I don't know why you're asking me all these questions. Don't let your imagination run away with it. Sorry to keep it waiting. I was talking to the landlady. Nice woman. Oh, cheers. Here's long life and health to Tracy. Oh, well, there's worse names, I suppose. What? Ermintrude, 
The hyacinths. Deirdre. Or Blanche, even. <laughs> I'll clot you one. <laughs> Ray went and registered the baby off his own bat, Steve. Wasn't the name we had in mind at all. Oh. Tracy. Do you know, I think I'm beginning to like it. <laughs> Hello, love. Hello. Uh, tough day at the hospital? No, quite reasonable, all things considered. Oh, good, 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 good. Um, a little present for you. It's a box of chocolates. It, it caught my eye in the cabin. Oh, thank you. Look, Emily, about lunchtime in the Rovers. What about it? Well, Betty said you came in and then went straight out again. You, you did, did you? Yes, I did. Why? I mean, why'd you go straight out again? I think you know why. No, I don't. Yes, of course I do. But you're wrong, love, honestly. What am I wrong about, Ernest? Well... well go on, Ernest. What am I wrong about? All right, well, you think there's something going on between me and Thelma James at the factory, don't you? Do I? Or is it, love, honestly? I mean... Emily, you do trust me, don't you? Emily? Oh, of course I trust you, Ernest. It's just... I'd what? sometimes ask myself why on earth you should love me. I, I do, Ernest. I'm not beautiful or attractive. You or, are, you know. Oh, no, I'm not, Ernest. And I, I know I'm not always as loving as I ought to be to you. And, and I'm... Well, I don't know. I... I don't know why you should love me. Well, I do love you. And I know why as well. So why not put all this rubbish out of your mind, eh? But you do hear about men perhaps wanting a younger woman. And I know I can trust you, but all these things do happen. Not to us, love. Look, Emily, can I just put one thing quite straight? I love you. And I don't want anybody else. I'm certainly not trying to start something up with Thelma James. All right. Yes. But... Oh, now what? Well, I think she might be trying to start something with you. Thelma? Oh, nonsense. No, she's a bit of a lame duck, that's all. She's a bit lonely. She was waiting for you this morning, wasn't she? And in the row was... I saw the way she looked at you. I think you should... Well... Put her straight... For her sake. Oh, Emily, I think you're making all this a, a bit too much, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not encouraging her, but I can hardly avoid her, can I? I mean, we work together. I know, love. But promise you'll speak to her, Ernest, and straighten it out. Yes, all right, I will. I promise. I do love you. Going back across the road for now. Listen, uh, I was thinking about tomorrow night. Let's make it a foursome, shall we? Who with? This bloke that's going with Jack Broadley's as human as an next bloke, right? So let's lay on a nice bird for him. You know, uh, just for the company. Make it a foursome. You could ask Rita, couldn't you? She's not too bad. Mind you, I prefer someone a bit younger if you could make it. I'll tell her what you said. I like a good murder. You know, while we're at it, let's have a little bit of finesse from you too, shall we, darling? Eh? Make an effort. Get yourself looking a little bit more upmarket, as they say in the trade. Are you cracking on that I normally go around looking like a slag or summer? <laughs> See you later. Hey, Rita, come here a minute. Hey, you sweat. You're right, Jock there. You're right. I mean, it is long best weather, isn't it? I mean, I wouldn't mind a shirt top to keep me warm and all. <laughs> What's up with you? Nothing. Oh. Betty? Yeah. How would you fancy a nice slap-up feed at our place tomorrow night? Tomorrow? It's me night off. Are you doing out with it? Not much. Yeah. Well, how about it then? I'll guarantee you a good feed and a few lasts after I finish here. Oh, thanks very much, love. What's it in aid of? Well, does it have to be in aid of anything? I mean, you like a night out, don't you? And some good grub, now are you on? Yeah. All right. Right, that's that then. Yeah. Roll on tomorrow night. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, sir. What can I do for you? We can't have a mere woman keeping a gentleman waiting for his pleasure. Thank you, darling. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Quite nice, eh? Yes, it's uh, hardly worth getting your step mucky for, Mrs. Walker. No. <laughs> Are you stopping for a bit, Mrs. Walker? Nothing. In here? Well, there's nothing I'm telling. No. 
I thought perhaps you wouldn't mind holding the fort for a couple of minutes. Oh, bet not again. Well, I only want to turn Thorfinn down. Look, when I gave you permission to finish early on account of Mr Baldwin's dinner party, it was against my better judgment. I mean, you do know Elizabeth isn't in, and if Fred's late... I know that, Mrs Walker, and it was very good of you. What I didn't bargain for was that you would be running off every five minutes as well. But... No buts, please. Now, if Mr Baldwin ever wants to hold another function at which your services are indispensable, I would be obliged if he would do it on your night off. Yes, Mrs. Walker. I can think of plenty of employers who would have put their foot down long before now and with every justification. So can I, Mrs. Walker, and I reckon I'm dead lucky that you're not one of them. Five minutes, promise. Yeah, all right. Well, put it in jog. It'll not cool like that. Had it then? Oh, yes. There's just this lot to finish. Another pile of washing in there. Dirty pots. There's not all that many. Not to mention Tracy to feed. And it's just out of this place looking like a muck hole. Oh, we'll tidy it when we get back. Never used to be like this. We never used to have a baby then, did we? Eh? No. Oh. Mm. Hey, come on, love. My mum will be up in a minute. Story of our lives these days, isn't She it? has been a great help. Wouldn't be going out tonight if it wasn't for her. And Tracy is the biggest thing that's happened to her for a long time. She does have her uses, I suppose. Of course, you know what my mum needs, don't you? Ha! <laughs> You're joking. She wants to settle down, get a fella of her own. She's got a lot to give to the right fella, has my mum. What makes you think she hasn't found one? What, you mean Steve? You've not seen the way she looks at him. Ah, but the thing is, how does he feel about her? Well, it's for your mum to find out. Listen, love, um, I'll be about another half hour yet. Why don't you take him out for a drink and have a little chat with him? You what? Well, he might be able to find out how his mind's working. It's not to do with us. She is my mum. Please. Do you know, I reckon he doesn't stand a chance. If your mum's half as crafty as you... Come in. Yeah, come on, she's not asleep. Hello, Steve. Hello. Um, Ray wants to take you out for a drink. Oh, I thought I was babysitting. Oh, it's only till I'm ready. I mean, you'll, you'll have seen enough of dirty nappies, a bit tight nights out. Yeah, come on, Steve. Okay, I'm getting a taste for the Rover's beer. Back in half an hour, Blanche. Uh, yeah, okay then. No hurry. Somewhat going on then, is there? Now, what should there be going on? Is that bottle ready yet? I'm gone. Yeah, another minute. We can't wait much longer, can we, my precious little love? Ma'am? Yeah? I've been thinking. You can go to night school for it. I'm trying to be serious. You know, when I was asking you about you and Steve last night... Yeah. ...and you said you were just good friends... Mm hmm You weren't telling the truth, were you? Of course I was. We are just friends. Oh, come on, ma'am. Come on, nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. Have you ever thought of settling down again? You what? You heard? Well? I am settled, aren't I? Good job, nice place to live. That is not what I meant, and you know it. If you want to know if I fancy getting wed again, why don't you say so? I do want to know. I haven't had any offers, have I? What about Steve? What about him? I just thought he might have asked you. Well, he hasn't. And if he did? He hasn't. Who's a hungry little girl, then? Look, Mum, it's only because I think you'd be better off married. And this kid would be better off fed. Come it up. There you are, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. 
It's uh, not exactly like Blanche Country Club, but uh, she does try and make up for it. A fair old pint, though. Fair old people, too. Very friendly. Yeah, most of them. There's good and bad, same as everywhere. You know, that was one of the first things that struck me about Blanche. She's naturally friendly and very honest with herself. <laughs> she was like a breath of fresh air among all that chrome and plastic of the club. I'll bet she doesn't get on with everybody. She has a row. She doesn't suffer fools gladly. Oh, she's uh, told me a few old truths. And I like her. You uh, ever thought of getting itched again? I've been very cautious. You see, I know lots of couples who are on their second time round, and a few more are as good as. Well, I suppose it rubs off a bit, but uh, <laughs> the older I get, the more wary I am. Well, some folks get knocked down crossing the road. Doesn't mean to say you've got to stop on the same side all your life. No, but it does make you look both ways before you step off the pavement. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it does. Now, you seem happily married. Yes, we uh, have us ups and downs. Our Deirdre's all right. Better than that. <laughs> Much like a mother? Very like, I'd say. <laughs> Look who's just come in, Ernest. Mm. At the bar. Yes. I've seen her in here in the evening before. Thelma. Where's Thelma? It's a free country. She does know where she stands, as far as you're concerned, does she, Ernest? You have told her. I haven't had a minute to myself all day, love. I see. No, obviously you don't see. I've been up to my neck ever since I went to the factory this morning. I've completely forgotten about Thelma. I've had more important you things to think... You me faithfully you'd have a word with her. Put her straight about you. Put an end yes, to her I unwelcome Yes, I did and I will, but I simply haven't had the time. There's no need to shout. I'm sorry. Not had time, you see. No. Said. Well, you've got it now. Now? I'll go and make some supper. I'll see you later. Shall we say in about ten minutes? Tape, you nearly cut me off in my prime. Well, I thought light were on. Well, since when has that been a signal for you? Come and scare the pants off me. In your over clothes. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Me floor. Well, I've got to walk somewhere. How about fast lane on them one? Oh, what the heck, you're in now. But it's just a drop of milk I'm after. And it's a bit, a bit bottled kind, and then Ken can let you have it back in the morning. Milk? Well, you run a cafe, don't you? That's true. And that's been shut two hours and all. Well, I thought perhaps you might have a drop left over. Look, I'll just look through these books while you go and fetch it. Hey, come here. Look, I'll do a deal with you. I'll go and get your bottle out at fridge if you stand still till I come back. Right. Milk. I knew we had none at dinner time. A daft question, but why didn't you get some then? Because I thought I'd Ken and fetch it. But he hadn't come back yet. He's, he's gone to one of them their conferences. They're a waste of time and money, if you ask me. Good night, Albert. Well, try very much for it, Mill. Good night, Albert. Do you know, I remember the time when shops like this were open from 7 o'clock in the morning to that past 10 at night. Mm, they didn't have customers like you to cope with, did they? Hello, Arnie. Oh, Thelma. Oh. Uh, is Mrs. Bishop not coming back? Uh, no, no, she's not coming back now. I was supposed to be meeting my friend, but uh, I think I got here a bit early. Oh, yeah. Still, you never know who you bump into, do you? No. Um, look, Thelma, I've been wanting to have a word with you, actually. Oh, yes? Uh, yeah, it's a bit difficult. I hope you won't take it the wrong way. What? Well, I know we see quite a lot of each other, because we work together, you know, and... Uh, but uh, things can be misinterpreted. What things? Well, well, what I'm trying to say is that it's not gone, gone unnoticed in certain quarters. I mean, you and I know it's all innocent, there's nothing happening, but uh, certain people, well, it's just got to stop, that's all. I mean, we've got to be a little less friendly. You mean you don't want people to think there's something going on? There's nothing going on. I know there isn't. And if there's nothing going on, there's nothing to stop, is there? 
Let me get you another drink. Oh, no, no, I? thanks. I've got to go. Uh, but uh, do try and remember what I said, eh? Oh, good night, then. Good night, Ernie. I don't know how you do it at your age. Oh, don't you start. Rovers <laughs> return, Mrs. Walker speaking. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> Who is it you want? Len? Oh, Ken. No, no, he hasn't been in this evening, I'm afraid. Mm. Right. Bye. Call for Ken. You haven't seen him tonight, have you? No, I haven't. Well, it doesn't matter. She said she'd call again. She? Mm. Didn't give her name. I think she rang earlier. Mm. Good evening. Evening. Uh, oh, large scotch, please. No ice. Evening. Evening. Oh, do you happen to know Mr. Baldwin, Mike Baldwin? He comes in here, I believe. He's expecting you, isn't he? Yes, that's right. Yeah, he left a message for you, actually. He's gone over the road to the factory. Ah. He'll be back in a couple of minutes. Thank you. Oh, it's a hard life. For some. Yes, for some. Hello. I'm not late, am I? Right on the nail, oh. Chuck. Hey, I wish you'd tell me what it was in aid of. Well, you've just come to feed your face, love. Oh, come on, let's have your coat. Right. There we are. That's it. Let's have a little bit. Oh. <laughs> there was just one thing, Betty, a little surprise. Surprise? What surprise? He's not come yet. He? Yeah, that's right. A fella. A fella. Hand it over. Now, I mean it, Bet. Look, he's just a mate of Mike's. It's just so he won't be the odd man out. Oh. And what does that make me? That Bet Lynch, I could throttle you. Now, look, Betty, what's up with you? There's nought to worry about. He's a respectable businessman. Look, come on. Hand it over. I'm having... Don't be so daft, Betty. Oh, daft, am I? Oh, we'll see about that, madam. Now, look, they're here. Now, you can't go now. Now, do me a favour. Throttle me if you must in the morning, but for now, get in that kitchen and turn them spuds down. Well, go on. Look, if he's not what you say. Betty, oh. go on. Ah. Good evening. Hello, hello. Ben, this is Jack Broadley. Jack, Ben. Ah, pleased to meet you. Well, I'm delighted to meet you, Beth. Oh, thanks, sir. Uh, can I take your coat? Oh, yes, thank you. Yeah. You, uh, you go through, Jack. I'll be with you in a minute. Right. Thank you. Where is she? She? Rita. She's not coming. She's what? Not coming. But I told you to... To get a bird. And? I did. Who? You'll see. <clears throat> Betty! Coming. Betty? Hello, Mr. Baldwin. <laughs> this is Mr. Broadley. Jack. Jack, Betty Turpin. Oh, I'm very pleased to meet you. Hello there. Uh, Betty, did you say? Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Perhaps Jack and Betty would like a little drinky, darling. <coughs> um. Finished? Just about. You're a nothing for work. Come on. Come on, sit down. I'm warning you. I may never get up again. I've been on my feet since eight o'clock this morning. And you wouldn't have it any other way. <sighs> it puts years on me, does all this, you know. What? Babysitting for my own daughter. Well, I ask you. You look more like sisters. Flattery will get you anywhere. <laughs> Had any pointed questions fired at you since I arrived? From Deirdre? Mm. Yeah, I have, as a matter of fact. Hey, she hasn't been doing the same. No, not Deirdre, no. Ray in the pub just now. Well, she's put him up to it. No doubt. Little madam. <laughs> what uh, sort of questions? Oh, the usual. It's been going on for years now. Why don't I get married again? And me popping up has given it more significance, hmm? Yeah, well, I suppose it has, really. I mean, you know what women are. Making two and two into an IMF loan. Why don't you marry again? I'll give you the same reason I gave her. Nobody's asked me. I'm well, not lately. I'll ask you, then. Hey. Will you marry me? Just like that? Not as far as I'm concerned. I walked into the club Saturday. No Blanche. What an evening. By ten o'clock, I decided the only way to stop you vanishing in the future was to marry you. And then, at least, you'd have to ask my permission. Chauvinist pig. <laughs> Will you? I'm very ordinary, Steve. 
Not to mention middle-aged. You're lovely and lovable, and I love you. I think I love you, too. At least I missed you like hell last week. Well, then? I will. For your money. <laughs> you won't be sorry. Trouble is, I'll never convince Deirdre that it's not all her doing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on, love. She's in good hands. He's a very nice fella. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Daft, isn't it? I've been looking forward to a night out like this for yonks, so now I'm here, all I can think of is whether she's all right. Ah, your mum knows what she's about. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you never told me how you got on with Steve. Did he say anything about him and me, mum? Not a lot. What about Blanche? Same. Do you know it'd be the mecking of me, mum? Mm. It'd be the mecking of us and all. How do you mean? Well, if she'd just decide to get itched, then we might be able to come to some arrangement over the house. Well, we know where we are about the house. Yes, we do, don't we? Three of us living in a piddling little converted bedroom with the rest of the house going begging for the best part of the year. Hey, it's funny how things change, isn't it? One minute it's a little love nest and the next it's a piddling little converted bedroom. Things have changed. If she'd just make up her mind, then, like I said, we might be able to come to some arrangement. She doesn't have to get married first. She's going back to Warwickshire, whether or not. <laughs> Fancy another wedding, you know. I like weddings. As long as it's not your own, eh, love? Well, I've done my duty by you, haven't I? And <laughs> don't you like to remind yourself? Hello, he's finally thrown you out, has he? Knock it off, Len. I can do without your witticisms, thank you very much. Unless they come in vodka glasses. I thought you were living it up at Baldwin's tonight. Who else? Well, he's got a mate over there for dinner. I thought you were making a fourth. Oh, yeah, that's right. I just nipped out because I can't stand sight of free booze. Yes, Len? Uh, can I have a vodka and tonic, please? I want a pint for me. Maybe the fella didn't turn up. He did, you know. I was talking to him, in here. Don't tell me. Slim, 30-ish? Uh, well, three out of five. Thin, 50-ish. Ah, well, it looks like somebody's done me a favour. Oh, well, nobody said out to me. Well, if it wasn't you, who the heck is it? <laughs> he only thought they were on a pub crawl. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs Walker, that's, that's the lady I saw in the bar. Oh, <laughs> Queen Anne herself. It's the legs, you know. <laughs> If you could just imagine her having to blow into that little plastic bag, oh, the indignity. <laughs> <laughs> and the ink not even dry on a driving yeah. license. Oh, Don't no. know which was greener, the crystals in the bag of Mrs Walker's face. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was lucky to get off. We were, you mean. Our lives wouldn't have been worth tuppence if she mm. hadn't. More coffee, Jack. No, not for me, thank you. Betty? Yes, all right. All right. Mike? Uh, no, thanks, son. I'll yeah. find you something a bit stronger. What about you, Jack? Yes, mine. Well, I, I'm just going to pay, pay a call. Oh, thank you. Excuse me. Sorry. All right. Yes, yes, that's fine. All right, I'm say, <coughs> Thanks, that's enough. Lovely. Look, I'm uh, sorry about Betty. Sorry? Yeah. I was hoping to get you someone a little bit younger, you know what I mean? <laughs> now, that I wouldn't have thanked you for. You wouldn't? Well, my name's not Mike Baldwin. For a start, you've got Anno Domini on your side. You weren't at a conference this morning. You weren't driving up the motorway all afternoon. Oh, no, you've nothing to apologise for. But least of all for Betty. I haven't laughed so much in years. She's great company. Cheers. Cheers. Hear that, Bet? Jack's fallen for Betty. <laughs> Fancy. All right? Sleeping like a... I was going to say a baby. <laughs> if they wait, Tracy... Just gone off. Oh, you, you clown. I'm sorry. I thought you said I was supposed to make a noise. And why are you to make a noise? Well, you never know what babysitters are up to, do you? I'll thump you, big as you are. How do you manage with Tracy, all right? Oh, just about. By the way, we're off tomorrow morning, uh, back to Warwickshire. I thought you were stopping a bit longer. I've got to be back first thing in the morning, I'm afraid. You don't have to go, do you, ma'am? Of course she has. Well, I didn't intend to, love. Uh, not till tonight. And what's happened tonight? Come on, tell us. Shall we put them out of their misery? Might as well. It's just that I happen to think, love, that a woman's place is with her future husband. Oh, Marv, you've not. <laughs> we have. Oh, Ray. Congratulations, mate. I hope you know what you're letting yourself in for. Yeah, I think so, Ray. <laughs> that is smashing. I was only saying to Ray. We guessed Rob. what you were saying to Ray. Yeah, we're not daft, you know. <laughs> Mind you, it'll be a wrench. Oh, I'll be all right, ma'am. Not you, you daft aper. Tracy. Oh. Oh, I hate leaving her. You don't have to, Blanche. I'm coming back with you, love. Of course she Shut is. Shut up, you. Look, why don't you come back with us for a while? Change of scenery, do Deirdre the world of good. That's not a bad thought, is that? We've got some holidays to come. 
It'd do Fairclough good to get off his backside for a bit. Uh, I take it I am invited. Of course you are. There we are, then. Simple as that. It's been quite a night. <laughs> <laughs> you love, you love me, diddly. <laughs> Jack. Oh, no more for me. Enough's enough. <laughs> Ah, isn't it funny the way things work out? You know, I wasn't looking forward to this evening at all. I'd much rather have gone straight back to the hotel and had an early night. But what can I say after a meal like that? Hmm? Thank you, kind sir. And such charming company. Oh, I doubt very much. I've enjoyed myself and all, you know. She's not a bad old stick in Tower Betty, you know. I say, not so much of the old, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't discussed our contract yet, John. Oh, forget it, Mike. It only needs my signature. I've seen your production figures and your delivery dates. If you meet them, then you've got yourself a deal. You can put your shirt on it. And if you can guarantee that I meet Betty every time I come up here, then it'll be a pleasure to do business with you. Way, well, you'll have me blushing in a minute. Ah, that'll be dear. You yeah. must come and see me if you come down to London. I will. No, I mean it. So does she. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Could I have your glasses, please? <laughs> I see you, Ben. <laughs> yes, nice. Hey, it's all right, Danny. Love, I'll get it. Rover's return. Uh, no, no, he hasn't. But if I see him, I'll... Yeah. Janet. I'm sorry, love, I didn't recognise your voice. Yeah, well, like I say, if I see him, I'll tell him you... Well, yeah, of course I will, if it's that important. Yeah, all right. OK. Yeah, turn around. Ken Barlow's missus. Janet? Yeah. Been trying to get him all day. Must have been Janice who rang earlier. What's she wanting for? They haven't seen each other for months. I don't know, but by the sound of it, she's desperate. on the way from the pub last night, but there was no reply. Where were you all? A little orgy. I'm allowed out after 11 o'clock, just occasionally, you know. And where was Ali Burr, then? Oh, big orgy. He's older than I am. Whatever it is, she can't wait. She must have rung the rovers half a dozen times yesterday. Hey, the toast looks all right. What's the tea like? Not so. Yeah. So what does Mrs Janet Barlow want with me, I wonder? I wonder. I haven't seen her in ages. Uncle Albert, just give me the basics, will you? You don't need to pack the flipping kitchen sink. Aunt Edith will wash your smalls for you when you're there. Could be getting off to Glasgow, if I can get him on the train, that is. Well, that's my good deed for the day. Whatever it is, it was urgent. Did she say when she'll be coming? No, she just said she'd see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's today, man. Oh, well, that'll probably be tonight, then, won't it, if she's working? Uncle Albert! She said she rang here, but there was no reply. That's why she rang the Rovers. Oh, you know, she would have rung Elsie. She doesn't have moved here yet. And Elsie was out too, was she? I don't know. I don't keep tabs on Elsie. I'll have to keep tabs on you, though, now that you're in the orgy class. <laughs> Folk concert, actually. That's your word for it, isn't it? Yeah. Thanks for the tea. OK, Leanne, I'll see you. Come on, Uncle Albert. Trains don't wait, you know. Not even for you. that middle age is always ten years older than you are. I don't think you've got that quite right, have you? Oh, well, roughly. Oh, roughly, me. Only I'd make it 15 years. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. Age is relative, isn't it? Oh, is it? Oh, philosophy at the breakfast table, eh? Look, you just stick to reading your patient's rude magazines, eh? Well, take Mrs Harris. If I must. Well, Mrs Harris said to me yesterday, take some of my humbugs over to the old lady with a hip in plaster. She looks a bit down in the dumps. That's very kind of her. The old lady was 85. Mrs. Harris is 78. Ah, so to 78, 85 is you old. You see, it's all relative. I suppose some of the kids at the factory would think I'm old. But to Albert Tatlock, I'm young. What are you to you? Oh, 21, of course. A, a very sophisticated 21. Oh, you'd have to be. 
Or what would a mature teenager like me be doing with you? Looking for Ken. Oh, didn't live here anymore, love. I do. Hey, Alfie. Uh, is it all right if I use up that bit of corned beef left from last night for my sandwiches? Only I'm skint this week. Oh, whenever you're not skint, yes, go on. Where's he living now, then? Oh, he's uh, gone back to move in with old Uncle Albert, you know, number one. Love, I've got to dash. I'm uh, working back over at the factory again. Uh, uh, how are you keeping? Fine. Oh, well, that's the spirit. Uh, see ya. Not five minutes since. Oh, you don't know when he'll be back. Can you mean? No. Now, they did have a suitcase with them, but I don't know whose it was. Could have been Mr. Tatlock's. Thanks. I, um, I dare say he'll be over at the centre later on. He's community development officer there now, you know. Yes. Listen, you're welcome to have a cup of tea with me if you like while you're waiting. No, thanks. Oh, it's no trouble. Could I have a bit of a warm and a chat? Catch up on the news? was divorced. No, he's separated. What's she like, his wife? All right. A bit cold. Must have had something about if I came to marry her. <sighs> Love, as I've no need to tell you, my chuck, is blind, as I know to my cost. She, uh, tried to seduce my husband. Mrs. Barlow did? Mm, she took a fancy to him and followed him to London, where he went on business, and then she tried to make a pass. What happened? Well, according to my husband, nothing. According to your husband? I believed him. So why did they split up there and Ken? Oh, well, she realised that Ken wasn't ambitious enough for her. Oh, he's lonely. Yeah, I know, but she wanted a posh house and detached in a posh area and all that goes with it and realised too late that Ken wasn't tycoon material. So she ditched him? More or less, yeah. Might have done the same. Would you? No. I'll end up with a good-looking pauper. <laughs> <laughs> Six lemon chews. Giving kids a treat. Oh, them's for me. For me dinner. <laughs> Your rotten dinner? They do not for me at all, I can tell you. I feel sick with hunger all afternoon. Well, pardon us, Chuck. I mean, we're both a bit thick. It's a qualification you have to have for working in this shop. But do you like feeling sick? No, but at least if I get some uh, chews in me, God, when they come round with ice buns and bags of crisps, I won't feel hungry. Ah. It's murder working in a factory. And my old man says if I don't get shut of some of these flab, he's going to run off with skinny bitch next door but one. Oh. It's only joking, I think. Oh, couldn't you nibble on a carrot instead? I hate carrots. Oh. I don't reckon much to lemon juice either. Oh. She thinks he's only joking. What? Her husband. You know, she'll make herself ill on that daft diet of hers and he'll still run off with skinny bitch next door if that's what he has in mind. That's what in mind, running off for a thinner woman. She's not got a lot going for her, you can tell. She chews her nails. <laughs> Miss News talking. Go on, slide the knife in. Well, you know that party that Bet were going to ask you to and she asked Betty Turpin yes. instead? Well, I met her on her way to work and she told me that that gentleman were very taken with Mrs Turpin. He found her very feminine. He'd have found me very feminine. Well, not if she's his type. He'd have found you all skin and bone. Oh, I probably found him very off-putting. Five foot tall, ten foot wide, Kojak Erdo, and no sense of humour. Oh, no, actually, I understand he was very attractive. He was nicely dressed and nicely spoken in a very pleasant manner. He'd had ever such a nice car. Mavis? Yeah? Have a lemon chew. I don't like them. I don't care. It'll shut you up for three minutes. So, when are you seeing him again, then? <laughs> See you. Now, fancy, man, the bet found for you. 
Mr. Broadley is not my fancy man, whatever that may mean. He's a gentleman of my acquaintance. <laughs> and if all gentlemen of a barmaid's acquaintance were her fancy man, she wouldn't get a lot of work done. You'd be on her list for a start, Fred. I wouldn't mind. Yeah, <laughs> don't bluff. Hey. Ah. You asked me out to your place for a bite of home cooking. I'll show you who's bluffing. No, you invited out for supper to a posh restaurant and we'll see who's bluffing. Yeah, you're dead right there, Mrs Sharp. Of course I'm right there. All, all, after all, they can get her, fellas. <laughs> all I can say is you must have a very poverty-stricken private lad yeah, if you yeah. want to take interest in mine. <laughs> we have love. Uh, I know different. <laughs> yes, Hilda, love. Uh, have a light tail. Yes, right. I see that Janet Barlow's back. Yeah. What do you mean exactly, back? Well, how do I know? I just bumped into her street this morning. Oh, I suppose she could be moving back in with Ken. I saw the milkman in the street this morning. I don't think he's moving in with Ken. <laughs> Ooh, you're very good at making mock, aren't you? It's all right, I'm used to it. I've got broad shoulders, I've had to have. But whatever's fetched that madam back round here, it's not no social visit. In my opinion, it could be trouble for Ken. At least as you hope so. Oh, I do not, Mrs Sharples. That's a wicked thing to say. I'm very fond of Kenneth. Why should I wish trouble on him? Suppose you would, not personal. But without somebody around here with a bit of trouble, you'd have now to talk about. Well, talk about pot calling a flaming kettle. Hey, ladies, calm down, will you? I can't stand all this aggro. It's giving me brain ache. Anyway, we'll all have something to talk about now we've got Betty's social life going full throttle. Mm. Oh, yes. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> You know that car you got in window? We've got about three dozen. The one for self con bed sit, FF suit ref biz lady. Oh, not the one for the ivory satin wedding dress, princess style, lavish lace trim, never been worn. No, that comes after I've got my self con bed sit. Uh. You've got to have a trap for it and start trapping. Why has it never been worn? Uh, well, perhaps she got converted to nudism before at wedding. Or maybe she miscalculated how much weight she put on and ended up wearing a smock. Or maybe he didn't show up. Or maybe she took another look at him and said, Nor on your Nelly. I like it. We women are conditioned to think of ourselves as victims, but we're not. The spiders and flies are both sexes. Oh, yeah. I hope I'm as wise as you are, but time I'm as old as you are. So what about this flat? Well, have you got the address and phone number if there's one? I want to go round now. Gail's giving me an extra long dinner hour. Kind of her. Oh, not really. She knows I'll soon have no roof over my head and I'll spend the whole afternoon moaning. I'm a good moaner. Mm. So what happened? Fall out with your landlady? No, I didn't. She fell out with me. Mm. Hey, what does ref mean? As in ref biz lady? Refined. Still, I expect you're a good actress as well. Was it the postman? Yeah. Why did he need to knock? We couldn't get through the letterbox. Oh, what on earth is that? I'm not quite sure. It's obviously a greeting card of some kind. It's not our anniversary or birthday or anything. Have we sent it the right address? Yes, yes. It's addressed to me, actually. Then open it, love. It's not from you, is it? No, Ernest. <laughs> get one? No, I did not get one. Did you get one? I didn't get one. Did Bet get one? No, Bet did not get one. Well, somebody got one because we sold loads. Well, nobody I know got one. Chuck, except a few kids at the factory. Mm. Them dead obscene kind. I wouldn't call them valentines, not even in my young days. Not even now, for that matter. Obscene's a new word for rude, Ooh, isn't it? Oh, yes, we're all better educated. We know a lot more words, but we're none the wiser. Just mm. makes the rows last longer, that's all. Well, I go along with Eartha Kitt myself. I'm just an old-fashioned girl. Forget the full frontals, give me June, moon and spoon and the <laughs> odd occasional soppy valentine like maybe see a girl. Hey. Listen, I'm one up on you. I know somebody that got one. Go on, show her. Make a day. It's from Derek. I thought there was supposed to be a secret. Well, he put his initials on the battle and DW. Could be Fred G. Oh, I would Fred G sign at DW. As a disguise. Oh, do you know, she's only annoyed because she didn't get one. Not even from Fred G. You know, he used to have a crush on her. He used to bring her little pot plants. Well, she hadn't had a little pot plant for ages. I never had a pot plant in my life. Just lots and lots of roses. Ta-ra, see you. Take more than a valentine put spring back in her summer. Bitch. And you. Mm -hmm. She's 
still a very attractive woman, though. And you, it's not always the obvious birds that catch the worms, is it? I mean, uh, think of Mrs. Turpin and a date last night. Think of me. You are not going to last the day, lady, if you're not careful. You're being childish. Oh, here we go again. Attack is the best form of defence. A stupid car! It is stupid and an absolute waste of money. She'd have done better to give it to Oxfam. Oh. Anybody would think it was my fault. I didn't encourage the stupid girl to send me the damn thing. She obviously thought it would be well received. Well, you certainly jumped... Why obviously? It, why could it have been a joke? From the girls in the office, a practical joke. Because knowing them, they'd choose one that was filthy or insulting or allegedly humorous. And they certainly wouldn't waste 75p on it. It was penciled in on the back. And if anybody's being childish, it's you. By going on with this absurd farce of pretending not to know who it's from. But I don't know who it's from. It's not signed, is it? It doesn't need to be. Who else is it but that silly Thelma thing? Well, all right, she's a silly girl, but don't blame me. So you do know who it's from. There's somebody at the door. I don't encourage her. Don't you? No, you know perfectly well I, I, I went to speak to her. I know you told me you spoke to her, but did you? It must be very flattering to have a young woman... Hello, Janet. Hello. Uh, you work uh, come in, come in. Oh, yes, right. of course it's all right. Come on, yes. Yes. Oh. Oh, hello, Janet. Oh, what an unexpected surprise. I'm sorry to put in. Oh, no, no, you weren't. We, we, we were just, um... We were just... We're just finishing lunch. Yes. How are you? How are things? Um, do you like a cup of tea? No, 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 I, I won't, actually. I, I was looking for Ken, but he doesn't seem to be anywhere around. Well, he, he won't be far away. I expect he'll surface soon. Yes. Well, I'll be seeing you then. Yes, pop in later, perhaps, and, and we'll have a chat. Yes, yes, yes. we yeah. must. Yes. Bye. 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 See you later. A silly teenage girl, yes, but... I can't understand a grown woman actually going into a shop and buying a thing like this. Perhaps it's because you're just not romantic. Not where other women's husbands are concerned. Hey, I've just seen her again not five minutes since going into Bishop. She's still waiting for Ken. She was around at our house this morning looking for him. Then she was a long wait then. Ken was taking Albert to the station and then he was going to spend the day in town. I doubt he'd be back before tea time. Oh, well, I think somebody ought to tell her that. I mean, she can't hang about all day in the cold, can she? You just said she were in the bishops. Oh, yeah, but she can't stay there all afternoon. They both go out to work. Oh, Hello. talk of the devil. <laughs> You're always talking about some poor devil or other, Hilda. Who is it this time? Well, uh, I was just saying as how you was entertaining Ken Barlow's wife. Been a long time, hasn't it, since she were around here? Has it? Oh. She uh, didn't give no hint, did she, as to what fetched her back all of a sudden? As a matter of fact, Hilda, uh, this is strictly between you and me, my friend. Yeah, won't go no further. I understand it was a 94 bus. <laughs> Half a bit of peace, friend. <laughs> You've made a mug in a flea in her ear, did you? If that's possible. Well, the skin's thicker than most, that's true. Hey, I don't know why Ken bothered marrying this bird. I mean, they weren't together ten minutes, were they? Oh, well, when it comes to making mistakes, friend, I'm the expert. <laughs> I'll second that. Yeah. But as to how we make them or why we make them, I'm as ignorant as anybody. Thanks, friend. Yeah. Hey, did you know that Gail's pal was looking for somewhere to live? So? Well, I suggested she should come and live with you. I mean, there'd be another rent coming in. What? House mother to a couple of teenage tearaways? Not likely. I've got problems of my own. Hey, <laughs> if I'd own my own, I'd put her up. Oh, aye. Would you be so eager if it was a poor, miserable old age pensioner? No. No. Well, at least you're honest. It was a kind thought, Thelma, but... Uh, I hoped you'd guess it was from me. Yeah, but you, you, you really shouldn't have sent it, you know. I could have got a cheap one, but it is only once a year. I know it was only meant as a joke, well, but... it wasn't you... a joke. No, I, I, I don't mean a joke. Uh, not a funny ha-ha joke. As a, as a pleasantry. But, you know, it's, it's all very well when people are unattached to indulge in this kind of thing, but it's a different thing altogether when one of the parties happens to be attached. Married, like I am. I mean, I don't misunderstand, but uh, other people do. Uh, like your missus, for instance. Yeah, well, anyway, 
I appreciate it, Thelma, but uh, please, no more Valentine cards. No more cards of any kind. I mean, we're business colleagues, so there's no need for... Well, there's just no need. I don't see anything wrong in sending a man you, you work with a Valentine card, married or not. Uh, would you like anything to eat? Um, a slice of toast. Uh, we do things on toast like beans or cheese or an egg. No, thanks. Do I look that much in need of a square meal? Oh, no, I only thought, you know. Go on, then. I'll have beans on toast. Oh, well, I mean, I wasn't trying to push you. Like, we're not like that here. I mean, anybody's welcome just to come and sit and have a cup of tea. Yes, I know. Well, beans on toast. Oh! I'm off now. I'll see you in about an hour. Oh, right. Well, well, well. Hello, stranger. Hello, Rita. How's things? Oh, fascinating as ever. And you? Oh, you know. Ken seems well. Is he? Busy? Well, if you mean work, yes. If you mean socially, sorry, I can't help you. Well, must love you and leave you. Got every date with my dentist. See you. Yes, all right, all right. She admitted it was from her. Well, admit is hardly the right word. I didn't have to drag it out of her. Oh, look, Emily, she's she's just a simple soul. I, I don't mean simple in that sense. She's, well, she's not devious. Like me, do you mean? I didn't say like anybody. It's just that she's not very bright when it comes to certain things. She, she doesn't see the implications that you would, that, that we would, I mean. Oh, I'm quite sure she saw nothing wrong in sending that card at all. Even though you were supposed to have specifically told her to stop embarrassing us both only the day before. She's not simple, she's moronic. Oh, she's not. Well, if she isn't, then you are. Well, you certainly are when it comes to dealing with this situation, Ernest. Obviously, there's only one thing left to do. Look, there is nothing we have to do. I've told her, no more cards, no more anything. And we all know how effective that will prove to be, judging from your last performance. What will she send you tomorrow? A silk tie and a bottle of aftershave? No, I'm afraid there's nothing else for it, Ernest. I shall have to talk to her myself. Hello. This is the best place you could find. I was waiting for you. It would have been warmer at the Rovers. I didn't want to go in there. Have you been waiting long? Not really. Oh, come on. Oh, don't blame Len. He did give me a message, said you were coming. But uh, you weren't very specific about the time. And I had a lot of appointments in town. That's OK. Right, well, uh, come on, let's go inside then. You do want to come in? Yes. If I can find my key. What do you think, then? What do I think about what? She's in there with him now. Who are you talking about? That Janet Barlow. She's in Ken Barlow's with him now. Oh, yes. Had them under observation, have you? I just happened to be passing as he was letting her in. Where are you? It's on to me, Mrs Walker. <coughs> so what do you reckon, then? What do you mean, what do I reckon? What do you think he'll take her back? Tell you what I think, Hilda. I think it's none of my business like it's none of yours. And if there is a chance of them getting together, it's not going to be helped by the likes of me and you shoving us noses in. I'll have a light out, please. You'll not. The towel's over the pumps and the stopping over the pumps till I've had my cup of tea. Now, shut that door on your way out, will you, lovey? Drunk with power, that's your trouble, Betty mm. Turpin. Yeah, and I'll little to you and all. Is it sweet enough for you? It's lovely, thanks. Aren't you having one? Yes, 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 yes. I'll pour it. No, for you. no, it's all right. 
I went to Elsie's. Oh? I didn't realise you'd moved. Oh, I see, yes. Uh, yes, I moved some time ago, actually. Thought I'd better keep an eye on Uncle Albert. Well, he's not getting any younger, is he? Or any sweeter. He's, uh, he's out, is he? Yes, he's got out to Glasgow, actually. See the twins. They're, uh, keeping well, are they? Fine. And you? All right. You? Fine. How is the taxi business? Well, I really wouldn't know. I kicked all that in the touch about a year ago. You're not on the dole, are you? <laughs> no, I'd probably be better off if I was there. No, I work for the local authority. I'm the uh, community development officer. I'm impressed. Are you? What does the job involve? Oh, well, pretty much what it says. Principally youth work. Oh, I would have thought you'd be good at that. I enjoy it very much, actually. More than anything else I've ever done. That's the important thing. You didn't think that once upon a time? No. But you've not really been over to the factory, have you? I most certainly have. Oh, well, what happened? Nothing very much. Your little passion flower had gone home. Oh, thank goodness for that. However, there's always tomorrow. Oh, for heaven's sake, Emily, if you're going to cause a scene over something so stupid as this, well, you're, you're just making yourself a complete laughing stock. I have no plans to cause any scenes, Ernest, merely to do what you're apparently incapable of doing, putting a stop to this once and for all. I mean, what would you suggest I do? Simply stand by while she runs after you right under my nose? Just ignore her. Oh, I've tried that already, Ernest. It isn't easy. When rather large and romantic Valentine cards are delivered to the door. All right, I'll have another word with her myself, just to make sure she's got the message. All right? No, it's not all right, Ernest. A word from you seems like water down a drain pipe to that woman. Emily, don't you think you're being just a little ridiculous? If anybody's being ridiculous round here, it certainly isn't me, Ernest. I know of nothing more pathetic than a middle-aged man being patently flattered by the attentions of younger women. Flattered? Well, aren't you? After all, she's not entirely unattractive, and you are, as they say, at something of a funny age. Now you are being ridiculous. You know, you'll have me thinking in a minute that you're actually jealous of Thelma. Oh, what rubbish. Well, I'm sorry, Emily, but that's the way it's beginning to look like to me. Frankly, Ernest, I'm not concerned about how it looks to you. It's how it looks to everybody else round here. Not having your Catholic sense of humour, I don't happen to enjoy standing by like cheese at fourpence while she makes a mug of me. And since you obviously aren't capable of discouraging her, then obviously I'm going to have to, aren't I? Do you uh, still not use these things? No, thanks. You don't mind if I do? Your funeral? There's a merry thought. Have you... Uh... Oh, yeah, no. Thanks. What do you want, Janet? What? What have you come to see me about? A divorce. Oh, well, when Len told me you were coming, I naturally assumed that... Well, what else would we have to talk about? Yes, I can see you would think that's what it was. Were you trying to say that that isn't why you've come? I happen to be in the area and... I just wondered how you were. I thought it was a long time since we'd had a chat. Do you want a divorce? It would tidy things up. There is that, I suppose. Are you still living with Vince? Yeah. Yes. How are things? Oh, fine. Well, actually, we've been getting on each other's nerves a bit lately. Oh? Two positive people. There are bound to be strains. Yes. Does he know you're here? He's away for a few days, on business. It wouldn't make any difference. We've always had that sort of arrangement, led our own lives. You haven't found anybody else, have you? Uh, no, no. Uh, well, not really, not seriously. Safer that way? Yes, yes, I suppose so. Look, Janet, I'm, uh, I'm sort of responsible for the community centre across the street and uh, I have to go over there for a bit. In fact, I'm due there for a meeting now. Oh. Look, do you mind if I hang on here? 
I don't seem to have much else to do at the moment. Uh, here? Yes. Oh, no. No, of course not. Uh, it may be quite a while, though. Oh, that's all right. I'll see you later, then. Fine. Pinned any passing flies to the board lately, then? Not lately. Find a bit of please, okay. though. Uh, you play a bit too, you then? A bit. Yeah, like uh, News of the World Finals. <laughs> I didn't win them last year. Oh dear, well into every life. Eddie Yates. Baz, Baz Wilson. Hey. Uh, you're not from around here, are you? No, just from you around here. Ah. You play a bit, do you? No, I'm uh, more on the managerial side, if you know what I mean. I see, yeah. Yeah. Mind you, there are one or two round here who do what? fancy themselves. Yeah? Oh yeah, just waiting for the right bloke to come along, scatter a few juicy peas under their noses. I get the drift, right? Yeah. yeah, I thought you might. You've got that look about you, you know, mean. <laughs> oh, hello, sunshine. Oh, hi. Uh, double scotch and water, please, Betty. Right. Fire, right. you're filling your boots a bit tonight, aren't you? Well, you know what they say. It's always opening time somewhere. Yeah. Everything all right, is it? Good question. Janet. You've heard of it. Well, I knew she was about. She was in the cabin this afternoon. 52p, lovely. Look, thank you. What did she want this time? I don't know. Well, what did she say? Oh, she just said that she was in the area and she dropped in to see how I was. Don't you believe her? Well, after all this time, I haven't seen her for 18 months. What do you think she wants? A divorce? I don't know. There's something about her. What? Well, there's something about her manner. There's something wrong. I can sense it. Ken's gone out, Hilda. Oh! Oh, well, now I'm done. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, you found him, then? Yes. Mm. Just a social call, is it? That's right. Uh, oh, I was forgetting what I'd come for. You see, I'd just poured Stan's tea out, and I found I hadn't got a spot of sugar in the house. You couldn't give us a land of a cupful, could you? I'm disappointed in you, Hilda. Pardon? I thought you could have come up with something better than that old thing. I'm sure I don't know what you're hinting at. I'm not hinting at anything, Hilda. I'm telling you straight. You're no more short of sugar than that shop on the corner of the street. You saw me come in here and you've come to see what's going on, haven't you? Well, I don't have to stop here to be insulted by the likes of you, any road. No, of course you don't. So what are you going to do about it? Hmm. That made you no sweeter, has it? Living over at Brush. Right, so can I get you another? Uh, no, no, I'll get these. Oh, thank you. Mugs away. Or have you two young fellas had enough? Go on, then. You can't keep on whacking us. Eh, you wouldn't like to put a little bit of the Queen's liquid on it eh, this time by any chance, would you? Ten for your head. Make it twenty, if you like. It's our birthday, Leonard. Middles for diddles. Six <laughs> oh, <laughs> All right, Bresnia. Start unveiling the guided missiles. We're in. Hello, Vince. Don't hang up. Look, I I'm sorry about what I said. I didn't mean it. You know that. Well, I I've been a bit edgy lately. You've been a bit edgy, too. No. No, I'm not starting again, Vince. Look, I'm not saying it wasn't my fault. Vince, take me back, please. What? He can't be finished. I can't finish just like that. Well, doesn't what I feel matter at all? Vince! Vince! <laughs> Forgotten something? Forgotten? My change. 
Oh, I'm sorry you weren't due any. Is it that much for a cup of coffee? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Honestly, I'm ashamed to take your money, but, well, it's the world shortage, you see. Oh, I see. <clears throat> oh, have you got a copy of Knitting World, please? Oh, well, we, we are supposed to be closed, actually. Oh. But, well, if, if you'd just like to have a look on the rack. Thank you. Oh, where have you been? Why is it always me that has to cope with a last-minute rush? Well, I'll tell you the truth. I do it deliberately to make you happy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Because I know you're never more happy than when you're miserable. And you're never more miserable than when you're in here on your own skivvying while I'm out enjoying myself. So, you see, I do it on purpose to put you in your favourite humour. <sighs> Does that make sense to you? Not particularly, no. No, it doesn't to me either. Still, you got to admit, it makes a change from saying, sorry I'm late back, I got talking. Oh, look, more and more late customers. Oh, uh, yes, Emily. Miss James, isn't it? Hello, Mrs Bishop. Thank you for the valentine you sent my husband. You did send him one, didn't you? Yes, I did. Do you mind telling me why? Well, it was just a bit of fun. Hardly a fun card. Depends what your idea of fun is. And your idea of fun is throwing yourself at married men, is it? I don't know what you're talking about. Are you telling me you haven't been running after my husband at every opportunity since that dance at the centre a few weeks ago? I only see him at work. You hang about outside the factory waiting for him. You accost him in the rovers. It's not my fault if he's got a wife who... What? Doesn't understand him? For the record, Miss James, his wife understands him very well, actually. You don't go out in with fact, him In fact, she understands his difficulty about somebody like you. He sees you as the shy, retiring, wallflower type, you see. Whereas I see you as you really are. More of a Venus flytrap. You can't Honest talk to me to like the sort of person who will go to nearly any lengths to avoid hurting somebody's feelings. I'm not. So could I make it quite clear, once and for all, Miss James, that if this nonsense doesn't stop forthwith, our next conversation won't be half so polite. She didn't say what she'd come in for. Hello. Hi. You had your tea? No, I haven't actually, but I've got a bit of steak in the fridge. I'll grill it for you. No, it's all right, Janet. I'm not hungry. I'll have it later. Yes. Well, let's stop playing games, shall we, Janet? I mean, what exactly have you come for? Why are you here? I told you I was in the district. Sorry, Janet, I... that's not good enough. We had a row. You might say that. A bad one? Pretty bad. Very bad, in fact. Are you trying to tell me that you've left him? Yes. Let's see. Oh, it was more than a row, Ken. People have rows, I know that. It... It's been coming on for months, a sort of... Realisation, I suppose. What have you realised? What a fool I was to leave you for him. Oh, come on, Janet. You didn't leave me for him. You'd already lost me when he came along. Remember me? That failed potential captain of industry. The social disaster area. Representing everything that you despised in a husband. Your words. I was stupid, Ken. You meant it at the time. I was wrong. I admit I was wrong. I don't believe that you believe that, Janet. People change, Ken. You, your values aren't permanent. You reach a point in your life when you look back and you ask yourself, why? What was it all for to get here? If you say so. I admire you, Ken. <gasps> what? Sometimes you have to stand away from people to see them as they really are. You don't admire me, Janet. You've had a row with Vince, that's all. I'm just an available shoulder to cry on, like I was last time when he hit you. I do admire you, Ken. You know your place in life, your, your context, if you like. My own little patch in the rut. The important thing is to be happy, to know how to be happy. You know, I can't remember when I could say that, that I was actually happy. If he came through that door now and wanted you back, you'd go out through it with him. No. No, I wouldn't. Um, could I have a bit of lemon and half a bit of tea? Yes, you can do. What's the joke? Oh, I don't know. 
Oh, hello. So, oh, how are you? All right. Did your wife tell you she'd seen me? Yes, yeah, she did, as a fact. Very possessive, isn't she? Oh, I don't know. Can I buy you a drink? Uh, no, Thank thanks. Love. I, uh, I don't think it'd be a very good idea. Excuse me. Uh, can I get something? Well, uh, well, if I can't love it, I mean, there's a very nice little pub about five miles down the road. Perhaps you should try that. They do say that that's full of spare fellas, and most of them don't even belong to anybody yet. You get the message, lovey? Yes. Half a bit of this time, Half please. Right. I'll get that. Wally. <coughs> that's the name, pal. Wally. Here's yourself. I saw this picture once about uh, a fellow who was marvellous at pool, you know, American snooker. Oh, yeah. He's taking all his mates for every cent he could get off him. They got a bit sick of him, so one night they took him outside and he broke his fingers. Ooh, nasty. Very nasty. Oh, he didn't like it a bit, yeah. Still, I suppose there's, there's always an element of risk when you're uh, hustling. I wouldn't know. No, no. No, 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 you wouldn't have gone. I think it's about a quid you owe us, isn't it? One fair and square. Uh, well, hand it over, mate. Otherwise, I might have to... Uh, Break your neck. Fred, are you or are you not supposed to be helping me at the back of this bar? Come on, Betty, love. I'm 50p down already. Look at Mrs. Walker comes in and finds all these empty glasses. She'll have your guts for garters. Five minutes, there, love. Four. And that's my final offer. I wonder where Baz got to. Oh, he's probably gone out the back. Do you want to chuck for him? No, you're all right. I'll hang on. If you're going to hang on, you're going to have a long wait. Hey? Well, when he went out, he took his coat with him. And his doubts. The flaming money's gone. The thieving toe rag. I've been robbed. It's terrible that you can't trust anybody these days, can you? It wasn't all bad, was it, Ken? With us. No, it wasn't all bad, Janet. But when it was bad, it was pretty bad. I've changed, Ken. What I've been through this last year does change you. No, no, people don't change, Janet. Not really. Oh, sure, they get hurt, they get clobbered and flattened for a while, and then they're different. Or well, they seem different, their attitudes are different, tempered. But it doesn't last. The change is not permanent. Give me another chance, Ken. I'll settle down. We can bring the twins back No here. way, Janet! It was a mistake! The whole marriage bit was a mistake. We realised that and we made a decision on it, and it was the right decision. I don't want you back, Janet. Ever. I don't know what to do. Oh, you'll survive. Why do you go back to him, kiss and make up? I don't know where to go. There's nowhere to go. Well, if you like, I'll book you into a hotel. Can't I stay here tonight? No, no. Just for was... tonight, Ken, oh, please. You're not being fair. It was you that left me, remember? You're no longer my bloody problem! No, of course not. I'm sorry. Goodbye, Ken. Hang on. Look. Just for tonight. All right. If you want me to... It... No, I said all right. Thanks. Where... Where shall I sleep? Well, you can use my bed. I'll sleep down here. I'll get some blankets. Do you two realise what time it is? It's nearly 11 o'clock. It's nor, is it? Well, don't take my word for it. Ask the speaking clock. Though she's probably dropped off by now. Oh, hey, what am I going to do? What do you mean, what are you going to do? Well, it's a dead long way home along Canal Bank. Well, what do you usually do? Get a bus, but it'll be gone by now. Well, I'm very sorry you can't stop here, cos we're going to bed. Oh, it'll be all right if I stick to main roads, which well lit. Oh, what's the girl chase down Jubilee Terrace? Oh, shut up, girl. I'm scared enough as it is. <laughs> are you scared the dark, Elsie? All right, you can stop here if you want to. Here? Yes, I'd never forgive myself if I'd happened to you on the way home, would I? Well, are you sure you won't mind? Well, I won't have to mind, will I? It's Hobson's choice, isn't it? But I don't want to put you to any trouble, love. Oh, you won't put me to any trouble, love. I won't let you. Oh, thanks, Elsie. That's great oh, of you. Oh, give over. Take these up bottles and stick them in the spare bed. Thanks. It'll probably be damp. Thanks, Elsie. Well, what shall we do? Nothing. Nothing at all. Good night.
I'll go up then. All right. Good night. Good night. duty all night out there, have you, Hilda? Twenty to nine, Janet. Janet, you up yet? Look, move it, will you? I've got to be at the town hall at quarter past. say her name was? Janet. She worked at the education offices. Well, that's how he started knocking about with her, because he used to be a teacher then. What's she like? Oh, all right, I suppose, but... Ooh, her face as hard as my far back. I'm surprised he took her back at all, really. Well, what makes you think he has? Well, she stopped all night there, didn't she? Oh, yeah. I need your help, Rini. Oh? Inside information that could prove vital to the future of my social life round here. <laughs> Inside information? About Elsie, our eating habits. Well, whatever are you going to do, poison her? <laughs> what kind of marmalade does she like best? Gail says it's chunky. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, she won't eat anything else. Oh, go on then, give us a jar. What's going on? Oh, it's doing this campaign I've got going for winning friends and influencing people. 30p. Oh, book it to Elsie. I mean, it's her it's for. Girls that age make me feel 90. Mind you, they always did, when I was that age myself. <laughs> <laughs> morning, oh, morning. Morning, then. 
My order for the weekend. Oh, yes, right. <coughs> You've heard she's back, haven't you? Castor oil. I beg your pardon? Janet Barlow. I did see her briefly yesterday, yes. Ended up stopping the night, you know. They are married, Mrs Ogden, so I suppose we shouldn't be too stunned to hear that. And I'd be delighted to hear they'd effected a reconciliation. Bye. Bye, love. Oh, she's a mate of Janet Barlow, as you know. Always has been. Janet! Look, some of us do have jobs to go to, you know. Janet! Janet! You all right? Come on, come on, come on. Hello, uh, got to have an ambulance, quickly. Young and hot springtime, am I? Gayer than laughter, am I? la da 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 It just sounded to me like somebody was trying to strangle a cat through a mangle. Sucky devil. <laughs> Morning, boss. Oh, morning, Fred. You're up bright and early today. I thought I'd get the cellar sorted out this morning, Mrs Walker. Get ready for that new stock that's coming, you know. Good idea. <laughs> Pack it out. Soon be spring, though. Yeah, and in the spring, a young man's fancy. <laughs> eh? Well, you know, turns to thoughts of love. Oh, that. Oh, Fred, no romance in you, that's your trouble. I can be as romantic as the next, Tilda. The only trouble is round here, there's nobody to be romantic with. <laughs> Tell me this, sir. Hey, summer's up. Sounds like up in the front bedroom. Hey, what's going on? I don't know. It's outside old Albert's, isn't it? Don't you want any marmalade? No, thanks, love. I have been out especially to get that for you. Well, that's very nice of you and thank you very much, but I never have anything more than a cup of coffee in the mornings. I thought you liked marmalade. Oh, I do, I do. But only at tea time and I'm too idle to get myself out else. It's very bad for you, is that? Going oh, out in the morning with out in your stomach, that is a shortcut to an ulcer. If you don't give your stomach nothing to chew on, it'll start chewing you. They don't know any better than our brains of stomachs. Oh, look here, love. I've been having out but a cup of coffee all my life first thing in the morning and I never even get heartburn. Actually, I was uh, thinking of making you another of my specialties for your tea tonight. Well, that's very nice of you, love, but how will you do that? You won't be here, will you? Well, could be. I mean, only work round corner. Oh, I see. So that's it, is it? What? Oh, come on, love. I'm not as green as I'm cabbage looking. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm that's talking it. about this three card trick you're trying to pull on me. Me? Oh, Grandmama, what big eyes you've got. You want to move in here with your little mate, don't you? I don't know what gives you that idea, Elsie. I wonder. But I could do if you'd like me to. No, I would not like you to. You're noisy, you're untidy, and you're flaming cunning. And what's more, I've got enough with the other one under my feet. Would help with the rent. No. And three can live as cheaply as two. N-O, I said. Hey, did you hear it? Hear what? The ambulance just stopped outside Mr Tatlock's and two ambulance men had gone dashing in. I wonder what that is. Come on, let's have a look. What do 
What's happened? And nobody seems to know anything yet. No, it's not Albert, is it? No, it can't be Albert, love. He's up in Scotland. He went yesterday. Hey, perhaps uh, somebody should go and see if we could offer us help, like. Hmm. Charitable enough idea, I suppose. Could be open to misrepresentation. What misrepresentation? That our motive was idle curiosity. Oh, I'm sure the thought never entered me yet. Oh, of course it didn't. Husband's in there, is he? I'll tell him. You get the stretcher. Right. I'm sorry, but I don't think there's much hope. Oh, dear Lord. Uh, should I... Up to you. Uh, it can. Yeah. What is it? It's, it's Janet. I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Nice though, wasn't it? If all the pools were as blue and all the blondes were really as blonde as they are in these flipping holiday brooches. Uh -huh. You're going abroad again this year, are Oh, I. New Brighton. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you've heard, have you? Heard? Oh, it's shocking. What? Janet Barlow, Ken's wife. They found her dead in his bed this morning. They've never. We've had ambulances, bobbies, a lot round there this last half hour. Dead? Janet? Mm -hmm. Well, how? Ah, oh, well, that's what you might call the $6,400 question, isn't it? Well, sure, in here yesterday, only as large as life. Are you sure about this, Hilda? Well, of course I'm sure. I've just seen him taking her away. Well, she can't be much more than, what, 30 ish? Exactly. I mean, it's a bit young for it to have been, well, natural. Hey, I don't know what you're hinting at, but if I were you, I'd watch what I was saying. I'm not hinting anything, I'm just saying it's funny, that's all. I mean, her coming back like that, after all this time living with somebody else, and then suddenly she's dead. Oh, honestly. I sometimes wonder why I bother telling you lot round here anything at all. Well, could it possibly be, Hilda, that you enjoy doing it? Hm. Ooh, that flipping woman. Janet. I can't believe it. What can have happened? Well, that'll be up to the coroner to decide. Coroner? Ah, there's bound to be an inquest. Oh, poor kid. Not to mention that poor lad. Here you are, lad. Oh, there's a drop of whiskey in it. Get it down, yeah. If there's anything at all I can do, Ken, anything, you know you've only to ask. Thank you. I think I'll pop back later. Yeah, me too. She wanted me to take her back. Oh? I said no. Because I felt nothing, only... only anger that she was there at all. I went over to the community centre during the evening and when we were coming back through the door and I was just wishing that she wouldn't be there. She wouldn't go. She must have been desperate. I think I sensed it. I knew it. But I didn't care. I didn't care. Mr. Barlow? Yes. My name's Maskell. Could I 
Have a word. Look, I'll uh, leave you to it. Now, if you want anything at all, lad, you know where I am. Okay. This bottle you uh, handed to the ambulance, lads? Yes. Where was it when you found it? It was on the floor by her bed. But it uh, looks as if it could have fallen out of her hand before when she went to sleep. Sleeping pills? I don't know. Did your wife not take sleeping pills? I really don't know. I'm not sure. Is that uh, Mrs Barlow's handbag there? Yes. I'm afraid I'll have to take it. There uh, might be something in it material to the death. I could do an inventory of the contents now or later. Later, if you don't mind. We shall need you to identify Mrs Barlow. No? Probably this afternoon. Well, I'm off to the hospital to, uh... You all right, sir? Yes, yes, I'm all right. When did you last see her alive? Last night. Right, uh... Shouldn't be long. Seems straightforward enough, but there's a couple of things. There's no sign she lived here. No clothes. And there's no note. But I'm off to the hospital now, so I'll keep in touch. It's terrible, really, when you think about it, isn't it? I mean, somebody as young as all that just snuffed out. I wonder if it was a heart. It was with Jack, you know. I wouldn't put money on it if I were you. I would, Mr. Sharples. I said I wouldn't put money on it being her heart. Are you suggesting that Janet didn't have natural causes? Just some of that Ken said, that's all. Morning. Yeah? Hey, have you got a rag? What do you want a rag for? Well, that window's that dirty, I can't see adverts to it. You're not still looking, are you? <sighs> hey, yeah. Uh, have a look at the dresses in that book. Oh, thanks, Rita. Mm. Turned out nice again. Hasn't it, though? <laughs> Can we pay the paper bill? Heard about Janet Barlow, then, have you? I know she's back, yes. As a matter of fact, I'm hoping to see her later this afternoon. When she called yesterday, I, um, well, I didn't really have time to talk. You haven't heard, then? Heard? Well, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. Ken found her dead in bed this morning. Oh, no. Not Janet. How? What happened? Well, I don't know the details exactly, except Ken found her in bed and that were it. But, um... What? Well, Len had a word with policeman. He knew him. And apparently there was this empty bottle on the floor outside at bed. Suicide? Well, it's early days to say that. She came to talk to me, Ernest, and I turned her away because it wasn't convenient. Yes, I know, though. I was there, remember? If she did take her own life, I... I'll never forgive myself. Oh, come on, love. You weren't to know. Oh, that's always the case, isn't it? If somebody had just taken the trouble to listen. Hey, Emily, love. Oh, it's funny, though, isn't it? How death and tragedy seems to hang over that Barlow family. Sure, up, Hilda. Well, it's true. Well, I dare say it is, but don't you think Ken's got enough on his plate without us, like, yakking about him down here? Well, at least I did pass the time of day with Janet Barlow yesterday, which is more than some folk round here can say. What is she on about now? Oh, I was just telling Len. I was worried about that girl and all. Why? Yeah. Well, she called round to our house yesterday morning, thinking that Ken was still living there. I hardly spoke to her. Still, I was late for work, wasn't I? Look, we don't know it was an overdose yet, either accidental or deliberate. Well, it's beginning to look like it, though, isn't it? I suppose it will be up to Ken to make the funeral arrangements. He's asked me to give him a hand. That's not something I'm looking forward to. Look, have you eaten yet? No. Well, come on, I'll treat you some, some fish and chips. I thought you were supposed to be still at work. 
Oh, I've taken early lunch out to look for a flat. Well, that's the best news I've heard today. Come on. Hiya. Bit of lemon, please. Oh, you're mad impetuous thing. Oh, I know, I'm like that. Hey, do you know anything about Abattoir Street? Nothing good. Oh? Better known round here as the Bull Run, actually. Why is that? Well, because every now and again, one of them animals that they take down there to turn into steak puddings breaks loose and runs amok. They reckon it's better than being at a bullfight. Why? What do you want to know for any role? Well, I was thinking of taking a flat there. They just talked me right out of it. Oh, if you're flat hunting, love, you've got my deepest sympathy. The things that have happened to me in flats are nobody's business. Tell us more, love. Tell us more. I had this pot-bellied little landlord, and he had this room full of German war souvenirs. Now, we were absolutely potty about Lord Haw Haw. Every Saturday night, he'd get blind drunk and he'd be tapping on my bedroom door shouting Germany calling Germany calling oh hello goodbye abattoir street <laughs> Kent's Bobby's. Mm, well, it's not surprising, is it? I wonder what the wreck happened. I mean, that's what matters, isn't it? Uh, Did you get them addresses then? Yeah. Well, where are they? Right there in front of you. What's the idea? Well, I think it'll be a mistake. What? Give it up so easy on Elsie. I'm going to try a different tack. You're wasting your time, love. Oh, don't underestimate me, kid. No, you underestimate Elsie. She can be a right hard nut when she wants. Hard as nails. Look, I, I won't come in, because I know you've got somebody in. Look, I'd just call around and see if you're out to eat, because if you haven't, I can always pop round to Jackson's before they close. No, it's all right, Darcy, thanks. I've had a snack. Are you sure? Yeah, really. Thank you very much, all of them. I'm dead sorry, kid. Honest. See you. Good neighbours you've got. Yes, that's one of the reasons I stay. He was saying? Well, uh, the, uh, the PM, the post-mortem, has been fixed for two o'clock. So if you could come down to the station at about a quarter to. Yes, right. Is that all? Well, there will be a few more questions. We're going far away. I'm perfectly all right. Or not from me. Detective Sergeant Phillips would like a word. Well, uh, bye for now, sir. Barley, give me a package of pearl barley. Oh, barley, making yourself some broth? Well, I'm making some broth, but not for myself. I'm taking a panful down to Ken Barlow, get some nourishment in it, lad. Mm. Uh, I don't suppose he's overeating? No, oh, well, you lose your appetite at times like this. Yes, heaven knows why. It seems to be some sort of... We punish ourselves. We're thinking of the things we should have done and we haven't have done, and we just can't enjoy our meals until our consciences have settled down. Yeah, there's a lot of truth in that, Mrs. Shaw. Mm, don't I know it. You won't remember little Tommy Myers off John Byram Street, will you? He was 74 when his wife was took. And it just seemed as though he went on hunger strike the day of the funeral. He wasn't a big man, he just went to skin and bone. And he needn't have starved. He'd cooked for her for the last three years of her life, to my certain knowledge. And he rode, he followed her after six months. And it wasn't as though he'd now to live for. He'd got his bowling. Yeah, well, it's like you said before, Mrs Sharples. I mean, you just don't enjoy it. I mean, after Phyllis died, I used to set the table, I'd find myself put out two places, you know. Well, I'd look at it, I'd think, oh, blow it. And I wouldn't bother. Oh, well, then you saw sense. You didn't go to skin and bone, did you? <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Afternoon. Oh, take a good day off, are you? Oh, I finished early. I thought I'd do some shopping for Emily. Take it bad, is she? Mm. Yes, you could say that, Mr. Sharples. Mm. It's not surprising. She and Janet were very friendly. It's not that we know anything much, do we? No, the police have been round again. Yeah. And we know that she took too many pills of some sort. It, now, that's the rumour. It's more than a rumour. Well, accidents happen. So do other things. 
it was just something he said. But that's what you're thinking, isn't it? No, I, I really don't know any more than that, Emily. I just know there was a bottle of pills and she'd obviously taken a fair amount, but more than that, I honestly don't know. I mean, why she committed suicide? No, now you're putting words in my mouth. No, I don't mean that. I mean, why it happened, whether it was accidental or... Um... You think she took them deliberately, don't you? I think there's a strong possibility, yes. Because she was what? Depressed about something? Yes. I didn't see it. I turned her away. I was so wrapped up in my own stupid little problem. Hey, come on, come on. I mean, what special gift have you got that you should see these things? I didn't see it. I only suspect now because I'm being wise after the event. And so are you. It's what we do, you know. Afterwards, and only afterwards, we add up all the facts and we come up with the answer. Until then, we don't even do our sums. I mean, you don't look for the answer until the question's been asked. Oh, with some questions you should. I mean, how would we ever prevent anything if we didn't? I mean, this was a human being, Ken. She was a very good friend of mine. I should have known about her. I should have done something. I shouldn't be here asking why she killed herself. Before we even know if she did. You think she did? Well, I said I thought there was a strong possibility, but it's receding by the minute. The more I think about it, the less likely it becomes. I mean, this was Janet. I know people of half her strength who suffered far more and survived. Was she strong? I mean, can we be sure? Look, if you want to blame yourself, get in the queue. Oh, Ken. Oh, hello, Mr. Barlow. Detective Sergeant Phillips. Oh, yes, that's right. I was expecting you. Come in. Thank you. Um, okay. uh, this is a neighbour of mine, Mrs. Bishop, Detective Sergeant Phillips. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, I'll uh, pop back later this evening, or, or Ernest, just to see if... Uh... Yes, well, I'll be in. Yes. Uh, do sit down. All right, thank you. Very neighbourly, these uh, streets, aren't they? I expect you get a lot of visitors. Yes. Right, well, uh, I'll try and make this as painless as possible, Mr. Barlow. <clears throat> now then, you found your wife in a bed, unconscious, at about 8.30 this morning. You noticed a bottle of tablets on the bedroom floor, which you took to be sleeping pills, and there weren't many tablets in the bottle. I didn't think there were any. Uh, there were just a couple, as a matter of fact. You immediately phoned for an ambulance. Your wife was taken to Weatherfield General, where she was found to be dead. As a result of information laid before the police, Constable Maskell visited you at about 10 p.m. Is that correct, sir? Uh, yes. Right. Oh, incidentally, your wife's name was Janet. It was just Janet, yes. was it? Right. Well, I do have one bit of information for you, Mr. Barlow. I'd hardly call it news because I expect you suspected it anyway. But the post-mortem confirmed that your wife died of barbiturate poisoning. Yes, yes, I, uh... I did suspect that. Yes, <clears throat> so I thought you probably would. Uh, now, you told Constable Maskell that you didn't know your wife was taking sleeping pills? Yeah, that is correct, yeah. Well, who's your doctor? Well, I don't know who my wife's doctor was. Oh? Look, I, I don't think this has been explained properly. My wife and I were separated. We've been living apart now for nearly three years. Oh, I see. That would explain why there were no clothes or possessions here. Yes. yes. What was she doing here, then? Well, she visited me yesterday, late afternoon, and I put her up for the night. She slept upstairs and I slept down here. The rest, I think, you know. Oh, I see. I see. So, normally, you, uh, you live here alone? Oh, no, no. You could say I lodge here with my uncle. Oh. Well, that's not strictly true. He's my first wife's uncle. I, I, I call him my uncle, Mr. Tatlock. Oh, I see, yes. Well, he's not here at the moment, then. No, no, he's in Glasgow. I see. Right. So you say that your wife, I'm talking about your second wife, came here yesterday afternoon? Yes. Yeah. Well, presumably you had to, you had a chance to chat to her before she went up to bed. Uh, yes, yes, I did. How would you describe her manner? 
I mean, how was she emotionally? Well, I'd say she was, uh, depressed. You told us about Daft Fairy story yet? No. Will you stand still while I'm talking to I you? I always dance while I'm talking. Look, this is important. I'm not one of your daft lads. Which one aren't you? I'm being serious. It's you I'm thinking about. It's you who wants to stay here. I'm all right, Jack. I'm waiting for the right moment, and when that moment comes, I will have Elsie crying her eyes out. She'll be begging me to move in here with my family. Some hopes. Oh, all the best actors on Hollywood, you know. I'll get an Oscar for this. So you say your wife had been living with another man recently? Yes, that's right. Would his name be Denton? Yes, Vince Denton. I don't know his address, sir. No, you see, we found a, a letter in your wife's handbag, and to be frank, it was puzzling us, because apparently she was calling herself Mrs. Denton. How was she getting on with Mr. Denton? I didn't know that. Do you know how she got on with Mr. Denton? Uh, she didn't seem very happy. Is that why she came round here? I don't know. Yes, I, I suppose it was. What exactly did she want from you, Mr. Barlow? She wanted me to take her back. And you didn't want her back? No, I... I didn't think that was a very good idea. We'd tried it once before and it didn't work out. Oh, why not? Well, we were temperamentally unsuited. She was more ambitious than I was. And she used to get annoyed with me when I didn't push myself in the way she wanted me to push myself. Look, is, is all this necessary? We've got to find out what we can, Mr. Barlow. Put it all together, see if it helps. When we've got questions, we must find the answers. <laughs> yes, I know. So, you say your wife used to get annoyed with you. Was she annoyed with you last night when you told her she couldn't come back? No. No, not really. She was... Well, I didn't know this then, but I do know she was desperate. But there wasn't what you call a, a row of any sort? Oh, no. No, nothing like that. Did you see your wife again after she went to bed? Before you found her in the morning, I mean? No. Did she ever threaten to take her own life? No. Yeah, well, not as far as I know. You didn't find a note of any kind, anyway? No. Well, right, well, I think that's about it for the moment. Thank you, sir. I shall have to make a few more inquiries, so if you can bear with me again, I might have one or two more questions for you. I'll see myself out. Thank you. It's amazing how many of them do last for 25 years. I've had three of them in my lifetime. Three? Victoria, George V and Her Present Majesty. It was Mrs. Sharples. You weren't alive when Queen Victoria had a silver jubilee. By gum, you were in well. <laughs> Don't be daft. I said I've had three of them in my lifetime. She didn't last long, though, did she? Not when you think. I mean, could only have been, what, in her 30s? Well, which one's this we're talking about now? Well, Janet Barlow, who do you think? <coughs> oh, I got my thought Mindy Corbett was back for a minute. <laughs> Mrs Ogden, we are talking about the coming Silver Jubilee, not the sad affair of Kenneth's wife. Yeah, but you can't not talk about it, can you? It only happened next door. You can if you try, Elder, believe me. Ah, give it a rest. What's up? All still conscience-struck, are you? Because nobody offered help in hand like what I did. I near as damn it Mary did at one time, you know. I suppose that gives me a right to talk about her. She is the last person in the world I would have thought to do away with herself. Len, you never know. You think you can read somebody like a book. Everybody has some tucked away up there that they never let out for nobody. Have you? We all have. I'll go and see Ken in a bit. I'll come with you. Give us a ring when you're going. I'll give him something to drink. You give him something to look at. Well, if that's all you've got, that's all you can give. See you. Look, we're all assuming it was suicide, but it could well turn out to have been accidental. Oh, not much chance of that. Yeah, well, anyway, it's up to a coroner's inquest, not you. Now, leave it to the proper authorities this time. Just give it a rest. Yes, we've had quite enough, Mrs Ogden. More than enough. Oh, well, suit yourselves. At least I've gotten out to reproach myself for. Hello, Mrs Walker. Good evening, all. I'm making a few inquiries into the death of Mrs. Janet Barlow. I wonder if anybody heard anything from next door at all last night. Anything unusual? I can't say I did. No. Uh, sorry, Mrs. Walker, for interruption, if you don't mind. When I was checking toilets last night at closing time, they're on this side, you see, and I heard these voices all sort of raised like. Did you hear what was being said? Well, no, I didn't hear any words. It was just like 
raised, if you know what I mean. How much raised? Well, you know, just raised. Yes, I see. Did you talk to Mrs Barlow at all yesterday afternoon? Do you know anyone who did? Well, there's one or two did, yeah. She called at the bishops down the street and, and round the cabin. Oh, the cabin, yes, I know it. Right, thanks very much. You just can't keep your trap shut, can you? And you're no better, Fred. Oh, take the notice of her, Fred. It's like he says, let the proper authorities deal with it. And in case you're all thinking anything, I shall tell him what I know in private. Oh, better. Oh, oh God bless you, Mrs Copperfield. Oh. Mm. Lovely. Have you found yourself a flat yet? Oh, isn't that funny? We were just saying. No, I haven't. I'll, I'll have to go back to our place, I suppose. Oh, well, I don't know why you left there in the first place. Scared, I suppose. Scared? Well, I never told you before, so forget it. It's daft. No, daft or not. Come on, I want to know. Tell us. Well, if you must not, we'll landlord. I thought it was the landlady. No, a landlord. He had funny little ways, like hiding at top of stairs at the dark, in the dark and shouting, Ah, little. Or he used to knock on your bedroom and say, Germany calling, Germany calling. He thought you were Lord Ho Ho or something like that. Go on. Well, that's all, really. Except you have this room full of German things. Swastikas and that. And he used to wear this funny German helmet with a big spike on top. Well, he never touched me. But I always thought the next time he might. You are not going back there. You are not going back there. You can have a week here to look round. But keep looking, mind you. Oh, isn't she kind? You are better than my mum, you. She never believed a word I said. <laughs> questions was she asking? Well, about Ken, mostly. What about him? Well, she didn't ask much, actually, uh, if he'd got a girlfriend. Mm. Well, she was his wife when all said and done. Uh, well, I, I didn't talk to her much. I was just going out when she came. Did she seem uh, at all depressed to you? No, not really. But I didn't take much notice. As I said, I was just going out when she came. Oh, hello. You at third degree and all. Why, should she have? Did you see uh, Mrs Barlow yesterday, Mrs Bishop? Um, briefly, yes. Did you notice anything unusual about her? No, I was rather busy at the time. Well, I'm told she was depressed, you see. Uh, you didn't notice anything at all? No. Well, you're a friend of hers, aren't you? Yes, you could, you could say I was a friend. And you didn't notice her mood? Oh, no, of course, you were busy at the time, weren't you? All right. Thanks very much, anyway. Hey, I'm sorry, kid. You see, there's only one thing that worries me, Mr Barlow, and that is that raised voices were heard in here about 10.30pm. Now, presumably, they could only have been yours and Mrs Barlow's, right? Well, we were the only two in here, yes. Uh, possibly she got a little excited. After all, she was distressed and overwrought. But you still say it wasn't a row of any kind? No, it wasn't a row of any kind. Look, I, I explained the situation to her that it was no good coming back and possibly we got a little overheated, but that is all. She told you she left of her own accord? Yes, she did. You see, I'm only asking that question again because it isn't tie-in at all with what Mr Denton told me. Now, he's not as sensitive as you are. He made no bones about it. He said he told her to leave. But you didn't know that? No, I didn't. I've already told you what she said. Would it have made any difference in your attitude towards her if you'd known she had nowhere to go back to? It might. I don't know. It might possibly... Uh... I don't know. Yeah. I can understand that. Right, I think that about wraps it up. Thank you very much, Mr Barlow. Thank you for your help. It's not been an easy day for you. Stay where you are. I'll see my own way out. By heck, I've seen some performances in me time. Oh, good, weren't I? Touch of the fade, done away. Touch of the Eddie Yates, more like. <laughs> hey, up. I thought you 
thought you were staying in. I was, but I changed my mind when I suddenly developed this craving for fish, chips and mushy peas. But I'm going to have a drink first, gin and tonic, if you don't mind. I heard that. Hey, I've got something for you. In tonight's paper, a flat, 17 Kitchener Street. Don't touch it with a barge pole. It's that fella I was telling you about. What fella? Oh, blow the drink. Let's go for the fish and chips. This potbelly's little landlord given to lurking on landings. And his room, which I only saw when I went to pay the rent, so I don't mean what you think I mean, his room, would you believe it, was full of swastikas and SS armbands. He even had a picture of Adolf. And you know, he'd sneak on landing and he'd shout through my keyhole, Germany calling, oh, we were a Roman. Did he have a helmet with a spike on the top? No, why, do you know him? No, no, but she does very well. She had a landlord just like that, didn't you, Chuck? That's why she can't go back, can't you, Chuck? Because you're scared, aren't you, Chuck? Oh, you naughty girl. <laughs> All right, it's a fair cop, I'll go and pack me things. No, don't have to, kind. It's not the time for us turning back some people after a view of what's happened. Come on, let's take the weight off our feet. ta well, he's been round there twice already, to my certain knowledge. Oh, yeah, when these detectives get their teeth into something, they don't let go, do they? Can I have a couple of bottles to take out, please? Still on about the tragedy, then? We never said a word about you, Mrs Ogden. You know, it's a pity you didn't have a word with me, that detective, seeing as I was the only one what asked the poor girl in for a cup of tea. Why don't you go and see him, then? Because she never came, that's why. But at least I did ask, which is more than their so-called friends did. Oh, I've seen her coming out of your house with a face as long as a fiddle, so obviously she didn't get no change out of your wife. Oh, heaven preserve us from do-gooders. Plain speaking, that's what's wanted in this world. Right, do you want some bit? Hilda. If I catch you saying one word of this to my wife, I'll... So help me, I'll... Go on, say it. <laughs> Lay preachers have always said there was more men of violence inside the church than out. Hey, put a sock in it, Hilda. Oh, now, don't you start. If you don't shoot up, I'll be over this flipping counter to you in a minute. Oh, flaming hypocrites. May I say, Mrs Walker, and I was only standing on the sidelines at the time, but may I say that that remark of yours when Hilda said, were we talking about the tragedy and you said we never said a word about her, that remark was a little gem. It was good enough for me, that. That is praise indeed. I'm so glad you liked it. I do have my moments. I remember once at the operatic. It's rather a long story, but it's worth telling. Do you know, Fred, I seem to be doing such a lot of that tonight. Opening my big mouth and getting other folk into lumber. I know what you mean. Yeah, I think I'm stoned. You're all so tired. Yeah, it's been, uh... Anyway, thanks for the visit. Appreciate it. You look a lot better than you did. Do you know he actually smiled a couple of times? Now, oh, Kim, you try and put it all behind you. Well, it's easy enough to forget the event. Not so easy to forget what a swine I've been. Would you believe he's at it again? Now, I thought we'd sorted all this out about nine o'clock. I thought we decided there was nothing you could do, or I could do, or he could do, or anybody else for that matter, Ken. Do you remember? Janet was her kind of woman. What she decided on, she did. Hey, we're being watched. Yeah, you know, it's been a funny sort of day. I've had more arms full of women today. Do you mean I'm not the only one? You're the best. You're only saying that because you're half slewed. I'm very tired. Go on, bed. No, I'm uh, sleeping down here. All right. Bed, then. Come on, I'll get you started. Have you no shame? Don't worry, love. I'll be gone long before it starts getting interesting. Come on, Fairclough. We're keeping this lad from his beauty sleep. Come on, give us a kiss. See you in the morning. Dad, I can. Hey, can I have a word? Well, I've never found a way of stopping you. I thought you were great tonight. Oh, well, what appealed exactly? My Parisian perfume or my silver fox? No, you know what I mean. Ken. Well, he's a friend. Would you do the same for me? Hey, Jella. You go through what he's going through and find out. No, thanks. No, really, I, I thought you were... 
You were just great. It's what he needed. Well, I'm all things to all men, me. Yeah. Well, go on. What? Kiss me. I'm going to stand here all night. All right. You've had your ration. I tell you what, it's tiring work cheering your friends up. Come on, I'll walk you home. <clears throat> it's further that way. I'm no fool. Aren't you? Where'd you want to go? That's your idea. Your evening. Staff perks. Staff outing. Can't be bad. <laughs> don't know where I'm going to take you yet. Well, it don't matter. Knowing you, it won't be tat any road. So long as there's candles on table, I'm happy. That all it takes. And a bottle of wine. You're right. There's nothing that candlelight and wine doesn't improve. Especially me. <laughs> I don't know. Not much wrong from where I'm sitting. Well, spread the word round when you go back home. Home? Down south. Tell them it's not all clogs and shawls north of Watford. I'll tell you. If those mill girls are going to work looking like you, they've got a lot better deal. How better? <laughs> tell you that when you're 21. I can't wait that long. <laughs> Bye-bye, now. See you, darling. What exactly happens at an inquest? I've never been to one, Alf. Thankfully, no. I mean, in your official capacity. Well, it's got nothing to do with counsel. And I've never been asked to sit on a jury. Ernest was once. A policeman just stopped him in the street and asked him. Mm, well, it's more or less what it says. You know, they're going to the wise and wherefores if there's any suspicious circumstances. Well, there was nothing suspicious about poor Janet's death. No, but it wasn't a natural death, was it? The, did they go into everything? I mean, the marriage and all that. Well, if they think it has any bearing, they will. Oh, poor Jen. Amen. Morning, Morning. Lord. Is that all, Mrs. Bishop? Yes, I think That's, so. Uh, one seventy, please. Huh? It's uh, the inquest on Janet Barlow today, you know. Yes, we do know. I wonder what the verdict'll be. Well, there can't be much doubt about it, can there? She took an overdose. Oh, it's not that simple. It's exactly that simple, Mrs. Ogden. It's that simple and that tragic. It doesn't take dramatics to end a life. Just a bottle of pills and a glass of water. Drama all came before. Don't upset yourself, love. There's not much point now. Well, see, I'm not saying that the girls are lazy. It's more that they're sort of... Slipshot. They're sloppy. Yeah, and I, last week, you were saying how good they were. Well, they are, on the whole. Yeah, and you said that was thanks to me. Again, it is. So, if they're sloppy now, that's also thanks to me. That's right. That's why I've got you in here instead of them. That's why I pay you more than them. Taking the credit's one of the perks of responsibility. And so is taking the blame. <laughs> Some perks. Hello, I'm not saying they're hopeless. I'm not saying that you don't get the best out of them. But they are inclined to slacken off. Concentration goes in with it, efficiency and quality. You're not expecting 100% perfection of you. Well, why not? If I expect that, I might get 90%. If I expect 90, I'm lucky if I get 75. Oh, I should have tried that with the fellas. What? Expect 100%? Oh, no, with fellas, you only expect 50%. You're lucky if you get 25. <laughs> Answer that, Elsa. Hello, it's the Baldwin's office. Yeah, now look. Look at these buttonholes. You'll see yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yes, it's here. Hang on a minute. Look at that stitching. I could do better than that. Never even worked a machine. Hello, Baldwin. Anne? Well, where? Piccadilly? Well, which Piccadilly? Oh. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Elsie. Oh. Yeah. Yes, it is. Now, don't get a taxi. Uh, go in the buffet, have a cup of coffee, and I'll uh, nip down and take you to lunch. How's that, grab you? Oh, about, uh, well, half an hour? OK. Right. Great. Chin up, Ken. Soon be over. Yeah. <clears throat> Then he can put it all behind you and just carry on living your life. Because there's no tell she can do. Promise? I'll try. Oh, you don't try with her, you know. When she gives her orders, everybody jumps. You don't. I do when you're right. And this time she's right. I know. Ken, stop tearing yourself apart. Hey, are you taking him for a drop or something? Stiffen him up first. No, it's not a bad idea. We've got ten minutes in there. Uh, no, thanks, but no. Oh, I don't mean get paralytic. 
one scotch to get you through a difficult time. Won't do you any harm. And you will get through it. With a little help from my friends, as the song says. Hey, Ken, we've all had our share of nightmares. We're all the walking wounded. Just that some of us got more wounded than others. Are you going to join us in one, then, Ginger? No. I'll get back to the shop. Poor Mavis biced heads off old jelly babies. Anyway, thanks, both of you. Forget it. We're a team, us walking wounded. Oh, you know, when our Irma's David were killed and the baby, us first grandson, me and Stan's like, I thought the whole world had stopped turning. We never even seen him, you know. Never seen him. But, well, I mean, I know Janet weren't much liked as a person and she never treated Ken all that well. But what I mean is, when all said and done, she were only a young woman. Had all her life before her. Never even had a baby or anything. <laughs> Oh, I think I'll just go home and put kettle on. Oh, hello. Who's wake is it? Or are you waiting for someone to buy the next round? Well, what's wrong? It's the uh, inquest on Janet Barlow today. Oh, sorry, bad joke. Can I have a word with you, Ben? Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> what's up? Have they run out of vintage champagne or something? Hey. This posh restaurant you're taking me to tonight. Staff's night out, remember, Bet's perks. Never mind, any sparkling wine will do. I'll not know the difference. I'm not half as sophisticated as I crack on. Sorry, darling, it's off. Yeah? I've got an unexpected visitor. You why? Two out of two. It's not, is it? It is. Still, who else would you ditch me for? Look, I didn't know she was coming. She phoned me up ten minutes ago. She wants me to pick her up at Piccadilly Station. You'd better get your skates on then, aren't you? Didn't expect Anne to come swanning up here, did I? But she has, and now we've got to be sensible and cope with the situation. Right. What do I do? Borrow Elder Ogden's rollers and make like I'm the char? Clear off, love. I hope I didn't hear what you just said. Well, what am I supposed to do? She's bound to want to see me country cottage. She does know I've got a place up here. But not an housekeeper. I'm one mod con you've not mentioned. <laughs> Look, she may be that tolerant, but no wife's that bloody tolerant. So I'm the one who's got to be all sweetness and light and understanding. You're being unreasonable, bitch, you know that. How long's she stopping? Only today. I'll put her on the last train back. Then we pick up where we left off. Goes without saying, doesn't it? How long have I got? Well, I'll take her to lunch, give her a quick tour around, say, what, uh, two o'clock? I've got to shift all my stuff in that time. Well, there's not much there, is there? Well, there's enough. And it's not the big things, it's the little things that get left and give the game away. Like me hair lacquer, in the bathroom, the hand cream outside the kitchen sink. Where the hell am I going to put that lot? Well, put them in a couple of suitcases and stick them under the spare bed. She's not going to go around opening things, she just wants a quick tour around. And she don't suspect nothing? No, why should she? She's married to you, isn't she? <coughs> Mrs. Walker, something urgent's cropped up. Would it be all right if I took an hour off? I'll be back as quick as I can and I'll work tonight instead. I thought you and Buggerlugs were going out painting the town red. No, change of plan. Very well, dear, but don't belong. Path of true love getting a little bumpy, would you think? Seems so. I just hope he gets a sympathetic coroner. How do you mean sympathetic? Well, I'm only quoting Len. According to him, some of them can be right monsters. Say what they like and get away with it. Blame Ken, you mean? Destroy him if they feel like it, and in public. But it weren't his fault. I mean, she left him long ago. Listen, love, you're not a coroner. I'm not a coroner. Sorry, Hello. can I just push in? Oh, I'll kill you for getting to remind me to get some ham for my husband's dinner. How did I know he wanted ham? Because you're the grocer. There's no answer to that. <laughs> so get us a slice, will you? Fairly thick. How's Tracy? Seems to have gone off her milk. I think you were watching me scoff it in her rice pudding. It's give her ideas. Please, <laughs> start worrying when she changes from milk to booze. Yeah. Oh, well, you did that when you were about nine years old, didn't you, kid? Eight, actually. I was very advanced. <laughs> Any news of your mother, love? Yeah, there should be a wedding sometime in summer. Oh, that's hey. exciting. Is it? It doesn't turn me on. Now, you give me a dry baby that doesn't need feeding and croons instead of yelling, that really would get me going. Just 50, love, thanks. Thanks a lot. So, ta <laughs> See ya. 
no romance in this younger generation, is there? Now, don't start on that again. Every time I come here, she starts on the same subject, flaming fellas. Mm. I know. It must be my age. Mm. That was a smashing lunch, Mike. Ah, oh, well, we don't just live off fish and chips out of the newspaper up here, the nose lass. Bet there's not a lot you go short of. Yeah, well, it's not like home, is it? Well, I'll believe that when I see it. When am I getting the conducted tour? Right now. Now, it's not a very big factory. No, you not see... the factory. Your pad, your little house. I'm dying to see what sort of a mess you've made of it. Why should I have made a mess? All on your little own, you say you did it? You're not the domesticated type, darling. At least not in my experience. Oh, well, I did have some help from... from the blokes that did the conversion. Blokes? Yeah, blokes. Big, airy, chested builders. I believe you thousands wouldn't. Come on, then, let's see your empire. All right. <laughs> God, what an ordeal that was. Oh, well, it's all over now. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't prepared for anything like that. I don't suppose anyone ever is. The only I kept thinking all the time he was talking, what a waste. What a waste. A waste of time. No, Janet. She was no fool, you know. Could have made it. She had a lot going for her. Only she could have hung on. I suppose there gets to be a point when he just can't, eh? Anyway, home James, eh? What do you think? I think it's very nice. Very, um... Very sweet. I like it. Well, who wouldn't? I mean, the kitchen's very swish, very up-to-date. Not to mention the, um, bedrooms. Well, I can't take the credit for the kitchen. The blokes that did the conversion helped me with that. Lucky you. Seems bigger than I expected, somehow. Who looks after it for you? Well, I've got a woman that comes in, naturally. Mike, love, I'm not asking questions. I don't expect you to live like a monk up here all week on your own. Come on, the way I graft, there's hardly any time left for the social bit. I don't grudge you the social bit, love. I'm not possessive, you know that. Yeah. That's why we lasted. I do expect honesty. And you get it? I hope so. Of course you do. All right, come on then. Tour over. <clears throat> Where are we going? Well, there's some decent shops in town, and if you ask me nicely, I might buy you a little present. Oh, Mike, love, I've not come all this way for a present. I want to see a bit of local colour. Why don't we go for a drink to that little pub on the corner, for instance? Oh, it's very, uh, uh, basic. All the better. Do you go in there? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's convenient. Oh, what's good enough for you is good enough for me. Be a change from those trendy wine bars. Ah, so that's how you spend your time when I'm not there, is it? In wine bars. But of course. Now show me how you spend your time when I'm not here. Well, look, uh, it's nearly closing time now, so I'll tell you what we do. We go into town, do a bit of shopping, then if you've got any time left before you catch your train, we well, come here so that you can have a quick one, see how the other half lives. If that's what you want. Fine. And give us a kiss, which you haven't done yet. Miss me, do you, when you're up here all on your own? Now, what do you think? Suicide. All official. Well, you didn't really expect anything else, really, did you? Well, Alf said it could have been accidental death. Well, what difference does it make? I mean, the verdict's just words, isn't it? Suicide or accidental death, she's still dead. I'll, uh, put kettle on. 
Or have I got something strong? No, coffee will do. I don't want to lean on alcohol like a blasted crutch to see me through. I'm pathetic enough without that. Hey, if you're going to start talking rubbish, I'm not stopping. Just that I feel so sorry for her. Ken, we all feel sorry. For her. For you. For what happened. Hey, how about a cup of tea, eh? Yeah, make a couple of rounds of toast and all. He's had no to eat all day. Will do. And I'll poach you a couple of eggs. Then I suggest we clear off and let him have a quiet night. Yeah. After a good sleep, things will look better. Even me. <laughs> and speaking of women... Uh, uh, no, OK. Uh, I was going to say, speaking of women, pretty decent bird, this one. Uh, she's not bad, as birds go. Bird? Listen, I'm going to poach a couple of eggs, not lay them. Are you all right? Not really. Well, what else did he say? In what respect? Well, he didn't just say suicide and now else. They always pass comments. Yeah, like somebody else we know. Oh. Passing comment was the only qualification, Hilda. You'd make the champion flaming coroner of all time. Oh, I. I suppose you've never shown no interest at oh. all, then. I suppose it's never even been mentioned in that gossip shop where you were. We've all talked about it. I'm not saying that we haven't. But it's over now. I'm only telling you what Len told me, that the verdict was suicide. I don't know. And if you want the sordid details, you can read them in Gazette tomorrow. Now, for the umpteenth time, can we change subjects? Oh, you're right. I mean, tragedy is only part of life. There are other cheerful things as well. Huh. Hardly. Name one. Tracy Langton. Ah. She's a right little love. Yes, well, I don't think babies was exactly what Madame had in mind, love. I know what will give me a lift at the moment, and it's not happy nappy talk. Mm -hmm. Hey, and it's not that either. What never fails to give me a boost is spending more than I can afford on an outfit I don't need. Makes me feel delightfully wicked. Oh, yes, it's the same with me, love. Honey, with me, it's not apt. It's meat and potato pies. <laughs> I'd like to be took away for the weekend um, to a nice little hotel. Needn't be posh, needn't be nowhere exotic, but not a bed and breakfast boarding house, you know. Although we've not even done that for a few years. No, a proper hotel where you get waited on and have your meals nicely served and put down in front of you. And you don't have no worrying to do about uh, what to get for your tea or the washing up. Just live like a lady for a few days. That's what I'd like. Do you know, I'd like to see one of these fabulous shows, them smashing American musicals they used to make. Oh, they really took you out of yourself then, did. All that singing, dancing and colour. That's all more, you know, when they came on tour. Oklahoma, Carousel, Guys and Dolls. Oh, and that'll get you gone. Uh, have you got your gun yet, Bet, or do you prefer to strangle him? Oh, she wants to strangle? You for practice, Hilda. Then after that, there's a whole flaming queue. Oh, well, she can't say she didn't know what she was getting into. All of us warned her. Hey, what's going on? Oh. Don't ask me. Oh, shut up, Hilda. Well, if we push it, you'll get the 12 minutes past seven. The last train leaves an hour later, but it doesn't get into use until 11.35. So you wouldn't be home till after midnight. How long did your mother say she'd stay? Look, she's happy enough. I'm not rushing, I'm exhausted. I'll get the later one. I want that drink you promised me. Drink? At that pub on the corner. Don't you want me to go in there or something? Might I meet somebody I'm not supposed to? No. No, no, of course not. They've got a team of topless go-go dancers. Seven, to be precise. They're all mad about me. That's why I always come home, worn out. That's true. Well, are we going? Well, you miss your train. So, I miss my train.
Yeah, he'll be all right. He just needs leaving alone for a bit, that's all. Yeah, which doesn't mean treat him like he got the plague or something. Right. Just act normal. Or in some cases, don't act normal. Look, I certainly shan't go pestering him. I'm very fond of Kenneth. I have got feelings too, you know. Although the way you lot go on, nobody'd think it. Mm. Mrs Ogden's here are all a bit touchy at the moment. Now, I know that Len and Rita, they've been very involved with poor Kenneth. Oh. But I'm sure they can trust us all to use our texts and discretion. Yeah, well, the only reason I let a lot of insults pass is because I don't like trouble. Never trouble trouble till trouble troubles you. It only doubles trouble, and troubles... Is that her? Mm -hmm. Go into the living room and try and persuade Bet to stay there a little longer. Get her to make a cup of tea or something. Now be tactful, dear. Sorry, Mrs. Walker. I don't agree with that. I mean, why should our poor Bet have to skulk off? If he's brazen enough to bring his missus in it, let him smooth things out. Hey, is that his wife? Is that my bald wife? <coughs> Betty, yeah. could I have a whisk and dry and a whisk and water? Please? Certainly. Hello again. Still here then? And enjoying every minute of it. Yeah. She's hooked on northern bubs. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I don't think I've had the pleasure. Oh, Mrs. Ogden, darling. Lynchpin of the community. Right, Mrs. Ogden? Oh, well, that's nice of you to say so, I'm sure. How do you do, Mrs. Baldwin? How do you do? Oh. Man, you're taller than me, that was a nice cup of tea, Mrs. Walker. I needed that. I've just brewed a fresh pot in you all, Betty, if you like taking five. You all right, love? Me? I'm sensational, as always. Right. Now, who wants what and don't all shout at once? I'm glad you said that, darling. Nobody else seems to be bothering. Right. Hey, uh, very smart looking, isn't she? How old would you say she was? About 30, 31 at most. Don't you think she looks hard, Faith? Ah, oh, well, that's obviously his type. I forgot the water. Water, yes, sir. Look, I'm sorry about this, but there's nothing I can do. Is there nothing? There's a complication. What complication? She's decided to stay. Stay? Where? In my house, obviously. My house? My house, Ben. I can hardly suggest she books into a hotel, can I? For how long? A couple of days. Her mother will look after the kids. She just fancies the idea. Does she? And where am I supposed to go? Anywhere you like, as long as you make yourself scarce. Got plenty of friends. Why can't you take her to a posh hotel for a couple of nights? Give her a treat. She wouldn't wear it, love. We just have to vacate the premises till she moves back to London. I see. There's nowt I can do about it, is there? You just sling me out and you can't even talk to me about it in case your wife misses you for half a minute. Oh, I know. I'm being a pain, getting above myself, wanting to be treated like a human being. You did say you wanted water with your whiskey, did you, sir? What's all that about? Eh? What? Friendly Northern Barway. Oh, Ben. Well, you know what it's like. Uh, it's had to keep the change once or twice. Next thing you know, you've got their life story. I'd have thought in her case it wouldn't bear repeating. Who, oh, Ben? Nah, she's a nice girl, is Ben. A girl? Not for a long time, love. Well, she's had a very tough time, is Ben. She's had a very hard life one way and another. All right, all right, she's lovely. If you like bottled blondes. Have you... Uh, no, but I've got a council report in it. I can't make it a tale of. I thought Fairclough might be able to explain it to me. Well, if you're really looking for Fairclough, I think you found him round at Ken's doing his good neighbour act. I think he was a bit worried that Ken might do a giant if he was left too much on his own. Rubbish. Ken's the last sort of person to... Have you ever sat to an inquest on somebody that you've been married to? No. Oh, I was forgetting yes. you have. Yes, well, it was a long time ago, but you don't get over it. Well, it sounds like a right out your father to me. Who does he think you are to be kicked out of your own home just like that? Exactly. Well, look, I can put you up in the back bedroom of my house if you like. What, and have you saying I told you so? And what did you expect every five minutes? Oh, I wouldn't. But you'd be thinking it then, right? Well, the offer's there, love. I know, and I appreciate it, Betty, honestly. Hey, whoa, 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 no, that's more than enough. I thought I was going to have a quiet night. Get it down here. Well, you can be too quiet, can you? Len? Yeah? No way. Not me. I'm not the type. I prefer to live and suffer. Sometimes I think I must actually like suffering. I don't know what you're talking about. I wonder where Rita's got to. Well, she's coming too. Yeah, she said she was going to cook us a meal. 
Well, I've got some good friends, that's for sure. You know, I always had an idea that Janet was neurotic. Well, in fact, she was neurotic. But she hid it, concealed it very successfully. Except when she lost her temper. And she wasn't like other people. She'd go into a sort of white rage. She'd be possessed with it for days. And she wouldn't say. I mean, if I'd done something wrong, she never said. It was like that when she killed herself. I never dreamt. You weren't to know? I mean, if there is such a thing as a suicidal type, I wouldn't have put Janet in that category. Neurotic, yes. Unstable, possibly. Well, unstable, certainly. But as for actually wanting to die, her life. I don't even know she did want to die. A lot of people take an overdose as a way of saying, please help me. Maybe it was the only way she knew to get through to me. Only one thing you can do now, let's forget it. Honestly. Hi. Mm. Sorry I took ages. Queue at that shop a mile long. Now, wouldn't you think folk could get the shopping done before now? I've got you a frozen lasagna, because it's easy. That do you? Fine, fine. Green beans, grilled tomatoes. Yeah. Oh, she's got it all worked out, hasn't she? Don't you kid yourself. You've heard that song, Smile When Your Heart Is Breaking. She's had her share of that. <laughs> yeah, not me. Barlow the introvert. Getting your eye full, I yield her. Where's she stopping then? Number five. All gonna be under the same roof, are you? <laughs> yeah, why not? Could be interesting, that, eh? You're not. Yourself. It's all right, we No, you see, they get the plywood and bend it up and then they put the colour in Excuse me. Oh, uh, do us a favour, would you? Could we have the same again? Certainly, Mr. Baldwin. Aren't you going to introduce me to your wife? Eh? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, and this is Beth, Beth Lynch. How do you do? Fine, Tom. Have you been up here before? No, never. It's very different, isn't it? Different to what? Well, different from London. Oh, I. Back in a jiffy cup. Didn't really want another drink. Oh, you might as well. Uh, I've got to pop across the road for five minutes. So I've got to find a fellow in Leeds. Well, can't it wait till tomorrow? No, well done. He's a rep. He's on the road all day, so I phone him at home in the evening. Look, uh, you look after the drinks, and then we'll pop out for a nice meal somewhere, eh? Well, five minutes and no longer. This place is beginning to fall a bit. That's for the drinks. Is he coming back? What do you think? Keep the change. Thanks. I like your perfume. Thanks very much. I never wear it myself. I find it tends to cling to everything. Clothes and furniture and so on. Probably. That's why it's called Forever. Mm. Is that about right for Mike, you know? A bit more. You do do your job well, don't yes, you? Tell me something else that clings to everything. Long blonde hair. Are you trying to set someone? I'm not stupid, you know. I knew Mike had got somebody up here. It is you, isn't it? Is it? Oh, come on, sweetie. I don't know what to say. I shouldn't say anything. Let Mike do all the talking. I mean, I should go and sit down and have a nice drink if I were you. You've gone a bit pale. <laughs> How's baby Tracy tonight? Oh, smash it. No, she's very good, you know. She hardly cries at all. Mind you, when she does cry, I always pick her up. I know in books it says you shouldn't. <laughs> oh, you can go daft following the advice in books. He'll tell you different anyway. It's your baby. You take the notice. Andre's, remember? Mind you, he's got some right funny ideas about bringing kids up. He wants to take her to Bath, chuck her at deep end. Come again? Well, they do it at South Sea Islands. 
As soon as they're born, they bung them in sea and they learn to swim straight off. It's instinctive at that age. Hey, you're not going to do that with Tracy, are you? Not while I'm her mother. <laughs> no, he's very good with her. Hey, you should see him. He gets her bottle, and then he gets his bottle, and he sits there singing away to her. <laughs> Some of the songs are a bit dodgy, but I don't suppose <laughs> Tracy's bothered. Hiya. 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 Can you do me a favour, Reenie? I'll try. Is there any chance of me stopping in that flat of yours for a couple of nights? If there's not, it don't matter. Something's come up, I think, is the expression. Yes, of course you can, love. Whatever it happened. In a nutshell, Mrs. Baldwin's turned up. She has. Look, I'm on about that, right? I'm Mike Baldwin. I'm that lady over there who just happens to be his wife. Now, that told me in confidence. Well, not exactly in confidence, but sort of private. But they're all three going to be spending the night under the same roof. What do you make of it? I don't make anything of it. Why not? Because Bet's moving out of number five, that's why not. And I don't see what it's got to do with you in the first place. You sure about that? I'm positive, Hilda. Oh, yeah, well, just found it a joke. Mm -hmm. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. Did you get fixed up, lovey? Yeah, I can stay at Rena's for a couple oh. of nights. Betty, you don't mind me not coming in with you, do you? No, no, not at all. <laughs> sure she knows about you and Mike. Oh, yeah. She more or less came straight out with it and said so, yeah. What did she say? Well, she said, are you Mike's girlfriend? I could hardly say no, could I? She seemed so flaming cool about it. As though she thought the whole thing were funny. I mean, I've had my face slapped by women in my time. I've even had some of my hair pulled out. But I've never had one who said, so you're his bit of fluff and just sat there. Well, perhaps it's one of them trendy marriages. You know, you go your way, I'll go mine. Full of understanding, you know. I just think she's a very cool customer. Right. I hope. Can I have a word, love? Yes. Is Mike coming back for that drink or isn't he? I've no idea. Well, what did he say to you just now? When? I'm not an idiot. I mean, he slips out with some excuse about making a phone call. And a couple of minutes later, you slip out as well. Now, I don't know what you've been cooking up, but I would like to know if he's going to come back and face the music or whether I've got to go looking for him. Look, Mrs Baldwin, I have no idea where your husband is, and I certainly didn't go out to meet him just now. But what's so flaming funny? What did you just say? My husband? God, you've got to be joking. Is that what he told you, that... Oh my God, he's a Are you trying little... to tell me that you're not married? You're not his wife? I'm in the same boat as you are, my love. A friend, companion, mistress, housekeeper. Everything except wife. But the kids, what about his kids? Not his, they're mine. The kids were on the scene a long time before Mike appeared. He's like a father to them, sort of. But he's not their dad. All this time he's been laughing himself sick telling me he's married. Oh, my God. I'll tell him what you think of him, shall I? No. You tell him what you think of him. I'll tell him what I think of him later. Be my guest. <laughs> Has come off. Let your mum put it back on for you and you won't catch cold. That's a good girl. Oh no, don't suck your mitten. Oh, nasty. Take it out. There's a good girl. Hello. You're an early bird. Yeah, I can't stop. I've got this worm to catch. Oh, well, I hope you don't mind me mentioning it, but you've got lipstick on your teeth. Have I? Sam. All right. Yeah. No, I just thought I'd mention it in case you wanted to make a. Uh, strong impression on this particular worm. I don't know about strong impression, love. Strong impact, more like. Sounds fascinating. Don't eat your mittens. I've told you once. Hiya. Hello. Hey, sorry I'm late. Two of my lads didn't turn up. <laughs> anyway, worth waiting for. Read all about it. About what? It's all in there. Inquest on Janet Barlow. Says Ken wasn't to blame. Mm. I mean, I know we know that, but it's nice for him to see it in print. Mm. 
See you. Anyway. Okay. Try Try it. It. <clears throat> Not that one, Hilda. Weatherfield Gazette, page seven. Oh. Catching up on world events, I Hilda. No, I'm looking for this report on the Inquisition. Inquest. Ken's wife, it's all in the papers this morning. Oh, come on then, let's all have a cheap thrill. Look, do you find? It's just friendly concern, is this? Nothing more, nothing less. All right, here we are, here it is. <laughs> Our wife killed herself with a drug overdose while her husband was in the house, a Weatherfield inquest was told yesterday. Mrs Janet Barlow, aged 34, oh, was found dead by her husband Kenneth at his home in Coronation Street, Weatherfield, when he went to take her a morning cup of tea. Mr Barlow told the coroner that he and his wife had been living apart, but she had been staying with him at the time of her death. The pathologist, Mr Howard Coates, said that his post-mortem examination showed that Mrs Barlow had swallowed a considerable quantity of bar... bar oh, come here. Where is it? There, look. Oh, barbiturates. It's like a sleeping pill, you know. Oh. What did judge have to say? They don't have judges and inquests. Oh, all right. Coroner, whatever he is. The coroner, Dr George Armstrong, said Mrs Barlow was clearly a lonely and unhappy woman, but it is equally clear that no one realised the extent of her depression. Well, I don't see as that takes any of the blame off Ken. I mean, that's as good as saying Ken should have cottoned on. Shut your face, Hilda. What else, better? Mr Barlow has no reason to reproach himself. Before the night of his wife's death, he had not seen her for several months, and he was in no position to judge her state of mind. He had no idea that his wife had sleeping tablets in her possession, and she apparently gave no warning of her intention to take an overdose. Verdict suicide. While well, the balance of the mind was disturbed. Don't say that, eh? Oh, that's what they always do say, though, isn't it? I know disturbed it, eh? Balance of her mind. You're disturbing the balance of my mind, Hilda. The cabaret is over now, love, so go on and get on with your cleaning. Mm -hmm. Feeling any better? Not a lot. I thought I was back in favour. Look, you can tell Bet, whatever her name is, that she can pack her bags and shove off. Then I might just forgive you. I'll think about it. Oh, this place still reeks of her scent. It shouldn't do. Got rid of half a can of air freshener in here last night. God, it serves you right. When are you going to tell her? In my own time. I want to let down gently. I don't want to hurt. Don't let her talk you into anything. Don't trust me very much, dear. Oh, Mike. Is it surprising? Look, when we agreed not to live in each other's pockets, I didn't mean you could go setting up another house on the side. Well, it just sort of happened, that's all. I mean, I'm, I don't expect you never to look at another woman. I know you like women. I don't blame you. But... But what I can't accept is all the lies and deceptions and and just using people as though they've been put on this earth for your convenience. And that's what you're doing with Bet. No. No, I'm very fond of Bet. I never have shacked up with her if I wasn't. No, I'm not going to pretend that she's the love of my life either. I had it till I was married. Beneath all that breeziness, she's a very lonely woman. Well, I could see a mile off that all she wanted was a husband to make an honest woman of her, but it wasn't going to be me. What if I could help it? So, she's had a boyfriend. A nice house that she could do up the way she wanted. A few new clothes, a few laughs. That's what it's all about. But now it's over. Now it's over. Because I'm telling you, Mike, it's her or me. Yeah. Well, the first order you can have tomorrow. Come in. Yeah, what I'm telling you. Right. The extra shirts. Yeah, no way. Well, if you want to try elsewhere, you're quite welcome to try elsewhere. Well, oh, I don't know, about a week to ten days. Right. OK. Told him that last week. If he'd have made a firm order, he'd have had him by now. It's typical, that. Hello, Ben. Are you listening now? Yeah, but I'm a bit busy. I've got a few things on, yeah. You are a lousy, stinking rat, Baldwin. I've met a lot of rats in my life. In fact, I spend my time waiting for the next rat to come out of the next sewer. But you are the biggest, dirtiest rat to date. Is that it? 
It just about sums up the way I feel, yes. You know your trouble, don't you, Ben? You like rats. If you didn't like rats, you wouldn't be interested in me. No, you'd be going out with some nice fella. Take it to the cinema, hold your hand. Wouldn't upset you, wouldn't break your heart. But you're not interested, do you know why? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what turned you on about me, shall I? I was a gamble. You didn't know if I was going to meet you when I said I'd meet you. You didn't even know if I'd turn up at all. You didn't know if we had a future together. You weren't all that bothered, really. Do you know why? Because you had a bit of cash being spent on you. Flashy bloke to go around with. That's all you wanted. That's all any of them ever want, come to think of it. You're so wrong. I don't think so. I knew I couldn't have love, Mike. But I was ready to settle for honesty. Why? Why did you have to tell me you were married? To stop me getting ideas, was that it? Some women do get ideas. You know, you make me sick. I'm sorry. But you went into it with your eyes open. That's true. I might as well have been blind. Ah, well, that's the way it goes, isn't it? You win a few, you lose a few. Do you know what I mean? You know, it really is too bad of Beth disappearing again like this. Yeah, well, it was rather important, Mrs Walker, what she got to sort out. I know. And of course, it's most unfortunate. Mrs Baldwin turning up like this. It was bound to happen sooner or later, and Beth should have considered it in the first place. Mm. All the same, I suppose it's not one's place to make judgments in these matters. No, Mrs Walker. Still? I do think that Beck could have organised herself a little better. If that's who I think it is, you better nip upstairs. It could be embarrassing. Not for me. Oh, come on, please. Well, remember, it's her or me, all right? All right. I'm not going to just chuck her in the gutter. She does live here, you know. Not anymore, Mike. Is it convenient for me to find out if I've still got a roof over my head? I can come back later if you'd rather. Now, is this going to be a reasonable discussion or is it going to be another slangy match? I'm trying to be reasonable. Although God knows I've got every reason to smash your lousy face in. You know, I didn't think you'd take it as hard as you have done. I mean, you're tough, you know the score. So how come all the squawking? I hope. What else do you think keeps people like me going? We hope. We hope that one day we'll meet somebody who won't lie and cheat and pretend that they care when all they really want's a willing tart. <laughs> I've been kicked in the teeth often enough. That doesn't come as a surprise. But it doesn't stop it hurting. I never meant to hurt you, Ben. Just seemed the easiest way to arrange things. Never meant to hurt me? What the hell did you think you were doing? Oh, well, you know, I mean, we had a good time. Uh, you know the score. But anyway, uh, I've been with Anne for a long time now. <laughs> you wouldn't trust me anymore, would you? You're so cheap, Mike. So flaming cheap. I'm going to London with Anne for a while. When I get back, I want you out of here. Hand all your gear, understand? Oh, no, love. You don't get rid of me as easily as all that. I live here. I mean it, Bet. Anne, come on, we're going. Come on, wait till she's finished her breakfast. Oh, it's too late now. Put it on the sideboard. No, I want to give mine to what her. What are you two whispering about? 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Elsie. Happy birthday to you. Well, how the heck did you know it was my birthday? I'd be telling, wouldn't it? We have viz of making people talk. Oh, well, as long as you don't know how old I am, that's all right. Thank you very much. Actually, it's my farewell present as well. Farewell? Well, me week's up, isn't it? Me mum always told me, when you leave somewhere, go out on a good note, which means you can always come back again. Oh, you're a crafty little cat, I'll say that for you. All right, you can stay on another week, but just one, mind you. Nobody's asked my opinion yet. Well, nobody asked you because you're the lodger here, same as her. And that means go and tidy your bedroom, because last time I looked in, it was worse than mine. I don't know why I bother stopping here. Same reasons as her. One, because it's cushy, and two, because it's cheap. Come on, girl, do as Elsie tells you. Creep. I'm surprised with your exciting life you've time to read a paper. Are you trying to be sarcastic because I'm not in the mood? Me? I've just read somewhere that people who lead exciting lives haven't time to read a paper. They're too busy making the news. Well, now you come to mention it, it is possible that you could be reading very soon that I've murdered a certain well-known two-timing factory boss. Ah, well, drums were right then. That's what I heard. Drums? What drums? Jungle tom-toms. Cobblestone jungle, remember? There's not a lot that goes on round here, love, that don't pass through here sooner or later. Why can't folk keep their big mouths shut? Why should they? Hey, you never could. And besides, if you're going to barge into a fella's office and tear him off a strip, strikes me you're just looking for trouble. Well, I was livid. How would you feel if a bloke tells you he's married, then you find out he's not? He's just been stringing you along to keep you in your place so you don't put bite on. Mm. Then he tells you to clear out a house. Like hell. I'm sticking, he's not having it all his own way. Well, far be it from me to say. All right, right. Join the queue. You warn me, everybody warn me. But I've not lost yet and I don't intend to. And correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't a certain person not a million miles away from here fancy him herself? Oh, you've got to be joking. Uh, excuse me, Bet. I know it's none of my business. Well, why don't you be the one person round here who keeps her nose out of it? Well, I only wanted to ask me, why is it so bad now that Mr Baldwin turns out not to be married? I mean, isn't it better if he's single? Could Single people are allowed to go out together, aren't they? Isn't she lovely? I thought I'd put her in a sideshow at Blackpool, but they said I'd put other people out of business. Well, I wish you wouldn't talk about me like that, Rita. It's a perfectly reasonable question. Right. Well, what's bothering Bet, and would bother any other intelligent woman, is she's been conned. She has been treated as if she's a panting spinster that can't wait to get her claws into the single fella and drag him to Thalter. Right? Right. Well, isn't that what every woman wants, to get married? I mean, I, I know some women do fall for married men, but, well, if you're single, isn't it simpler? I think I'll try Morecambe. I should be able to get her in summit in Morecambe. Mavis, well, love, Bet has been conned, used and insulted, and it doesn't matter if Mike Baldwin is single or a budding bluebeard, right? Right. I still don't see. No, love. Well, you just go away and think about it. Hey, I tell you what, though, kid, I think you're doing right to hang on to that house. At least until you find another place. I'm hanging on to number five till they carry me out in a box. Anyway, Tron. Good luck. I mean it, seriously. Thanks. Oh, now then. Excuse me, are you looking for something? Yeah. I'll have that box of chocolates, please. Who are them for? It's Elsie. You're not the only one who can butter her up, you know. Well, I'll have one of them new face packs, please. Aye, aye. Work then, did it? Yeah, half turns it was her birthday. That's all right. I'm telling everybody. Buy it. I was smashing. Ah, price of bacon these days, so it ought to be. Yeah, and you're going to check them pools again? Well, to the usual one now. Well, it don't cost now to check them. No, I've got three drawers here. Yeah, that's three. It wouldn't matter if I eight this week. They're all flaming drawers. There won't be enough to buy a box of matches. Ah, oh, Stan, please, check them once more, just for me. You see... I've had this funny feeling all morning. A sort of expecting feeling. Eh? Oh, not that sort of expecting. Don't be so daft. That'll be a steak pudding and chips last night. They're laying heavy on me. No. No, it's got nothing to do with chips. No, I've had this feeling before, you know. It's like... Well, it's like I were being took over by supernatural forces. Being given a glimpse into the future. Now, you know my pals is a clairvoyant, Stanley. All right, all right, I'll count them again. But I can count. We've got three drawers. Oh, just think, Chuck. If you won 75,000 quid, we could actually go to where that Muriel is. 
I've often imagined myself as Julie Andrews, you know. The hills are alive with the sound of music. Running up and down that mountain knowing I'd got 75,000 quid in the bank. <sighs> hey, that'd show Annie Walker. Oh, I'd love that. Might even buy a pub and put her out of business. Look, will you shut up? How can I count when you're making that noise? Well, you've only got a count to eight. You know, Stan, with £75,000, you'd get the respect you deserve. I can just see you behind the wheel of a Jaguar. Yeah, you'd suit a Jaguar, you would. Hey! Hey, do folk get knighted for winning the pools? Oh, just think. Sir Stanley and Lady Ogden. Oh, it sounds nice, does that? Oh, we'd be different human beings, Stan. I've finished. Well? You're right, I can't count. We've not won. I can't count. We haven't got three draws. We've only got flaming two! This is going to be good, this. I should hope so, cos you're ruining my Sunday. You won't recognise yourself. Is that a promise? Yeah, and if you're very good, you can have a chocolate after. Oh, out of my own box, you mean. I don't <laughs> want you getting fat. Oh, I think you're a bit late for that. And anyway, I'm not so sure it's such a flattering idea. You'll buy me a face pack for my birthday. Don't be daft. Everyone's got the right to get plastered on their birthday. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> oh, <coughs> that chimney wants sweeping. You've been saying that for weeks. I know, but you try getting a <coughs> chimney sweep round here. That Toby Reynolds, he's been retired, and that fellow in Snowden Avenue, well, he's booked up for months. And in the meantime, we all choked to death. Aye. It's ruining my complexion and all. You mean ruining it more? I'm an English rose. A withered English rose? You know how my dad used to ch clean the chimney when I was a girl? With a brick. A brick? I used to tie a rope round a brick and drop it down the chimney. He used to bring all the soap down. Oh, what quaint customs around in the olden days. It is not too late for me to change my mind about who's stopping on here. <laughs> Morning. Ooh. Don't you ever clean up? You're very bright for a sunny morning, aren't you? Well, I can hardly say the same about you. I am resting after a very hard week's work. That's what Sundays are for, you know. Well, this should cheer you up a bit. Your ill-gotten gains from our hard morning's work. How much are you worth these days, Furclough? Why don't you know? I'm keeping this country afloat, if you don't believe me. Ask the taxman. To say nothing of you and your mate and all them little paper lads. Did they all turn up, by the way, this morning? Just about. Well, that's something, isn't it? Why are you so grumpy this morning? I mean, more grumpy than normal. I'm not flipping grumpy. I was in a very good mood till you landed. Ah, well, now I'm here, I think I'll have a cup of tea. And you look as if you could do with one and all. Do you know, Furclough, I think you could be getting too old for these Saturday nights out on the town. Listen who's talking. Who nearly got thrown out of the Blue Angel last night for trying to sit in the drummer's knee all night? I don't remember that. You don't want to remember. Sit down, I'll make you a cup of tea. Sit down. Hey! I didn't know you were Stanley's wedding with this club. Oh. Stanley's wedding? Tomorrow? Yes, yeah, right. You're going, of course. Well, it's my son's wedding day, isn't it? What are you wearing? Your pink for all. Top hat and willies. Oh. Well, whatever you do wear, if you want it dashing over with a smoothing iron, you know where I am. Yeah, Dan. Put me a bottle in there, will you, Fred? Oh, you're knocking the back a bit sharp tonight, Stan. I've got to get me a pleasure somewhere, haven't I? Why, right, what's up now? Oh, I'm a curse, I think. All them flipping drawers, and I can only get two. <laughs> well, you can't be lucky in love and lucky on the pools as well, you know, Stan, can you? Lucky in love? I've spawned a woman for six months. <laughs> done except much, our elder. Done much better myself. All those drawers, and I only get two. <laughs> what chance have I got to get eight? Not much, Stan. Not much. Oh, okay, well, excuse me, mate. Yes, Miss Bradshaw, can I get you anything? A dry sherry, please, Mrs. Walker. A dry sherry, please, when you have a moment, dear. Yes, Mrs. Walker. Such a willing girl, I'll bet. Priceless employed. If only her private life were up to scratch. Who says these days? Honest, dear. Take Miss Red, Mrs. Walker. <laughs> I believe she stayed with you on Friday night. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Trouble with Mr. Baldwin, of course. She didn't say. Really? Really? Thank you, dear. My pleasure, Mrs. Walker. Really? Bet. I'm not just Bet's employer, Miss Rachel. I am also her friend. I'm her friend too, Mrs. Walker. <laughs> and a very close one, evidently. Got 
sorting me pipes. I don't know how she can stand that chimney keeps smoking like that. Well, if you ask me, she's got used to it. I mean, there can't be all that much difference between soot and fags. What are we doing today? Not much. Hold up, so flaming depressing. Well, I Sunday what starts on our own in this dump has got no future. Yeah, you're right. Do you think I'd have been better off staying in girl guides? I didn't know you were a girl guide. I weren't. Oh, he's getting on my chest. Not doing my white not much good either. <coughs> hey, do you think I'm right what Elsie said, what her dad used to do? My dad? You know, cleaning the chimney with a brick on a roll. I didn't believe that, did you? It's possible. Oh, definitely not. I'm not that bored. Well, it'll pass an hour on. How would we get on the roof? I've got certificates for climbing me, trees and that. I once went off work Victoria Mill chimney. We could borrow one of Mr Ogden's ladders. I suppose we could give it a try. Well, not one if it don't work. You'll go on the roof? Of course. What are we waiting for? I'll get a brick. I'll get the rope. It's your honey roll. Tar. Oh, I hate you drop this. Oh, Tar. You can always stop again, you know. You're welcome if, if ever. Baldwin throws me out, no chance. As far as that house is concerned, I'm like the Rock of Gibraltar, unmovable. Yeah, well, good luck, love. Try. And thanks again, really. Bye bye. Hey, can you manage that? I think so, Elsie. Yeah, well, what are you going to do when you get to your front door? <laughs> See? I had key in my hand before I set off. I think of everything, mate. You hope. Possessions nine tenths of the law, don't they reckon? See you, Elsie. See you. Not bad. Now, where's that brick? Oh, rope. We haven't got a rope, have we? Do you not think this is going to work? Here we are. Elsie's washing line. She'll go spare. That'll come out the chimney like a long string of black licorice. You can scrub it after. Oh. Anyway, we have no option. Can't find anything else. Oh, well, you know what they say about giving folk enough rope? Hey, you know, I keep having this horrible thought. Supposing Nancy was kidding us about this brick lark. I mean, it does sound a bit daft, doesn't it, if you think about it? It's a bit of fun. If there's any damage, it'll be me who's out of here on her backside. And me. I happen to like it here. So do I. Now, there we are, Operation Clean Sweeping Operation. Now, just take this up on oh, the roof. Oh, no, you're going on the roof. Some kind of Tarzan, you reckon you are. That's the trouble with being a liar. You've got to have a good memory, and I've not. Well, come on, you know the ladder for us, at least. Great meal was that. Well, considering tat you had in it was. You're talking about that was my entire week shopping, that. Where is it now then? Pies down at Rovers for the rest of the week. I won't have to eat again till next Sunday after a meal like that. What are you doing? Booking me. If you'll come, yeah. Well, I'll have to see how I'm placed, won't I? But if I do come, it'll cost you. Name your price. Well, it's not money. Oh, yeah. Well, this gets more interesting every minute. Hey, you can get them ideas and all. Oh, um, I just fancy going somewhere with you. Going somewhere? Where? Well, you might think this dead cheeky, but I wouldn't mind going to your Stanley's wedding with you. Well, I said you'd think it were cheeky, so forget it. Uh, no, it's not that. I just fancied seeing him married. He's had a rough time, and I think she'll make him very happy. Call me sentimental if you like. I thought I'd just go into the church and then get in the way again as soon as I could afterwards. Uh, you know what things are like between Stanley and me. That invitation didn't come from him, it came from her. So the least he sees of me, the better. Don't be daft. No, it's true. Oh, I just thought for a second you thought I weren't good enough to take to your son's wedding. There's nothing I'd like better. You look stunning in a fancy hat. I do, I do. Do you think we should have told Mr Ogden we borrowed his ladder? No, we'll have it back for you. have missed it. Well, don't look down. Just keep climbing. And be careful. Are you all right? Oh, well, you built up. Anyone think I've never climbed a ladder before in my life? Hello. What are you doing here? Oh, I've just come in for a bit of peace and quiet, to tell you the truth. Yeah. That house of mine is bedlam. Try to read the Sunday papers and you've got two of them interrupting you. Try to make a cup of tea and you've got to make a pot for three. So I thought I'd just get a good book and go to bed for the rest of the day. What, on your birthday? How did you know it was my birthday? Oh, I see. Well, at least you get two cards, a box of chocolates and a face pack. Mm -hmm. Thanks for nothing. 
What better place to go on your birthday? And you should know. We're about the same age. We are, Ella's like. All right. How old are you? How old are you? Ladies do not tell their age. Exactly. Well, I'm still hell of a lot younger than you. Oh, come on. A year or two, perhaps. All right. Truce. Tell you what, I'll make you a cup of tea. OK. Have you seen Bet today? I just wondered if she was still in residence. Yeah, I think she is, as a matter of fact. Oh. Do you know what I think? I think Mike Baldwin will come crawling back to her. Mm. Do you think she'll have him back? Well, she says not. Oh, I didn't ask you that. No, I don't. No, I think he's really upset her. A pride as much as anything. Oh, well, in that case, her days at number five are numbered. Oh, heck, now I'll have to make tea for three. But what puzzles me, Elsie, is why Betty's so upset now she's found his single. Oh, no, not again. Oh, do you mind, Rita? I'm talking to Elsie. Well, what can I say? Mike Baldwin's a fellow who likes to have his cake and eat it at the same time. He likes to fly his kite and feel his freedom. That's why he told her he was married. And a girl can't let a fellow do that to her, can she? Hey? Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, you mean I can't understand it. Mavis, love, it's as simple as this. Before you get involved with the bloke, you check all the angles. It's the only way, because most of them are swines, unadulterated swines. Oh, don't do as I do, do as I say. Shut up, you. <laughs> hey, how did you like that new face pack Susie got you, Elsie? Oh, uh, very nice, thank you. Oh, it's a new line. It's only very good. Well, I haven't tried one myself, but uh, perhaps you'd let me know when you've tried yours, because I trust your judgment. Oh, good. I'm glad, because I just used it not an hour since. Oh, I'm sorry, Elsie. Well, I mean, it's been very light in here, and I've I, always been told I need glasses. <laughs> what can I say? Don't say another word, love. Come on, I'll take you for a drink. <laughs> I've gone right off tea. Big job. Well, Stick another pint in there, will you, Fred? Yeah, yeah, this is going to cost me, mate. Oh, no, it's not. I brought Elsie in here to buy her a birthday drink. Hey, I forgot about that. Happy birthday, darling. Mine's a pint. I've just ordered it. Winty, General. Take your breath away. I'm only flipping joking. Get him in, Fred, on me. Ah. Somebody's happy. Well, I wouldn't have thought when you reached Elsie's age you'd want reminding a birthday. I can see it's not been your day. It hasn't. It's not been my year so far. Like the last one and the one before that. Right, now you got them. Let's see if you can get them down yet. Oh, no trouble. When you get it on, your capacity increases. The booze, I mean. Half a bottle of gin. She's anybody. Full bottle. Cheers. Cheers Happy darling. birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday well. to you. Very happy, Richard. Well, it was your birthday. Oh, well, the trouble with living round here, Mrs Walker, is too many people realise it is my birthday. <laughs> well, may I be permitted to join in the festivities by buying you a drink? Well, why not? Hey, it's an occasion, is this? The last time Annie bought a drink was VE Day. Now you know perfectly well that's not true, Len. Yeah. Why does nobody laugh when I make jokes? Because you're not funny. Get us yes. Don't worry, dear. It's not all downhill. There are many advantages to getting on in here. Oh, yes, and I've got them all. Sciatica, rheumatism, gout. No, seriously, if you want to stay in the flat, it's there. I'll be glad of your company. But if you want it on a regular basis, I mean, I'll have to charge. There's nothing out of the way. Look, I've gone into this, and that's furnished accommodation. And as a tenant, I've got my rights. That's right. If you're the tenant. But that's what I am, a tenant in furnished accommodation. Yeah, but are you? What are you talking about? There is his housekeeper, aren't you? I mean, at least you were. So? So, if he claims that you're not the tenant, but an employee, well, you don't have the same protection, do you? Or at least I don't think so. Oh, you're a big help. So, this is the roof I'm trying to keep over my head, is it? Oh, well, here goes. trip came down and somebody shouted Geronimo. Oh, look at the mess. I told you that chimney wanted sweeping. It doesn't need sweeping now. Look at me. Look oh. at the mess. Look at my dinner. Never mind your dinner. Look at me memorial. Me mountains turned into a slag heap. Are you all right? Great, 
I'm coming down now. Coming down? Are you going to do it then? I've done it. You can't have. There's nothing happened in here. Hey, it should have done. I dropped brick right down. Do it again. Only this time, drop the brick without the rope. Happen the rope ain't long enough. Well, come on, give us a hand. I'll have to get myself cleaned up first. I heard somebody shout Geronimo. I distinctly heard a voice. Ah, you've been hearing voices for years. Hey, I wonder if there's any more to come down. I hope not. Oh, well, if at first... I reckon we've been very lucky, so... What the heck? to work and cause oh. the place in so else you'll kill us. That's true. Well, what are we going to do? There's no we can do. Many lodgers very, must be very firmly stuck up there. Would have come down by now. Oh, I suppose you're right. Whose daft idea were it to drop a brick down the chimney anyway? Elsie's. Yeah, you're right. So if it does come down and cover the place in so she's only got herself to blame. It won't come down. I wish you'd stop doing that. Oh, look, I'll dust you in a minute if you don't get that breakfast down you and come and give me a hand. Do you want me to get indigestion? Go for me food, do You've never had indigestion in your life. You could digest hundred weight of boxing gloves inside that gut of yours. It wasn't my fault the brick came down the chimney. No, not logically it weren't, Stanley. But disasters seem to follow you about like, like rain did St. Swithin. Sometimes wonder if I shouldn't have you sterilised. Well, it saved us a job anyway. Saved us a job? Have you seen the state of this place? Especially my lovely Muriel. My snow-capped peak looks like the coal man's hat and my ducks are all crows. So you keep saying it's not as bad as that. No, not to you it's not. You've never been house proud. You could live inside a rusty kiln and not notice. I've had enough. I'm off. Oh, that's right. Go on, leave it all to me as per usual. <laughs> you can call him on Annie Walker. Tell her I can't manage her muck and all this morning. Oh, oh it's lovely, Reed. It's all right for a wedding present, oh, isn't it? Oh, of course it is. They're all the rage, then. I'd have one in my bedroom if I thought my Auntie Edie would approve. Does your Auntie Edie approve of anything? Oh, not much. Mm. But it were her upbringing, you see. A father were a strict Wesley, mm. and a mother were Presbyterian, so between them they just banned about everything there was. Mm. My mum and dad were agnostics. <laughs> Which proves something. What? The value of God-fearing parents. Hey, I'll sock you in a minute. I'll tell you something it does prove, though. What? Well, you know, they say kids rebel if you're too strict with them. Yeah. They didn't, though, did they? No. And there weren't all them psychiatrists and social workers then, either. No. Hey, mm. will you do something for me? Mm. Will you write card for me in your beautiful copper plate handwriting? Another fruit of a strict childhood. What? Well, Miss Connie. Yeah. Is it we have to call her that, you see, because... Our elder sister were a teacher as well. Yeah. And we had to call her Miss Eastwood to distinguish between them, you know. Fascinating. Yeah, well, Miss Connor, she taught us reading and writing. And do you know, yeah. if the sticks of your peas and your D's weren't exactly the same height, she would stick you on the edge with a pencil. Bitch. Oh, no, she was very nice, really. Oh, Ooh, she used to give us Turkish delight at Christmas. Oh, and she always had a spare pair of knickers handy. Pardon? You know, in case any one of us had a, an accident in class. Oh, thoughtful. <laughs> Very thoughtful. Yeah. Mm. What's um, Len Sum's first name again? Stanley. Just put to Stanley and Liz, mm -hmm. wishing you much happiness from Rita at the cabin. Right. How old are they? Well, Stanley's is just over 20 and Liz is a bit younger. Oh, it's just the right age to be married. Oh, now, Mavis. Oh. Don't go all runny jelly on me like you do when anybody mentions wedding bells. Mm -hmm. By the way, what do you do when you actually hear them? Oh, I go into a trance. Do you know you could be a traffic hazard? <laughs> I don't know what time this wedding is. I don't want to miss Len. in the backyard to <laughs> No, uh, what I wanted your advice about was this. I wonder why you were carrying it round. Yeah, well, fell down us chimney, didn't it? It did what? Come down our chimney yesterday. 
covered my living room in soot. Not to mention me and Stan and me Muriel. Let's have a look. I was a bit worried, you see. I mean, I was wondering if one brick could come down, could any more follow it, like? Do you think the chimney might be dangerous? That brick didn't come from your chimney, Hilda. Eh? That's an Accrington brick. All these houses are made of local bricks, you see. There's no way that came from your chimney. Well, it come down, it. Seen it with my own eyes. Crash, bang, wallop, fell right in the half. Nearly took my head off. <sighs> Bit of a mystery, is that, isn't it? Yeah. Unless it was dropped by a passing pigeon. There you are. What did I tell you? Not a sausage. Thank heaven for that. We will never see that brick again. It's become, as they say, part of the fabric. I'll take your word for it. Hey, while we're here, should we have a brew? No, we'll get back to the shop pronto. If anybody tells Mike he's Baldwin we've deserved I don't care if he's in Addis Ababa. Come on. Oh, you are of a nervous disposition, you are. You come into my life hasn't helped. There we are, dear. Don't want your hands getting all rough and red, do we? The best way of doing that, Mrs. Walker, is to get Hilda in doing a job. Oh, no, dear, no. I've gone after that woman for the last time. If she doesn't come in in future, we will do the cleaning between us. And she'll lose a day's pay. Did you say we'll do it between us? Well, I am going round the living room with the dust, and I have sacrificed my gloves. We truly are partners in adversity, dear, aren't we? Some partners. We'll see if she offers me Hilda's wage for today. <laughs> no chance. I shall ask for it. You know, I've been thinking, but there's enough of us here to form the branch of a union, you know. What union? Well, I don't know. It may be the uh, old hotel and uh, catering trade, something like that, wouldn't it? You mean two of us? Well, there's Betty. Oh, a natural-born black leg if I've ever seen one. Especially after the last time we crossed swords with Mrs. Walker about paying conditions. <laughs> she really marked your cards for Bernie at that time, didn't she? You know, I could do with a bit of union help at home myself. Do they have one that looks after housekeepers? Not your sort, though. You know, you're altogether too spry this morning, Frederick. I shall lamp you with this mop if you're not careful. Well, I got a nod in the wink last night from that customer dinner. You know, that big redhead with the uh, arthritis. Oh, yeah, she's married to that big miner. <laughs> He's in bed in with a bad back. Fire heck, Fred, you're going desperate. True. I say, are you still hanging on in that house you're in? Of course I am. If Flaming Baldwin wants me out, he'll have to throw me out physically. He might, I know. <laughs> hey, glad I've caught you. Got a wedding present for your Stanley. Clocked it in Crawshaw's window this morning while I was doing papers. Tony Fielding never turned up again at all. He's in for a right wake up powder when he joins Navy, like he threatens he's going to. Hey, shouldn't you be dressed and ready? What time's his wedding? Three o'clock. Well, how long does it take to get from here to Nottingham? A couple of hours. Come on, get your skates on. Uh, hey, thanks for the wedding present. Oh, that's all right. It's not much. Just look at this place. Do you ever clean up? Sunday, every Sunday. Well, you could have fooled me. It's a right tip. Give my love to Stanley and Liz. Hope everything goes off all right. Yeah. You got a clean shirt and everything? Yeah, of course I have. Don't forget to clean your shoes. Yeah. See ya. There may be trouble ahead, but while there's moonlight and music... Hey, have you got a minute? I was just getting into my stride then, Hilda. Sounds like your corsets was too tight to me. Terra, Hilda. Oh, no, hang on. I want you to ask you so much. You haven't had a fall of soot, have you? No, I gave up smoking last week. <laughs> No, seriously, our chimney's been smoking quite a bit. We can't get a chimney sweep. I suggested to Sue and Gail that we put a brick down it, you know, like we used to. You'd make it front pump with that. Neither did I. So were you, sitting in for something? I'm exhausted, aren't you? It's only dinner time. Ah, I see. Been gathering new roads buds while you may, have we? I've been cleaning this flipping place. Well, that's not your job. You know that. I know that. Mrs. Walker doesn't know that. Like she doesn't know a lot of things, like I'm a human being. 
coping, I bet. Good. It's one thing about hard work, it's very invigorating, isn't it? I find it so. Anyway, I'm cooking you a nice lean lamb chop, dear, so when things get quieter, just come through. I'm having mine now, actually. I'm famished. <laughs> Miss Bradshaw. Mrs. Walker. She takes your breath away, don't she? She really believes that the Zer and the rest of us. She's not being condescending, right? She really believes it. Perhaps she does have some blue blood in her. I reckon Bonnie Prince Charlie left his mark on her family as he passed through Clitheroe on his way to Bannockburn. God, don't tell her that. Then come down. <laughs> Oh, very good. Elsie said I was cobbled together in your dinner hour. Yeah, well, perhaps one of these days you two will cobble something together for me in your dinner uh, hour. We're not allowed to be away from the shop at the same time, sorry. Oh, aye. And you can't be Gail and Susie, then. You must be somebody else. No, well, Mike's in London today, so we left a mate holding for. You'll get the sack. As sure as God made little apples, you'll get the sack. We are indispensable. Oh, aye. Did Mike tell you that? No, she did. <laughs> Only me. Elsie again. I've the sugar. Doing. Get that off my green tablecloth. It'll leave a mark that way. No, it won't. I wiped it. Which is more than somebody did when they dropped it down our chimney. Eh? You heard. Them two it were. Now, come on, own up. I weren't born yesterday, you know. Don't know what you're talking about. Do you know what she's talking about? No idea. Oh, don't come now. She blew the gaff on you just now in the yard. Chimney's been smoking, so I said to Gail and Susie, we ought to drop a brick down it like we used to in the old days. We're an accident. Oh, Gail. Sorry. Now, there you are. She's admitted it. Oh. You never did. Did it make much of a mess, Elder? Oh, it's only covered me whole house in stuff, that's all. I'm still cleaning it up. Even inside my handbag. Put a bit of powder on my face last night and I finished up looking like a black and white minstrel. And my muriel's practically ruined. You what? But she's got a sort of alpine scene or summit on wall wall. Not all summit. It is an alpine scene. Or it were. Well, it's, it's not always bright and sunny in the Alps, Mrs. Ogden. Sometimes it's cloudy and dark. <laughs> Oh, you think it's funny, do you? You think it's funny dropping bricks down folks' chimneys, willy-nilly, at random? Well, it were on a rope first time. Same time I just dropped it. Well, by the heck, I'll say this for you. You make soccer hooligans look like sisters of mercy. I bet you both got certificates in vandalism, haven't you? Right, well, we'll just see if there isn't a law against dropping bricks down people's chimneys. I expect the police will be able to find one, cos they'll be the next visitors you'll be getting here. Hey, haven't you forgotten something? What? Your brick. Oh, aye. I'll need that for evidence. Look, it has made a mark on my clean you cloth. She Look. go to the police. They won't do out here if she does. It were an accident. We dropped it down. How you got chimney. it up there in the first place? I don't know. Upon the roof. We borrowed Miss Stockton's ladder. You never. We did. Well, it's a good job you didn't tell Hilda that. She would have killed you. <laughs> Right, I'm off. That were quick. You made me feel a right bar fly, and I've only been here half an hour. Well, I've got something I want to do. Anything interesting? You'd laugh if I told you. I could do with a laugh. All right, I'll give you a laugh. I popped in Lens this morning, taking my wedding present for their Stanley. Getting married today. And you should have seen their house. It just looked as if he'd had squatters in. So I thought I'd tidy up a bit for him while he were in Nottingham. You, tidy up for Len? After that stroke he pulled on us, kidding us he were injured. I know, I want me bumps felt. For it won't be nice driving all the way back from Nottingham, coming home to a house like that. Ah. Oh, sure up, it won't. See ya. <laughs> she thinks more about Len than she cracks on, if you ask me. You know, we're daft. Why do we bother with them? Why don't we form our own exclusively female society and just Shanghai one or two occasionally, just to keep the world going round, because we deserve all we get? Yeah, no, you've not been thrown out yet. But I would see a solicitor. I really would. I've thought about it. But I haven't got the art today. Or the strength. Len? Hey! What the hell are you doing here? What the hell are you doing here? I must have dropped off. Do you know what time it is? It's after one o'clock. Is it? You're not going this wedding, are you? Oh, it's too late now. You never intended going, did you? How did you know it was still here? I didn't. I won't do a bit of cleaning up for you while you were away. You were going to clean up for me? I know. Bet said I would have for doing it. I would have got round to it myself sometime. Every Sunday, you told me. Why haven't you gone, Lem? I dropped off. 
Why, Len? Because they didn't flame me want me, did they? Stanley didn't want me there. Liz did. Yeah, but he's my flaming son, isn't he? Oh, Len. Oh, don't start feeling sorry for me. But I do. And for Stanley, and especially for Liz. Ah, oh, she's a good enough kid. But I made my bed with him 20 years ago, as far as he's concerned. He had every right. Well, personally, I think he's been vindictive. It wasn't him, it was me. I let him down. Well, we all let somebody down at some stage or other. The whole world would hate each other if we all bore a grudge like your Stanley. I know, but father and son, that should be different, shouldn't it? It's just the same. There was no excuse, none at all. He's got every right to hate me. Oh, you do feel sorry for yourself, don't you? I should be getting the champagne, shouldn't I? I should be patting an air dad on the back saying what a great guy my Stanley is. I could just hear the ominous silence when they're talking about his family. What the hell is he going to say when, when they ask where his dad is? What, what's he going to say to them? I'm, I'm bloody dead or what? Do you know what I think? I think that wedding's all the poorer for you not being there. That's what I think. I bet they don't even have champagne because you're not there. Because there's one thing you are, Fairclough, and that's good company. Because you're a bit flash, a show off. I may not invite you to my funeral, but I'll certainly invite you to my wedding. You're trying to book my spirits up. Yeah. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Nothing they needed. You go and have a shave and I'll whistle round with back. I could do with a shave. Mm. Hey. What? You haven't seen me this afternoon. Don't worry. Your secret's safe with me. And you'll have to give that present back. I'll give it to Mavis if you don't mind. I don't mind. Though what she'll do with it, I don't know. Thank you. Have you got the Anglin Times, Mavis, please? No. Mrs. Walker? Fred, on your way to the Rovers? Just going down now. Shall I wait for you? No, no, I've got one or the two errands to do, thank you. Oh, well, I'll, uh, I'll see you later then. Yes. Ta-ra. Bye. Does he actually buy them? Uh, pardon? Those magazines. No, I don't think so. Oh, that's a relief. Wouldn't like to find one of them under his pillow when he was doing the room out. <laughs> Beastly things. Yes. Yeah. I wonder, love, could I have some large paper handkerchiefs? I think I've got a cold coming out. Oh, thank you. They say it's loneliness, you know. What? Makes people resort to reading, that sort of thing. Oh, do they? Mm. In fact, there are some people who say that they fulfil a need. Really? Mm. Oh, How do you spend your off-duty hours these days? I beg your pardon? Well, I haven't seen that nice young man of yours around, uh, Derek Wilson. Oh, well, he writes quite often. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, dear, they say that man is the hunter, don't they? Rubbish. Man is the prey. And I should think that your Mr. Wilton was the sort of young man who could easily be run to ground. <laughs> Even you could do it, dear. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Uh, two visitors, shall they? Oh, I, what do you two want? Oh, well, we wondered if you'd gone to the police yet. No, I've not had time. Police? Well, Mrs. Ogden said she was going to the police because of, well, you know. Well, there's an accident, wasn't there? Oh, <laughs> some accident. We thought we were dropping it down our own chimney, honest. Well, it could have been worse. Oh, aye. They could have had to clean it up like I had to. We are sorry, Mrs. Ogden. We would have cleaned up if we'd known, honest. Well, it's easy to say that now. Well, we do apologise. Yes, and we'd like you to accept these as compensation and as a token of our sincere regret oh yeah that no go on Ellie you can't want more than that no well very kind of you thank you very much you have cleaned up I mean there's nothing you well, want to do well your looks very nice very real it is too I had something to do with putting that up oh artistic are you Mr Ogden well I didn't mind say so you know <laughs> supposing I haven't cleaned up proper yet well, you wouldn't have offered to finish off then, would you? Well, oh, yeah, if there'd been anything, definitely. There is. I've got a bedspread in the sink and a couple of pillowcases. Not to mention two of Stan's shirts. Well, you see, a lot of the soot cascaded into the bedroom as well. There's plenty of hot water and soap. No, we haven't had his tea yet. Well, the sooner they're done, the sooner they're dry and back on bed. All right. I suppose we've no option. Have you got a washing machine? <laughs> no, we don't run to machinery here, Chuck. 
Now, Stanley thinks washing machines only live in laundrettes. Oh, well, come on. You better get it over with. I didn't know where any soot in my bedroom. We hadn't. Them things was due for a wash, anyway. though. That bedspread's been due for six months or more. <laughs> Have a jock, Stan. You pick the coffee cream and I'll saw your hand off. I never thought they'd be daft enough to go and do it. <laughs> I mean, a brick on a rope. How primitive can you get? Oh, I'd love to have seen Hilda's face when that brick landed at her feet. I <laughs> might say it nearly crowned her. <laughs> oh, Joe, you give me belly. <laughs> hey! <laughs> what? You do realise you're laughing, don't you? Of course you? I do. It's the first time you've laughed all day. Well, I've had no to laugh at, have I? Well, did you get Hilda's wage? Did I, Egg? All I got was a shriveled up lamb chop. Two burnt potato cakes, a piece of soap she said were cheese, and the inevitable special sherry. Here you are, my dear, she said. Much better to break bread together and enjoy a glass, rather than get involved in sordid discussions about money. I were done for, weren't I? Oh, you'd let her get away with murder, you would. I know I do. I've met me match. There's no I can do. It's as if I've been hypnotised. By a snake. Ah, no, you said that, Fred. <laughs> you know, I didn't mean it. Still, she's least of me worries. What's happening about the house? Well, Rini reckons I should see a solicitor. Somebody else has said, get locks changed. If I were you, I'd stick it out. Call his bluff. Yeah. yeah. Suppose he's not bluffing. Hey. Now, that's a big improvement. I thought it was me that was picking you up. Yeah, well, I were ready soon. And then again, I thought, supposing he's gone into another decline? Oh, no way. No. I should think not at all. Do you know, if you had gone to that wedding, Liz might have decided she should have married you instead of your Stanley? Definitely, darling. 20 years ago, definitely. Thanks for tidying up and everything. Oh, think nothing of it. You know, you're looking pretty good yourself tonight. Well, thank you. Do you mind if I uh, smudge your lipstick? Well, I can always put another layer on. I didn't know you were that grateful. Gratitude's the last thing I'm feeling, darling. Oh, and by the echo got you ready. You look as if you'd fell out of one of them Wild West saloons. Shut up, Elder. I'd still look better than you do if I slept in Edge all night. Hm. Floozy. Yeah. Oh, Lord, lovers, and I thought I looked rough in the morning. Have you just got up, or haven't you been to bed? Don't you start. Well, give us a packet of tea, Rini, love. It might just save me life. That's if I'm not already dead. Oh, I think the air of the dog might not come amiss. Like half a bottle of whiskey, drunk meat. I haven't got hangover. I couldn't get to sleep. <laughs> And when I did, I kept dreaming I got this council house. And when I got there, it were a doll's house. Everybody could get in it except me. Oh, talk about weird. I woke up <laughs> shouting once. Hey, are there any developments about your house? Not a thing. I'm still there. I've not heard a dicky bird from Ratface Baldwin. That is going to make you a present of it. You know, for, um... Don't say it. I uh, think you might hear from him today. How's that? Well, according to any bishop, he's coming round here. Well, if he tries getting in that house, I'll rearrange his face for him. Ooh. Mind you, he'd probably thank me for that. Put that on slate, Rina. Really. Okay. See you. Shh. Hey, do you think Mike might try to get her out of the house? Mm, I'm sure he will. I think you made a very good job of that, lad. Please, Mrs Sharples, please fly straight to me head. Why don't you try and find yourself a full-time job? Sure you could if you tried. I mean, you're no dummy. Oh, not a dummy, Mrs Sharples, granted, but a dabbler. You are? You see, it's all right me doing little odd jobs like this, mucking about, but you ask me to do anything on a big scale, no chance. I haven't got the concentration for it, you see. I think that's why I wasn't a very successful criminal. I couldn't think big enough. No criminal, just a big daft crate egg. It's not what the scuffers reckon. Oh, well, they don't know you as well as I do. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Anyway, don't you let me down, and you will if you don't find yourself a regular job. You know who finds work for idle hands? Oh, he's got a job on with me, Mrs Sharples. I'm not naturally energetic, you see. Now, where's this cup of tea and lump of parking you promised? Over there. Help yourself. 
You not having a snack? No. I'm not hungry. You know, you do look a bit off-colour, if you don't mind me saying so. Have you got a cold coming on? If you must know, I'm worried. Oh, I. I don't think Ken Barlow's told old Albert about his wife killing herself. Oh, he must have. I don't think he has. I think he can't face it and he's gone away and tell him when he comes back. Oh, well, that's all right then, isn't it? Not if Albert finds out accidentally from somebody else. I reckon the shot could kill him. What happened to Valerie very nearly did. Mrs. Ogden? Oh, join the club. Hey. Never mind, she'll come, Mrs. Ogden, yeah. What's this? To Mr. Baldwin over at Factory. What's it for? Search me, I need work for him. He doesn't take me into his confidence, you know. Oh, Oi. What's all that about? Oh, just a little surprise for a mutual acquaintance. We'll do the best we can. I'm not making no promises. I've got enough paperwork here to last me a week, never mind the rest. Well, can't Deirdre do some at paperwork? With a new baby to look after. Well, she could do it at home, couldn't she, while Tracy's snoozing. I mean, we don't want your missus turning into a vegetable in that flat. Hmm, it's not a bad idea, that. I'll put it to her. And if she's agreeable, does that mean I can get lock on my door change quicker? I shouldn't think so. You'll still be way down my list. And I hope your rotten rabbit dies too, Langton. But I'll tell you summit, if I do get the old heave -o from number five, guess whose door I'll come knocking on? I've already tried sidling another bird in at home. Deirdre won't hear about it. Hey. What have you done to Pat Lynch? She just lashed out at my ankle out, Bert. No, she won't get over. Where the hell have you been? Alec Fish has been screaming all morning about this shower fitting. I've got it, haven't I? I'll take it round this afternoon. Yeah, coffee and a nuggle with Rhea Rita. That's where you've been skiving. Yeah, I called in the cabin for a coffee, yeah. Uh, or so what? Save you making it. You're putting a lot of hours in with her these days. And nights, like tonight. Anyway, I'll get this round to Alec, eh? Yeah. See ya. Hey! Don't get right as cramp. <laughs> Oh, yes. Uh, no, thanks, Alf. Better not have another drink. I'm playing hooky as it is. Maybe it's a lonely sulk if I don't get back to that shop. And believe me, toothache has no torture like Mavis sulking, if you see what I mean. See you. Right, hey, blooming it, you. Hey? Happy, you know, full of life. Oh, well, she ain't never noticed. Oh, fellas. Look, I know what him back there thinks about. What do you think about? Well, have I told you about this little pain I get under my chest? Yes, lovely. More than a dozen times. Yeah, well, that's what I think about. Oh, go to the doctor's. He's sure up moaning. Well, every time I think I will, it goes. Look, you'd be better off thinking about what he thinks about. Why? What's he thinking about? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Rose return. Yes. Hey, Albert. You're quite a little stranger, lovey. What can I do for you? When? What time? Well, it's either gone dead or he's hung up. Well, was he phoning from Glasgow? It must have been, yeah. Ah, well, it's just to put enough money in to say what he wanted to say. Yeah. You know Albert, it's Skinner, please. Yeah, Tom. Hey, is that Albert on the phone, Betty? Yes, love, he's coming home. When? Well, now he was in the phone box on the station. I'd better go and tell Mrs. Sharples. Why? Well, I just think she ought to know, that's all. Right. Keep me pint warm, will you, Fred? Yeah, sure. Hey, there's nothing wrong with Albert, is there? Oh, not that I know of, no, apart from Janet and... Oh. That must have upset him. I'd been have heard about it, though, wouldn't I? You know? Oh, yes, Kendall have told him. Yeah. Right, I'm off. Yeah. Oh, you've done everything, have you? The stairway, the hallway, the steps. Don't you go shirking because Mrs. Walker's away. I've done everything, Betty Turpin. Oh. It's like a new pin through the head. Any road you'll easy tell, because it's the direct opposite of what your house is like. Oh, that blasted woman! <laughs> oh, that swearing away. <laughs>
Well, I'm waiting. Well, I might ask you the same question. I live here. Oh, I heard different. I understood you'd left. Hey, you saw me coming out of this door this morning. Ah, that was this morning. Come on, Hilda. What's going on? Well, uh, I'm here in my capacity as a cleaner to tidy this place up. Looks as if it needs it and all. Oh, I've got authority. What authority? Oh, never you mind. What authority, Hilda? Well, uh, from Mike Baldwin. Is he up here already? Well, I've not exactly seen him. Well, where exactly did you get this authority? A note delivered to me personal by one of his staff. This morning? Mm, about an hour since. And what does it say, this note? Well, just what I said it said. I have to clean up in here. Come on, let's have a look at it. I'll read it to you, if you like. Oh, come on, let's have a look. I can read, you know. Oh, no. No, this note's my authority. I don't want you stuffing it in your mouth and eating it. Read it then, Hilda. Dear Mrs Ogden, I wonder if you could do me a personal favour. As you may or may not know, Miss Lynch has left my house in number 5 Coronation Street and it has been empty for some days. I wonder if you could just tidy the place up, dust round, etc. I'll be in touch later when I can get away from the office. If it meets with your approval, this could be a permanent position. I shall be needing a cleaner. Yours sincerely, Mike Bolton. Now, what's that if it's not authority? He must have known I was still here. Ernie Bishop or anybody could have rung him and told him. It's just a try-on. He just put in pressure on me. Well, he's picked the wrong cookie. Oh, yes. Hilda? What? Shift as much as one speck of dust and I'll kill you! What's gone wrong? Well... Um, look, there's something gone wrong at all, man. Else you wouldn't be here, would you? Now, is it Ken? Is it? It's his wife, darling. Janet? She's dead, look. Dead? Well, oh! Come on, I'll take you on and I'll tell you what it is. Look, you're going to just tell me exactly what happened. I'm not shifting from here till you do. Well, she took an overdose of sleeping tablets. Now, come on, let's get you home and I'll carry you back. You won't have to come on to the bag myself. This is annoying, dude. Is there no entry for the poor? Eh? No, it wouldn't seem like it, don't I don't know. Yeah. Don't look as if he's coming in. There's still time yet. Seems a funny way of spending your day off just hanging about in here. Well, I've no better to do. Suit yourself. I intend doing. What was biting her? I don't think she'd like it if I told you. Three guesses, and every time it'll be Baldwin. Yeah, you won't be far wrong, love. Well, we tried to warn her, tried to tell her it'd all turn to tears, but would she listen? Do you ever? No, cos we've all got a blind spot about fellas. It's like part of his brain doesn't work. It's an actual deformity. It is, really. Am I seeing you tonight? I'll think about it. You're loud. <laughs> listen, if you bump into Mavis, you've not seen me. <laughs> Take her out again, are you? So? So? He's taking her out again. Good afternoon, Mr. Baldwin. Hi, buddy. Hello. Give us a scotch, will you? A scotch. Lynn? Ah, no, not for me, thanks. I've got work to do. And we all. I haven't seen you around much here lately. I had to go to London for a while, a couple of problems. All sorted now, isn't it? Oh, I wish mine were. Anyway, see you. Yeah, see you. Hey, hello. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You've got a bloody nerve. Pardon? You know what I'm talking about. No, I don't. Using Hilda Ogden to try and get me out. Use you know. It'll take more than a broad hint to get me out of there. I thought I'd made that very clear. Oh, still in number five, eh? You know damn well I am. Heard you gone. Liar. That's what I heard. I've told Hilda never to show a face in that house again. And the same goes for you too. Understand? Not very nice out, is it? No, not very nice. Get that down, you. Yeah. I'd have put some whiskey in it if I'd had any. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. You see, we're not a young woman. Oh, well, it's true enough, lad. Why didn't Ken let me know? 
Well, I suppose he just kept putting it off. He's had an awful lot to do. Putting it off? That's all his been his trouble, Dad has. He put off telling Janet where he stood until it were too late. I think Janet knew where she stood. That were her trouble. And he never should have married her? Well, maybe not. Once he had done, he should have stuck by her. Hey, Albert, them were the rules that we lived by. Our generation, yours and mine. Ken's got a different set of values. Yeah, look where it's landed him. Oh, well, we'll get over it, Will, lad. He's had plenty of practice. But she won't, will she? Poor lass. She must have been desperate. Have you ever felt like killing yourself, Albert? What's the point? Who would miss me? I have. After Alfred died, and I could see all those years stretching in front of me without him beside me. It was more than I could bear. You did bear it, though. Oh, I... With God's help. Don't think Janet ever thought of turning to him. Pity she didn't turn to somebody. Now, pull yourself together, lad. I know it's a cruel world and it's something I've never understood the need for. But crying has never helped to change it. I know you're upset, but we can't bring her back. And she's happier where she is anyway. I wonder if that's true. I'm sure it is. But I like being a little housewife and looking after Tracy. I'm enjoying it. Well, you could do an hour or two. I'll bring typewriter home. By heck, you've changed your tune, haven't you? However... Well, you said you wanted the mother of your child to give up work, be a little nest builder. It were up to you to bring the gravy in. Did I say that? Yes, you did. Ah, oh, well, that's when the economic situation must have been completely different. It's all hands to the pump now, ask Jim Callaghan. Look, why can't you get somebody else in? You can afford it. You're busy enough, aren't you? Well, it'd be goodbye forever to you then, wouldn't it? Because we wouldn't be able to sack her. Not without compensation. You can't do that these days, you know. You can't even sack somebody with sleeping sickness. There is that. Anyway, it's all very well for you to say you like the domestic bit now, while it's still a bit novel. But how about in a year's time when you're suffering from Duster's elbow? You get a tennis elbow. Oh, well, housemaids need then. And your brain's all addled with a diet of Radio 1 and building bricks. All right, all right. Bring the typewriter home. But I want paying. Ready cash, love. The only kind. I never believe another word you say. You know that, don't you? How do you think that the human species has survived, or any other species? Tell me. Adaptability. I'm just adapting. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, have you a minute, Ray? You're wasting your time next week at the soonest. Look, there's been a development. I want that lock changing today or I'm out on the streets. I know I am. What's all this? Well, Baldwin's going to pull a fast one. He's already tried once. Now, I can't stop in that housekeeping watch every minute at day. I've only dared to come across now because I've seen him drive off. Please, Ray, be a mate. Sorry. Ray? What? You heard the lady. I'm too busy, you can see. Look, unless you put her a new lock on, you'll be stuck with that lock till Kingdom Come, because I am opting out. Adapt to that if you can. By heck. You stick together, don't you, you different animals? No more than fellas do. OK, I'll be round in an hour. Thanks, Deirdre. It's me you should be thanking. Hey, you're just her husband, love. Any hey, road. One in the eye for money bags bowling, and I don't mind that. You always have to get the last word in, don't you? That's right. Go and put kettle on. I will, but only because I love you. Give us a bar of chocolate, lover. Yeah, well, I did my best, Mr. Baldwin, but uh, she got very violent. Threatened me, she did, physically. I thought of taking her on on your behalf, like, but, uh, well, she makes two of me, doesn't she? I mean, I'm more your dainty female. <laughs> oh, so I got you involved, Mrs Ogden. I honestly thought you'd gone. Well, as she should have. I mean, she... As she will. Oh. Well, will I keep the key or what? Well, why not? No, I just thought, uh, I mean, when you do get her out, you might want to be changing the lock, just to be on the safe side, you know. <laughs> it's that. <clears throat> Anything else? No, 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 no. You know, you're stuck for somewhere to stop. I've always got the empty flat here, you know. As a matter of fact, I only advertised it today. Thanks, but I don't think I'll be stuck long. See you. Hello. Hello. You've got a funny look on your face. He's 
been making a pass at you. I think I've been making a pass at him. Well, tell me more. Go on, tell me more. I've only told, asked him to stop here, haven't I, at the flat? Come into my parlour, said the spider to the fly. Oh, he just came out absolutely shameless. God, I must be desperate for a fella. Well, can't you go to Bath Street or something? Can you? One question I didn't ask you. Did he accept your invitation? No. Well, thank your lucky stars, because you're not up to coping with the likes of him, same as Bet wasn't. Yeah. There you are. My usual high standard of workmanship. You're a pal. I'll kiss you if you like. Uh, no thanks. I'll get no tea if I go home smelling a midnight in Paris or whatever. What are you having for your tea? Fish fingers. Oh, where's all the romance gone? I think it must be all them fish fingers we keep eating. Pull the door shut behind you when you go, will you? I'll get some up for my tea and... Thank you, Ray. All right. No, you still call round here? I don't. What's your story? Been doing a job for a bit. Like what? Put a new lock on. You're flipping joking. I'm not. Oh, don't tell me that's why you're here and all the crafty cow. Not bet Baldwin. Hey? Baldwin, he asked me to put another lock on here. He's a bit late. Who says so? I do. This one on loot for yourself. Well, I can change that. No way. Baldwin's a very good customer. Yes, and Bet's a very good mate. Well, she has been, especially to you. She's got the skids under her. He'll have her out of here, no danger. You're not getting any help from me. I'm going to change that lock. And I'll hang one on you if you do. Go on. Very nice of you to ask me to stop for me tea, Mrs. Sharples. Oh, well, you deserve it. Yeah, I don't get much home cooking now. Monkey's missus thinks the cooker's for keeping the fish and chips warming. I have <laughs> a lot more that think the same way, and all. Do you know, I was stood behind a young woman in the supermarket yesterday and she had two baskets and they were full of chocolate biscuits, bottles of pop and tins and packets of stuff. Now, what sort of food is that for the family? Yeah, it's convenience food, isn't it, Mrs Sharples? It's bone idle food for them as don't want to cook. Old Albert's getting in more than his 40 winks, isn't he? Ah, oh, well, he's tired. But I had to make him go and lie down. Yeah, he's a tough old stick, isn't he? He's not as tough as he'd like to make out. Shook him up, did it, the news? It did. It shook me up too and all, I'll tell you. Yeah. It's a last resort, that, isn't it? I mean, there's no need for it. The world can be a very lovely place, even for the totally deprived like me. Yeah, do you try telling some folk that? Drown in champagne and then Sue wants someone else. She were like that, you know. Nothing ever satisfied her. I think that pie's gonna satisfy me, Mrs. Yarples. Yes, well, you keep your fingers off it until the spuds are ready. They'll be in, in two minutes. Hello, Albert. Your nose twitching? No, it's not. Well, you two cackling has woke me up. Welcome back to England, Mr Tatlock. What's it like abroad these days? Glasgow's all right, and don't you get making any funny jokes about it. I'll tell you some, Albert Tatlock. Your temper's got to improve if you're going to stay here for Who a few says days. I'm going to? Well, Auntie, you? you can't go and stay over there. Hey, she's right there, Mr Tatlock. Well, oh, she is. Well, sit down and get your tea. You'll be all right there, mate. Hey? I said, uh, have you had a bet today? Hello, Mike. Having trouble? Excuse me. Len gave you the key, did he? Well, I've got news for you. He never got round to putting the lock on. Right, oh, I think it's parking up there. It's parking here and all. Well, shape yourself. You move about a bit, you get warm, and I don't suppose that's good news either. Oh, trust you. Flaming gas bill. Uh, heck, I've met some thankless devils in my time. I only go over for your post because you won't set foot in the place. And don't blame me if you haven't gone to the pools. And don't blame me for not setting foot in place. There's death in that house. There's death in lots of houses. I don't mean that sort of death. What do you want for your breakfast? Out. That's no answer. What do you fancy? Well, if you want to know what I fancy, a kipper. 
Well, you can go on fancying. I haven't got any. Then what the blooming egg did you ask me for? You know, my mother once said there's a use for everything, and by heck, she's right. But the times when I think it would be very nice to have a fella about the place, but five minutes of you cures me. Well, you won't ask me. What I meant was, would you like a boiled egg or a slice of toast? Blooming neck, I get more choice than that from our Ken. Yes, but he's not here, is he? No. Now, don't start again. If you won't go and set foot in the place, how do you expect him to live there when it was his wife that... The, when it was his wife that... The... All right, all right, go on, finish it. When it was his wife what committed suicide in my front bedroom. And he didn't have the guts We to... don't know that she committed suicide. Don't jump to conclusions. Of course we know. Do you want a boiled egg or don't you? Oh, all right, go on then. And I don't like it too hard. Well, I suppose you don't like it too soft either. No, just in middle. <laughs> I might have known. Well, you might not, but it were a surprise to me. Betty chucked light of my life. I'm not exactly behind the door when it comes to fellas and the little ways. But what this one did beggars all description. Nibbling your ear one minute and thumping it the next. I didn't say I wasn't coming in. I said expect me when you see me. Oh, I don't care. Tell her out. All right, tell her me granny's in hospital. I know me granny died last year, but for your information, they're dished out in pairs. This is t'other one. Right. Now I'll see you as soon as I can. Good. Now when I set her up, put the phone down. Ta-ra. Don't blame me, mate. One minute you're papering her with ten pound notes, the next minute you're chucking her out on the street. I don't know how your little mind works. Marvellous, isn't it? Got a flat in London, a house up here, and where'd I spend last night? At a hotel room. Mind you, it's one of the few nights I didn't have any aggro. I'll stick to your hotel, sell the place. I might just do that. Oh, Mrs Ogden, don't worry about number five. I'll explain later. Oh, right time, Mr Baldwin. <laughs> Morning. Oh, goodness, oh. we're all up before the breakfast, aren't we, this morning? Oh, well, we're not all born with silver spoons in us mouths, you know. Some of us has to work for a living. Especially them who are respected as being good grafters, eh, Hilda, like your good shelf. I don't know what it is you're after, but you're not getting it, truth or no truth. I'm after something for Stan's dinner. Marvellous, innit? You state a few simple facts, you eat humble pie, you mind your own business, I've got more respect down the old swan cop shop than I have here. <laughs> What's them pies? Uh, meat and potato, very nice. I'll have a couple. Oh, that's if I'm not jumping the queue. No, carry on, love. I'm just doing my counsellor's bit, you know, listening to the voice of the public. Uh, yeah, ordering meat and tater pies when they should be ordering legs of lamb and then pretending that you care about us. Oh, don't worry. I know who cares about this one. Me all the time. And my husband when he's short of a bob or two. How much? 30p. Good heavens above. That's not strictly true, you know, Hilda. I was only singing your praises to my mate Monkey this morning, saying how you were a woman that knew how to look after a fella. And he said, if she's that good, why don't you go back and stay there? I said, well, you know how it is. But you're not a good Nilda. Not that flaming good, Chuck. Where is it first, Hilda? Rovers at Love Nest. If by the Love Nest you mean Mr Baldwin's house, I'm not going there this morning. Seeing as my employer, who knows a good grafter when he sees one, has just informed me I can give it a miss this morning. He'll be in touch with me later. Oh, why is that then? Well, how should I know I don't go poking my nose in? Something I've always said is that, you know. Never get involved in other folks' affairs. Oh, there should be more like you, Hilda. That's something else I've always said. This might just as well be written in flipping Chinese. Hey, look, uh, which is the input tax and which is the output tax? Then? Don't ask me, I'm only a simple country lad. Hey, hang on, Deirdre said something once. Um, output tax is the tax what comes in and input tax is the tax what goes out. I figures, yeah. Uh, I mean, look at this. Look at this from Crofton's. £37.15 VAT. We send it off to Customs and Excise, and Customs and Excise send it back to Crofton's. What do you flipping credit it? Crofton's have to take on an extra bloke because they can't work it out, which puts their prices up. We can't do any work because we're too busy filling in the flaming books. And there's a... There's a book sheet pen pusher at Customs and Excise taking it in with one hand and giving it out with the other. And that's supposed to put it on the road to security. It's one little correction, blue eyes. We're not filling boots in. We're talking about it and getting nowhere fast. Hey, do you think Deirdre gives a hand? 
Why don't you ask her? Do you think Deirdre would give us hand with the VAT? Drop dead, I'm a wife and mother. I've brought my husband's sandwiches, and if I could have carried the monster, I'd have brought that flipping typewriter back. It's all very well you saying do us a few letters, it'll help pass the morning. As soon as I hit the first key, your daughter starts striking. It's on draw Victoria Street, don't complain. It makes more noise than flipping Concord. What, your daughter? The typewriter. Have you done? Here, chew on them. You chew on this. Mike Baldwin's just like that as to whether to sell his plot on Coronation Street. He's not. Is that straight up? Well, that's what he said. I mean, it's not definite, but... Well, get to him and make it definite. And if we miss out on that again... Ah, look at her. Memory an inch long. Oh, you will see him, though, won't you, Ray? Yeah, I'll see him. Great. I'll come with you, only I've got to pick Tracy up from Mrs Clements. Great. <laughs> Do you think she's pleased? She's not heartbroke. Pleased enough to give us end with the VAT. Hey, there's a thought. You know, you're right, there. Uh, the place isn't the same without Mrs Sharples. Well, pubs are like that, you know. You identify them with one person. It was this pub I used to know in the pool, right? Down Chalina Street. Mm -hmm. They had an old fella there, Smokey Joe. He sat in the same seat, in the same corner, every night for 57 years. The night he died, the pub fell down. Mm -hmm. Just collapsed. Nip and see if Mrs Sharples is all right. Hey? Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, oh, thanks very much, love. Very kind of you. <laughs> it's a real addict, isn't it? He's not the only one, love. Most popular sport in Great Britain, as you know, angling. Second most popular. Oh, aye. Second most popular. Oh, what's the most popular? Well, er. Uh... Uh, is it football? Er, uh, no, love. What? Oh, the cricket? Is it a team game or, or is it something you play by yourself? Or, or in twos like tennis? You play it in twos, love, like tennis. What do you say, Alf? Ah, I would. Twos like tennis. I wouldn't bother if I were you. Well, I don't like general knowledge. Hey, Rita, what do you think's the most popular sport in Great Britain? Never mind, just don't play it with either of these two. You stick to your Derek. Uh, vodka, love, please. Well, I never thought of that. You're quite right, too, love. It doesn't hold a candle to, to fishing. No. You know, actually, I'd quite like to go fishing. I mean, just for the peace and quiet, like, I won't want to catch anything. Oh, I'll go with him, then. He never catches out. Oh, wow. right. It's a date, then. Hey, by the way, Richard was looking after the shop. You are, when you get back. <laughs> Thanks very much, Alf. I'll do you a favour sometime. I just thought you needed a bit of company, you know. You can play it in twos like tennis. Go on. Hey. Your friend's in. Don't worry, I know how to behave yeah. myself. Peter? Morning, oh, darling. Uh, <laughs> could I have a gin and tonic and a scotch, please? Certainly. <laughs> hey, your place tonight, darling. Hey, do you mind? For supper. Ah, that's better. Thank you. Uh, come on, love. Give us a pint. OK, love. Are you on? Are you all right? Bit time being, yeah. Right. I've had a telegram from the agent. I have to ring him after six o'clock. Telegram? Mm. Well, he can't be uh, Gatsby, can he? He must be something big like Golden Garter or Battle. All right, then I'll be your chauffeur. And if we have to stay the night. <laughs> you never miss a trick, do you? You can't afford to at my age. <laughs> Mike, uh, could I have a word? Yes. Right to death of coming in on his own, he was. He needed an escort. Uh, yeah, That'll be the day. Uh, Thank you, sweet. Uh, what about that? Well, you know, you said you might be getting rid of it. I will give him the right to buy. You found one. Don't give up easy, do you? Original asking price plus the cost of the conversion. Oh, yeah, but you'll have to take the furniture off me. I don't want to get stuck with that. OK, subject to agreement. Give us your hand. Right, and no gazumping, eh? Well, one thing, uh, you're going to have to get rid of her. Well, that's not easy, seeing as I don't have a front door key. Well, I'll tell you what, mate, you got her in, you get her out. Have yeah. you got out smaller than this? Mr. Tatlock, that is the smallest bottle of rum there is. The only other bottle I've got smaller than that is eye drops. All right, go on. I'll take it. Oh, I'm coming to Monday then, have we? In a manner of speaking, yes. Oh, yes, of course you're staying with Mrs. Sharples now, aren't you? No milk bills and no food to buy. What's the point? None at all. Treating you all right, is she? Aye, in a way. And you're not taking her any milk stout, but Why should I? Because she's feeding you. Oh. All right, go on. I'll take a couple, then. I shall think so, I know. Yeah? You're not as bad as you painted, are you? I never work. <laughs> hey, you don't want to go bringing babies, you know, on licensed premises. If you keep away from strong drink, love, you won't go far wrong. 
<laughs> Says he had in a bottle of rum. Uh, oh, she gets bonnier every day. Well, what do you expect from my baby? <laughs> Come for your bread, love, have you? Yeah. It's just in back. I'm sorting it, not beauty. Hey, what do you say we go round and have a word with Bet while we're here? Okay, yeah, why not? Rene, uh, we'll call back for bread later on, okay? Okay, love, I'll have it ready for you. Yeah, it's not a bad idea bringing kid with us. We can soften Bet up a bit. Tell her Tracy favours her. Ray, I am not using my child to get round Bet Lynch or anybody else. I just hope she has your car in. Ah, uh, haven't you got a nice mum? Come on, Chuck. I've got a lovely wicker washing basket in my kitchen full of lovely sheets I've just ironed. And we'll soon have you looking like Moses in the bowl. She's in no time at all. You got windy pops too, haven't you? You just hope she has her colour in. Well, I do. All you've got to do is buy a flaming bottle. Shh. She's as happy as Larry. To what do I owe the honour? Don't you know? As I might told you. If you mean Mr Michael Baldwin, we don't do a lot of talking these days. Has he told me what? We, um... Oh, we're going to buy the house. Here? This place? Well, we've made an offer for it, you know. He never said a word. But then he wouldn't, would he? I mean, it hardly affects me. I only live here. Oh, we didn't know, Bets. We thought at least he'd have told you. Well, it's not exactly full of happy memories. It's not even really me. Not even a damp patch. Look, we're not chucking you out on the street, Beth. Kid, I was wanting to get out. But not while you were telling me. Thanks for giving me the excuse. Can I hold baby? You can have her for a week if you want. Five minutes will do. Before I pour this boiling water on your head. Mm. Just about time I can come back. Are you sure he didn't leave a message? Mm. I mean, I thought you'd have said something, wouldn't you? No flaming consideration these days. Get to our age and folks don't care whether you live or whether you die. There's certainly no pleasure left in life these days, and that's a fact. Well, not with you moaning and groaning there isn't. I was enjoying this until you started. Why? Forty-two pence them cost me. What? Forty-two pence, that's what you owe me for them. But you can pay me later on. You mean you're not paying for them? Well, they're a bit pension. Well, how do you think I'm keeping you out of my oil wells? Well, you can get some of Social Security if you just explain the circumstances. I expect they could get something if it was only sympathy. Look, I'll come with you if you like. I mean, from what I hear, you just say out what comes into your head and they chuck money at you. Well, I'm not used to having money chucked at me. I just die of the shock. And then what you do for your breakfast? So you go back and drink your rum and get your strength up for when you start trying to get that 42 pence out of me. How do you turn this thing on? You don't. But it's news. I know it's the news. That's why you don't. I've got misery enough in the house with you. You know what your trouble is, don't you? You're objectionable. By heck. Alvin Tatlock calls me objectionable. That just about qualifies me for the Guinness Book of Records. Yeah, but you could have done worse than me. Come on, tell us. How? Uh, well, I speak as I find that. And as far as bosses go, he's a good one. I don't know how he is as a boyfriend, but I give him nine out of ten, and that's pretty high marking for me. Mm. Where is he? 
Oh, he's over across the road. Ernie Bishop says the accountant's coming over. You know, and that's another thing. He's a damned hard worker. Oh, I know. Look how hard he worked on me. Yeah. Well, why did you give that house up? Oh, not because he asked me. I don't know. They've got a kid. They needed somewhere nice. It were wasted on me. Well, you could have always got yourself another fella in. <laughs> oh, we'd have worn that <laughs> once. Hey, Rini's bed sits still going back in, you know. Yes, that's right, it is. Yeah, she offered it me before. Hey, where's Ina? I haven't seen her for ages. She's looking after Albert. She probably didn't take her eyes off him. Oh, poor devil. Mm. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Come to think of it, that's what Ina's been from time to time. Oh, well, let bygones be bygones. Hey, put a few milk stouts on one side and I'll take her some over when I go across, eh? Here's your chance, oh. Bep. Mrs. Walker's order. Bill's inside. What's she on about? Is that bed sitter of yours still going? Yeah, of course. Do you know anybody? Very well, me. Well, I told you'd always be welcome. Come round and we'll have a talk about it. Right, give us half an hour. <laughs> because they're very good here, you know. They'll stand in for you if you have to nip out. Isn't that right, Betty? Aren't they very good? Well, I only know about one, and uh, by the name of Turpin, she's flipping marvellous. <laughs> See you in half an hour. Right, Tom. She said you'd move out just like that. Just like that. Well, you must have something I haven't got. Perhaps she likes us. Yeah, it could be. You want to tell your missus not to come the old acid? I could sell the place to someone else. I, uh, hear you leaving. Yes. There's a nasty smell in that house. It could be the drains, or then again... It could be a gas leak from someone's big mouth. You're hard-faced pig. hard face is Arnold South of Watford, darling. Evening, Mr. Baldwin. Oh, Mrs. Ogden. I, uh, I'm still awaiting your further instructions, as they say. Eh? Oh, the house. Yeah, well, uh, I'm afraid the job's off. I'm selling to the Langtons. Oh. Yeah, that's for your trouble. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, will you be needing a chair where you're going? What, in the hotel? I don't like you taking your own cleaners in. Oh, hotel. <laughs> well, the doctors all said it was a miracle. After all, she left more of herself in where the fiendal journal that she took home with her. Can't you talk about hotels for operations? Oh, and what about Etty Potter? Eee, Etty Potter. She was a nice woman's surgical, like a yo-yo. Oh, -yo. aye. Nothing but the big pots for her, you know. No. Nothing but the best. Well, look at that last time she had Mr, um, what's his I name, know. from London, foremost yeah. in his field. Yeah. Anyway, you can tell. Molly Pratt's girl's a theatre sister, and she said he used to open her up like zip fasteners. Oh, I am going. What's up, Albert? Well, I mean, I'm not going to stop here and listen to that kind of talk. I'm going to go round at Rovers, particularly seeing as how you brought me now. Oh, I'm very sorry, Albert. I forgot. Never mm. mind, you'll be all right at Rovers with all your little friends. <laughs> what friends? I'm trying to think. <laughs> it goes off if you're stopping. Yeah, why not? Not in any hurry. And, er... Uh, how are you these days? Oh, not so bad. Now, are you getting on? All right. No, you're just talking about your husband, I suppose? No. Oh, well, you know, your own business. Yeah, better than you in this case, Mrs. Sharples. Hey, I'm losing my hand at entertaining him. Would you have a cup of tea? No, thanks, love. I've just had one. What do you mean, losing your hand? What about old Albert there? Hey, that's not entertaining. That's keeping a dog and a grumpy one at that. <laughs> <laughs> you... You must miss your pals. Uh, if it isn't one, it's another. Some get took and some move away. Mind you, I'm not saying that there's plenty of time that I'd be rather be by myself, but uh, by and large, it's nice to be among friends. Hey, what happened to Blondie when that fancy fella walked out on her? Oh, well, it seems she'll be doing a bit of walking out herself. I hear that Ray's by in the house. Is he big gone? Where's she going? Not Paris? Oh, not for long. She's like us, Mrs. Sharple. She bounces. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, then. Let's hear the worst. How much? Well, it's not just a number I've thought of, you know. I mean, I've taken everything into consideration. Me overheads and things like that. Eight pounds a week. Eight? I don't think I can take less, love. Is it too much for you? Well, it's not that. I were only paying that much for a place I had before I moved here. And I had much more room, and it were a regular flat and all. I was thinking of more like six. Well, I don't think I can take less than eight, love. Not till I've had a good try, anyway. Thanks, anyway. I'll see you. Sorry. Yeah. 
You'll be getting sloshed. I know. It's my fourth in quick sticks. What does it matter? There's not many of us left. <laughs> not many like you, Mrs. Jarvis. There's not many like you, thank God. <laughs> oh, like you said, it's so nice to be amongst friends. You've lost a few yourself, haven't you? You know who I mean, Len Fairclough. He was many of the time I thought I'd be sitting in the back pew at St Mary's Church, watching the two of you get wed. I liked him too much for that, Mrs Sharples. Do you reckon she does? I can only speak for myself. Ah. Hey, you haven't changed your mind, have you? I've worked up a hell of an appetite. No, you can come, for I'm turning out at ten o'clock. I've got a lot to do. That is, if you still want to come, after you've read this. What's that? I'm giving you a week's notice, Len, from the cabin, starting from now. I phoned my agent, and it wasn't the Golden Garter or Batley. It was Tenerife for the summer season. Four months in the Canary Isles. And this time, you're not stopping me. What about you and me? Len, I'm going. How do, gorgeous? I'm a zecker with that. Langton sent it. He's ticked off a few better class doss houses that might suit you. I suppose he's already got removal van revving up outside his old place, has he? Hey, look, there's a good near bet. Furnished flat, Garrett Baldy Street. Hall, 16 foot lounge, shared bathroom. Hmm, 16 foot, that sounds promising. How long's that, would you say? Eh, uh, 16 foot, that's, eh. Uh, that's two and a half times me laid end to end. I've suddenly gone off it. Oh, charming. Give us half a bit of will you, Fred. Hey, no, make it a pint. It's Social Security Day. Hey, and I'll risk a pie there to giving out luncheon vouchers. Wouldn't surprise me. There's a couple <laughs> here in Waterloo Place I wouldn't mind having a butcher's at. Oh, it's a good 20 minutes walk, is that bet? Well, beggars can't be choosers, Fred, and the sooner I get out of Baldwin Towers, the better. Well, yeah. Hey, you can come and be housekeeper to Monkey and me. Say, uh, £20 a week. Or oh, whatever you can afford. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Walker. Yes, dear. Well, as I mentioned, Mrs. Walker, Mike Baldwin's asked me... Well, no, he's told me to get out of number five. <clears throat> I was wondering... She's wondering, Mrs. Walker, if she can have a couple of hours off to look at a couple of flats in Waterloo Place. Could I? Yes, dear. Bet, anything I can do to terminate this unfortunate relationship with Mr. Baldwin, I will do willingly. Now, as you know, I have disapproved of it from the very beginning. <laughs> I beg your pardon, Mr. Sharp. She said her. I was the one that disapproved and had the guts to say so. I knew nothing with you buried your head in the sand. I knew no good would come of it. She's always right, you know. I'm not talking to you, Mr. Sattler. Mrs. Sharples, I always disapproved. I just tried to show a little understanding in the face of a face accompli. Oh, that's what you called, is it? I called it living in sin with a married man. I'm getting out of here. I can't stand sight of blood. Hey, do us a favour, Beck, will you? Next time you shack up with somebody, do it in Oswald Twizzler somewhere, will you? Hey, yeah, uh, I live a fair distance away. Sorry, Eddie, I'll try Waterloo Place, if you don't mind. For the last time, Mrs Sharples, I did not bury my head in the sand for business or any other reasons. I just tried to come to terms with her. Well, I did. Anyway, Bet assured me that she would merely be his housekeeper. And don't let us forget that Mr. Baldwin was a single man, after all. Oh, morning, Elsie. Morning, Mavis. Well, where is she? I've heard the good news, our little senorita. Olé. Ah, so it's true, then. What? Ah, oh, come off it. Oh, you mean my new job? Hey, Mavis, where is it? Now, it begins with teeth. Not Timperley, Tewkesbury, got it, Tenery. Uh. Hey, it can't be bad, can it? Six months in the sun and getting paid for it. Here. Look at Rosa. Oh, no, not again. Hotel San Antonio, situated on the beach, excellent cuisine. That's grub to you peasants. Exciting nightlife, star cabaret till early hours. That's me, star cabaret. Do you think I should change my name? How about Rio Rita, the canary of the canaries, or um, Carmen Littlewood? Oh. When do you leave us poor peasants behind? Only next week. I jet from Manchester, and four hours later, I shall be there. Third deck chair from the left, with me feet up, bottle of Spanish flonk at the side of me, and eyeing the local talent through me specs. If 
the planes don't go on strike. <clears throat> What's uh, the matter with her? Well, little friend Mavis here applied for a job in the same hotel as an exotic dancer, <laughs> but she failed the audition. She couldn't get both tassels to go at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Very comical. Anyway, my Aunt Edith says that all the beaches in Tenerife have got black sand on them. You're rotten, Aunt Edith's never been to Tenerife. No, oh, well... She's never been to Alaska either, but she knows it's covered in snow. Oh, give us 20 tips. Hey, and when you get there, remember, fags are cheaper out there. And don't forget this poor chain-smoking peasant when you come back. If I come back. Oh, so there's going to be a job going here, yes. is there, with a flat to go yes. with it? How would you fancy me as your new boss, Mavis Bargum? I wouldn't have put you through it. See, there's another one that thinks Mr Fairclough will find somebody else. Look, I can run this place. It's only a tatty little shop now for cafe. <laughs> if I know Fairclough, and I do know Fairclough, he'll be thumbing through his little black book right now, looking for some smashing dolly bird to put behind his counter. I didn't know Len had a little black boot. Oh, yes, I was. I had love. I'm on uh, page one, of course. You'll be about page, um, oh, 88, with a couple of question marks behind you. <laughs> See ya. Arrivederci. <laughs> that, for your information, is Italian. Can I help it if I'm a globe trotter? Uh, women, I don't know. <laughs> I've heard you say that a few times and all. Yeah, but Tenerife, straight out the blue. Week's notice and she's off. Ah, uh, shop staff, ten a penny. Nah, it's not that cabin I'm worried about. You know that as well as I do. Hey, sling another one of them over, will you? Have one yourself. Oh, no, I've got to get off. Oh, perhaps if you say... You know when I clapped eyes on Rita, what would it be? Three, four years ago? There was something there, then. She was living with that Burke, what's his name, Mary Bates at that time. I thought she was married to him. When I found out she wasn't, well, you know what it's like. Yeah, but you didn't do all about it, did you? No, no. Three years is a long time to keep anybody waiting. But I didn't keep her flipping waiting, did I? I mean, I've had her working for me. We've been out a lot these last few weeks. I mean, we've had some smashing times. We've been very close these last few weeks. Mm. We've still took her for granted, though. Anyway, what do you propose to do? I don't know. I think I might have another go at her to see if I can persuade her not to take that job. I tried again last night. Oh, she's stubborn. She's lovely with it, though. Well, does Rita know how you feel? She must have an inkling after these last few weeks. I mean, that's, that's what I don't understand. If she'd have come to me a year ago, I'd have said, fine, OK, go on. Yeah, good luck. I'll see you in, what, four months' time? But not after these last few weeks. Maybe she hasn't quite got the message. Hey. Anyway, if there's hope I can do it. Ah, uh, yeah, thanks, Peter. I'm sorry to burden you with my little problems, but I've been sitting here after flipping morning. I'm numb. Yeah, well, she'll be back then. Four months will fly by. That's the problem, you see, Alf. I got a feeling she might not be back. No good, eh? Number 24. Well, let's just say it made doggies look like summer out of house and all. Do you know, I think I'll make Likey Potts an offer for this. It's only done 68,000. I mean, she's just run in, hasn't it? Where to now, madam? Arads, Askers. Hey, and we mustn't be late for the Queen's Garden party. Don't want to fall out there. They won't lend us the yacht again. 122B, it's right down to the other end. Hey, and try and look a bit hard up. They might drop the rent a little bit. Good idea, that. So stay close. Oh, ta very much. I could always drive for Lady Chatterley instead of you, you know. <laughs> I never dreamt of going off her like this. Agent had to have an answer pronto. It was my decision, I made it. Could have talked it over. Happen I could. In fact, I nearly told the agent I'd like a word with you first. Why didn't you? Well, come on, why? You can be very persuasive, Len. You might have talked me out of it. Chance of a lifetime or not. And that's what it is. You must see that. I don't see. Same again, Fred. Uh, find it, then. Hey, Rita. Why don't you have a Cobra Libre, look? It's national drink out there, you know. You'll have a vodka and lime. You haven't signed out yet. No, but I've given him my word. But what does that mean to an agent? I suppose he's broken his off, you know. Well, I'm not going to break mine. So what you're saying is you're going into hell with me. That's it in a nutshell, isn't it? Man, these last few weeks have been great. Somewhat special. 
Just like old times, better even. Then why spoil it? Chances like this, especially at my age, come once, if that. Contract arrived this morning, just going through small print. Don't sign it, Rita, please. <laughs> Where's Blondie, then? Where do you think? Well, if I knew, I wouldn't be asking, would I, Squire? She's out there, isn't she? Trying to find somebody to put a roof over her head. Ah, uh, well, it's a cruel world, Fred. Survival of the fittest. We haven't crawled out the jungle as far as some people think. Uh, Scotch and have on yourself. No, thanks, Squire. I'm just a bit fussy who I suck with these days. And I'll tell you something else now. If I was the landlord in this pub, you wouldn't be standing there supping either. You'd be out in that street on your big, fat, cockney jacksy, Squire. Something wrong, Fred? I should have a word with Squire, Mrs. Walker. Oh, nothing to worry about, Mrs. Walker. It's one of those days, isn't it? Nerves, twanging, all that sort of thing. Yeah, we get a lot of that over the factory. I, uh, I thought I'm Bet was sure. moving into the flat over the shop. Well, just between you and me, Mr. Baldwin, she couldn't afford the rent that Miss Bradshaw was asking. She is what is known as a businesswoman, is that Miss Bradshaw? Can I get you a drink? Yeah, scotch, please. Has uh, Bet not moved out yet, then? No, not yet. Oh, taking her time? Yeah. Mm. One scotch. Oh, thanks. Uh, how much is Rennie Bread you're asking? Do you know, I have no idea. Too much for our bet, though. Hey, ask on me. You want double five, then four. Hey, Stan, have you got a minute? Oh, that would have been double five. Now, listen, I've just had a bright idea. What? Well, Bet's not moved out to number five yet, so why don't we move in and gazump the Langtons? Do what, the Langtons? Gazump them, Stan. Oh, don't you understand the Queen's English? Look, we sell our house, we make Baldwin a better offer for number five, Bob's your uncle, they're well and truly gazumped. Oh, just think, Chuck, that big living, no, lounge, centralised We eating. couldn't afford it, they spent thousands on that place. Now, what I want... All five. I've got that. Well, Did let's you? discuss it, Stan. We can at least discuss it. There's no to discuss. Oh, you. Oh, there's a pint on this game. Cold in here. Ah, they invented them contraptions 20 years too late. We should have had them when our Linda and Dennis were kids. Save me making all them chip butties. <laughs> hey, uh, I'll have three of them chicken dinners. You know, Gail and Susie like a good cooked dinner. And uh, three of them mooses. Help yourself. Hey, uh, is that right? Uh, mooses. I don't know, I honest tell them. <laughs> yeah, kid. Uh, how much do I owe you? Uh, one pound. One pound fifty three, oh, yeah. One pound. There's two pounds. You know, you think some of them young ice wires don't half have it cushy today. I bet some of them have never seen a tin opener. You know, when I think back, six months after I was married, I got a very severe case of tin opener elbow. <laughs> hey, up, here's your boss. We're even a bit late getting back to Baldwin Enterprises, aren't we, Mrs. Yes, so we are, aren't we? So hurry up back, else I'll dock your pay and keep you in a playtime to rot all time. Oh, she's a character, isn't she? Must be great to work with. Hilarious. I hear an asking over the odds for that uh, bed city of yours. Over the odds? Who says? Never mind who told me. You just remember that there are blokes whose job it is to go around and assess what a fair rent is. So why don't you just lower your price, save all the aggro and let Bet move in? Ah, oh, Bet sent you, did she? No one sends me anywhere. Certainly not Bet. Look, the rent in this place is fair. The rates all are right, rocketed. All right, all right, point taken. How short was Bet's offer? Just two pounds a week. Right, well, there's 16 quid. That's two months in advance, OK? Yes, I mean, I'm delighted. And I'm sure she will be. I'll knit down now to Rovers and tell her. Now, just a minute. But knows nothing about this. So this little arrangement strictly between you and me, so not a dicky bird to anyone, understand? Certainly not them. Yeah, whatever you say. But what do I tell her? Well, just tell her that you've changed your mind and decided to drop the rent a bit. And get her in this afternoon, savvy? Yes, master. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Squire. Hello, man. Hey, that's a good offer. Uh, excuse me. He's just this minute gone, love, Stanley. No, no, it's you I'm after. Listen, you're still on the council, aren't you? You've not been disbarred or out. No, I haven't. No. Well, um, look, speaking confidential, like, I don't want this blabbing all over the town hall, but could me and Stan, in us matrimonial status, get a mortgage for money, like? Oh, I'm sorry, Elder, I doubt it, love. No, you see, we're dead keen on selling number 13. Oh, it's a good house, mind. Full of conveniences. 
Well, freshly decorated, hand painted Muriel, serving hatch, we'll throw all them in. Only we're a few quid short for the property what we've set aside, Sam. Yeah, well, town halls are a bit short of money for mortgages these days, you know. Hey, you should walk into a mortgage, though. I mean, you've got your property. That's what they call collateral. You want to get yourself down to a good building society. All right, Sam. I hope you've not run out of cheese and onion again. No, actually, love, I want a word. <laughs> Have you seen the condition of these dogs? These feathers look as if they've got the mange. What does it matter you're only playing yourself? Pub, one set of flipping darts. Go on, on top of a 60s club, Albert. You'll get a game down there. Not likely. I'm not going to play with that lot of old codgy. Oh, oh, give over oh, whinging, oh, Albert. I'm sorry, Reem. What, what were you saying? Well, it's about the flat. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, I've been giving it a little bit of thought. And you would be company for me, Bet. Nights down there are sometimes a bit lonely, so why don't we forget the two pounds and you come and move in with me, eh? Honest. Yeah, honest. This you... afternoon? Yeah, you can oh, come this afternoon. Oh, Oh, you've made a young girl very happy. Fred, did you hear that? Reen says I can have corner shop flat. Oh, smashing, Bet. You need to move into that one in Waterloo Place now, eh? Oh, no, I needn't. Gordon Bennett. But excuse me, I've just got something to say to a certain rat-faced louse. <laughs> I shall be vacating number five in precisely one hour, Mr Managing Director, sir. Fine, then. And just one other thing. There are still some decent folk left in this world. They're not all money-grabbing pigs like you. Good for you, Bets. What do you say, Rainey? Yeah. <laughs> arrows, you know, pointed things with feathers on the end. Of course I know what arrows are, Mr Tatlock. I've seen enough cowboy films. Darts! Oh, darts! No, we don't sell darts. I mean, this is a paper shop and a cafe. You haven't looked, have you? But I don't have to look. You just have to go to a, a dart shop. Sorry. You stop noting this dump, do you? Where is she? Who? Well, who the hell do you think I'm looking for, Mary Whitehouse? Oh, Rita. Clever girl. Oh, she's not in. No, she's out. She's she's gone to the wholesalers. And what have we run out of this time? Nothing. What did Albert Tatlock want? Oh, do you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, Mr. Fairclough. Yeah. What now? Well, you, you know that Rita's leaving. But... I had her. Well, uh, she may have mentioned it to you, actually, but, uh, well, I've been here a few years now and... Oh, and I don't come do on, you'll have it dark. Well, I wondered if you would consider me, that is, if you haven't got anybody else yet to be the, the manageress. Uh, well, I mean, I can run the cafe and... I've got I... more things on my mind on who's going to run this place. And just remember, Rita hasn't gone yet. Rita. Rita. It's always Rita. Oh. oh, to put it bluntly, I'm absolutely... Uh, 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 gentlemen present. Thank oh. you, Elsie. What'll it be, Rita? Well, I could murder a cup of tea. Oh, no. The battles in this pub are bearding them, you know. Now, Freddy, as Lady Walker would say, the rover's return can always rise to the occasion. So if Miss Littlewood desires a cup of tea, then a cup of tea she shall have. So brew up, Fred. Bet you'd have me banned from the barman's guild, you. What'll it be, madam? Milk and sugar or lemon? Yes, please. Two lumps and no thank you. Thank you, Mrs Walker. My pleasure, dear. You know, actually, I would have preferred an oldie worldy tea shop in, say, the Cotswolds or down by the dock. Oh, oh my God. Hey, come on, kid. We're all dying to see what you've wasted your hard-earned facettas on. Be my guest. And I've signed on the dotted line and posted my contract. You're definitely going there. You're not just bluffing. Bluffing? I am not. Hey, you know, that's not bad. What's there a sale on a summit? Hey, cheeky cow. Hey, look, better on me, though, stretched out on that beach. I'm not so sure. According to Mavis's auntie, old beach is a black in Tenerife. Volcanic dust. Oh, and here's me thinking it was soot from Paella factory. <laughs> Your tea, madame. Oh, thanks, Ben. Hey, do you know, me and Doc Greenhouse used to flog these at 30 bob a piece. Are they uh, coming back a summit? We artists don't follow fashion, Elsie, dear. We set it. Tell you them, Rita. <laughs> hey, you know, you're taking a chance going by yourself. Yeah. Why? You want to be careful. There's many a young thing disappeared into the wide blue yonder going off by herself. You want to watch it, you know. They're bonkers about redheads out there, bottled or not. You may wind up as some rich oil sheik's little plaything. Oh, I don't think so. They're all over here now. So it could be your chance to end up an oil sheik's big plaything. Mm. Nice tea, Fred. <laughs> I really am going to miss you. Mm. Hey, thanks again for dropping rent. I'm glad I've got one real friend. Yeah, well, love. Don't bother about it, eh? Hey, girls, mm -hmm. I've been thinking. 
Which one of you two Judies is going to walk me home? Oh. Only there's some very nasty old ladies waiting to clobber the poor <laughs> unsuspecting young lad and rob him of his social security. Do you all of a sudden have a blinding headache? I think I'll have an early night. You can take them bottles out with you for helping Bet move in. Yeah, come on, Eddie, I'll let you out. Where's your lead? I could stay the night for protection. You'll be here in spirit on your way. I've slept here before, you know, when Trisha and Gail had the place. Hey, that Gail done half snow. A lively story. <laughs> I have. Eddie, I'll give you a piggyback downstairs. <laughs> night, Dean. <laughs> good night, Eddie, and thanks, love. You're welcome. It's me good deed for the day. I'm still in the cubs, you know. Uh, yes. Oh, Bet, will you get down in shot? Will you unplug Peter, please? Right, love. Thanks a million for all you've done today, Eddie. Borrowing that jalopy and helping me to move in here. It would have been murder on me, Tom. Anything for you, Bet. You're something special. I'm glad you're living here with Rini. Didn't like you living with that little plastic gnome from the smoke. I can keep my eye on you, dear. Night, night, love. Night, Bet. Hey, and if you dream about me, make sure I have a good time, all right? I promise. <laughs> night, night, love. Night, night. Everything's fine down here. Len? Hello. What time is it? Nearly eleven. And you won't lock that door. Could have been Raquel Welch walking in here. I should be so lucky. What do you want? Just want to put something straight, actually. Like what? Well, one or two down at Rovers think I'm bluffing about going to Tenerife. I don't think you're bluffing. Good. Because I'm not. Is that all you came here to tell me? Yeah. Nothing else? Where else is there? Change your mind, Rita. Don't go to Tenerife. I'm going, Len. You're not being fair. I don't want you to go. It's only for six months. That's not the point. All them years. And now when I get a chance to go somewhere different and do something different, you're trying to stop me. But you can't. I'm going, Len. I am going. Will you marry me? Come again. Will you marry me? To stop me. I love you. I don't want to lose you. Oh, Lynn. Now, Mavis. Fair's fair, Mavis. And if I'm going to be spending the next few months doing next to nothing in the sun, it's only right that I should pull me weight while I'm still here in the shop, Mavis. Guess who said that? Who? You. It was one of your more quotable quotes. It's my unquotable quote you won't watch out for. Like what the dash, dash, dash are you going on about now? Me, starting work at half past seven and you trailing in the air at half past nine and you've no need to put dashes in because I'm quite used to bad language from you. Not this brand, you're not. I developed a whole new vocabulary during night. It was something to do while I was waiting for it to come light. I don't think I had a wink of sleep till milk fella had been. Why? Something worrying you. You could say that. Hey, they've not gone and cancelled your booking, have they? But you're still going to Tenerife. No, they haven't. And yes, I am. At least at this moment of talking, I am. Yes, I am. Oh, oh, Rita. Oh, let's just say an alternative possibility has cropped up at last minute. Oh, well, there you are. You see, it's either feast or famine, isn't it? And is the other one a better booking? That, as they say, is a $64,000 question. I don't know about it being a better booking. It's a longer-term prospect. It's a lifetime booking. A lifetime? Well, who would want to book you for a lifetime? Well, I don't mean that you're not good, Rita. I mean, well, well, they don't book anybody for a lifetime, do they? Not even Shirley Bassey. Her husband did. Her husband? Mm. It's not a singing contract, Mavis. It's a marriage contract. I had a proposal of marriage. Oh, you needn't look so flabbergasted. No, but I need. 
No, but I mean... Your needle stuck, love. No, but I mean who? Well, it should be beyond even your limited mental resources to have a stab at that. Not as it feels full of runners, is it? Is it Mr Fairclough? See, Thorny Horse in Ray. Oh, are you going to? What? Marry him or go to Tenerife? Yes. Oh, which? That's why I have bags under my eyes big enough to hump coal in. You tell me which. Morning, Hilda. Morning. Well, sir, I'll try and keep myself free for the flat woman if there is one. I don't think you'll be high on the invitation list. Do you want a bet? Don't men like kidding themselves sometimes? Oh, I don't find them fooling themselves, Chuck. It's when they try and make fools of us, I mind. And they do that all the time. But you know, they couldn't do that if we didn't let them. No, that's true. Hey, what's up with this lot? What? Blooming heck, you better come and have a look. No, she's gone back to bed. She looked awful. Oh, it'll be this bug that's going round. Some of the girls at the factory are off with it. Oh. It takes 48 hours to clear up. Oh, no, she's not poor. She's just had a sleepless night. Mm, probably lying awake deciding which bikini to take to Tenerife with her. No, it won't that. What is up with her, then? Nothing. Now, come on, Mavis. Rita's not the sort to lie awake on that counting sheep if there's nothing up. Now, tell your Auntie Elsie. I'm bound to find out sooner or later. You can't keep secrets around here for long, you know. Mr. Fairclough's asked her to marry him. Hey, yes, he has. I mean, well, she doesn't know what to do, what with being all set to go to Tenerife and that. I mean, if she does go, well, she can hardly expect him to wait because it wouldn't be very complimentary to him, would it? Mind you, they have had their ups and downs, but I know she's very fond of him. But, well, this is the best opportunity that she's had so far, like, career-wise. I mean, well, she's very confused. Mavis, yeah. have you finished, have you? Yeah. I don't think I should have started, actually. You mean he just, he, just, he just stopped and proposed to her out of the blue like that? Oh, not out of the blue, exactly. I mean, he has asked her before. Yes, and we all know what happened that time, don't we? It must be plain bonkers. Oh, I don't see why you should say that. Don't you? Well, then you're not full shilling either. How do you mean, pull plug out? Just what I say. Pull the plug out. Have I not made it clear enough? I don't know how I can make it any clearer. Well, that's what you told me to do when you went to bed last night. You said switch alt lights off and unplug theatre. The heater, not the freezer, for heaven's sake. Well, how am I supposed to know which is freezer plug and which is heater plug? It doesn't exactly take Starsky a notch to find out. You follow the flex! Oh, I'm sorry, Reenie. Is this a terrible, soggy mess? Well, it's not just that. I mean, it's the money involved. I've just had it restocked. There's over 100 quid worth of stuff in there. 100 quid? More! OK, you make the toast, I'll brew the tea. I don't remember inviting you for breakfast. I invited myself. You're very fortunate to have me up and about so early. I usually don't show my nose above the sheets till gone 12 on a Saturday. Oh, what's so special about today? Oh, nothing. I just felt, uh, you know, full of the joys of spring. Well, I don't. Something bothering you? I've got 12 little men hammering inside me skull. I just want to rest a bit until they've got it over with. You know what you're doing, do you, Len? Hey? Proposing to Rita. Now, who told you that? She didn't. No, Mavis. At least Rita told Mavis, and I prized it out of her. Not difficult with Mavis. So now you know. So? So. I think you're plain bonkers. You know that, don't you? Why? Getting married again. Oh, I'm not sure that I am yet. I mean, the lady hasn't said yes. She can't make up her mind between me and Tenerife. No, oh, she will. She's just playing with you. Now, why do you say that? I'll say one thing for you, Fairclough. You're not big-headed. You know, you may not be the greatest catch in the world, but you're the best shield's ever likely to land, and she knows it. You have a lovely way of putting things, Mrs. Tanner. Oh, look, Len, I'm not being bitchy about Rita. OK, yes, I am. I am. I don't like her very much, but... Well, there's not much wrong with her, and she's OK on the whole, but she's not for you, and it's you I'm thinking about. Why all of a sudden? Oh, it's not all of a sudden, is it? We do go back a long way. I so to her and me. Well, not as far as you and me, but far enough. And she is for me, Elsie. Yes, well, you thought that before, and look what happened. You changed your mind. She did. You both did. Well, you did, didn't you? You must have done. Otherwise, you'd have gone back and made her change it again, if that's what you both wanted. Well, maybe we felt we ought to... Think again. It might look as if I'm doing this as a last resort, but I'm not, you know. I mean, I'm not that flipping desperate. If I need a bird, all I've got to do is go out and get one. 
But I don't just want any bird. I want Rita. I didn't realize quite how much until she'd come, though she was almost going. That's it in a nutshell. She wasn't emigrating, you know. She was only going for four months. Yeah, but who's to know? I mean, who's to know what, when she got there, what was going to happen? She might have stayed there. She might have come back. I don't know. I didn't want to take that chance. I need her here. You know, I think... of all the things a fella could say to a woman, that's about the best. I think I'd rather be needed, really needed, by somebody I cared about than anything else in the whole wide world. How much do you reckon's involved? I don't know rightly, until I've checked my invoices. Oh, about 120 quid worth, I think. Oh, I don't look so tragic. I'm, I'm insured. You're insured? Well, why didn't you say? Well, I'm vindictive. I like to see you sweat. <laughs> Oh, no, honestly, love, I never give it a thought. You wouldn't know. Well, how would I know? I'm ignorant. Yeah, well, next time I'll take your ignorance for granted. Well, do that in future. It'll save us both a lot of trouble. <laughs> Our elder says she had never seen such a mess. She'll be insured if she's any sense. Oh, aye. Hey, she will, won't she? That'll mean sort of, uh, salvage. Salvage? Take no notice of him, Mrs Walker. By the look of him, he's up to summit. And what you don't know can't incriminate you. Hey, up. How do you? Hi, hi. Hello. Uh, no, Alf, uh, no offence. I'm waiting for someone. Oh, well, it's private. Yeah. It's a good job we're old mates, eh? <laughs> Fight, please, Annie, love. Well, and what devastating bit of news have you got to tell me this lovely morning? Hey, Billy really said you'd be at home. Aye, I got fed up waiting. Well, I didn't know you wanted me. Do you want a drink, love? No, I'm not stopping. Oh, just a small one, come on. Look, we can't talk here. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Go to our place. You know. I can't. Um, I'm going into town to pick up a dress. Look, I'll, I'll pop in and see you at tea time. Yeah, all right. Have you um, thought? I've not stopped thinking. And? I don't know. I'm sorry, Lou. I just don't know. You haven't talked this business for very long, have you, Miss... Uh... Bradshaw? No. Uh, about a year. And the freeze was included? Yes, it was part of the fixtures and fittings. I took over the policy that they had with you and I paid the premium and changed the ownership. It's all in order. I'm very particular about things like that. You can't afford not to be. Yes, quite, but the point is... <laughs> Do you know, that... I must apologise for having to drag you out on a Saturday morning, but it was only last night that I pulled the plug out by mistake. Oh. Only I'm not very familiar with things electrical. Still, I have learned my lesson. I'll be more careful in future. <laughs> It's a good job she's insured. <laughs> she's not. Eh? I am. This is the policy. I've paid the premium. Yes, I know that, Miss Bradshaw, but I'm afraid you can't read the document very well. Look, I am insured for damage and deterioration. That's what it says. Yes, it is. Damage caused by a variety of conditions. For example, breakdown or burning out of any part of the refrigeration plant whilst in use, arising from either mechanical or electrical defects in the plant. Yes. Yes, but there are some exceptions. Ah. Exceptions. The get-out clause. There's always one. Go on. The company shall not be liable for loss or damage arising from damage, uh, defects, defective insulation due to... Oh, no, no, that doesn't apply. Um, fire, flood, lightning... Uh, no, it's... Uh, war, invasion, acts of enemy hostility... No, uh, Never mind, no. Go on with that bit. Oh, uh, Civil war, rebellion, revolution, insurrection, military or usurped power. <laughs> If she'd had a revolution, she'd not get no insurance. Oh, no. Look, if there'd been a revolution, I wouldn't have wanted any insurance. I'd be far too busy running. Come to the point, please. The company shall not be liable, etc., due to the willful act or willful neglect of the insured. The insured being me. The neglect to being me. Well, you did pull the plug out. You've just admitted it. Not on flaming purpose, and it certainly wasn't willful. I mean, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't even know which rotten plug it were. Oh, I appreciate that, but the fact remains that it was simply an act of carelessness which caused the goods to be spoiled, and as such, the company cannot be held responsible. So you won't pay? Ah, well, it's not up to me, Miss Bradshaw. Oh, go on, then. Hide behind the company's skirts. They won't pay. I'm afraid not. Nothing? The only advice I can give you, Miss Bradshaw, is to be more careful in the future. Yes, and read all the other flaming policies for get-out clauses. <laughs> fact of life. 
Do you know, I'd like to teach him a few flaming facts of life. Oh, Reen, all oh, that money. We'll all be out, mate. Which ones do you want? Ken Barlow. Oh, he doesn't live there. He's moved away. Do you know where he's got to? Oh, it's not far away, if you've got a car. Uh, Mr Tatlock's, number one, next to the pub. Thanks. Nobody in, mate. You sure? Can I get a message? Uh, I'm a neighbour. No, thanks. I'll leave it. I'll be back. Okay. I've come round specially in my lunch hour because I didn't want an argument in front of a shop full of people. There is no argument, Ruth. Well, you've refused me the job. You asked me if you could have the job, and I said, no, you can't, so there's no argument. Well, that's not fair. I mean, I've every right to be manageress if Rita goes. Well, there's nobody saying that Rita is going in anyway. It's not a question of rights. I've thought about this very seriously. You're a loyal, hard-working girl. I'm not knocking that at all. But I don't think giving you full charge of this firm is going to do either of us a favour. You mean you think I can't cope? Well, oh, hang on. Oh, hi, hi. You all right? I thought I'd better pop for it. Oh, hello. Hello. I'm afraid I'd better ask you to go now, love. It's council business. Well, I can't cope, Mr Fairclough, otherwise I wouldn't have asked. I'm sorry, love. I see you. You think that I'm not good enough for your silly little job. Well, in that case, your silly little job's not good enough for me. You're not telling me you're packing it in now. Well, yes. That's exactly what I am telling you. You do seem to be having trouble with the ladies today. Her showing her sharp little teeth. And Rita. What about Rita? Well, she looked to be giving you a hard time from where I was standing. I saw you getting an eyeful in the pub. I didn't notice. Look, I thought you were in trouble. I wondered if there was all I could do to help. I'm sorry I bothered. No, it's all right. Don't bust a gut, Elf. I'm a bit edgy, that's all. Look, I think you ought to know. I've asked her to marry me. What, Rita? <laughs> is she going to? You tell me. Oh, playing that game, is she? Oh, not another one. Why is she going to be playing a game just because she can't say a definite yes or no? I mean, isn't it remotely possible that she thinks this is a very serious step to take and that she wants to be dead right before she goes into it? Well, it's possible. You think that's what she's doing, do you? Yeah. Yes, I do. Well, in that case, what can I say, mate? Best of luck. <laughs> How much? 50p. And if you know where you can get a whole chicken today for 50p, you're a better man than I am, Gunga. Well, he's got a point in a second. What's wrong with him? Very any bread clothes rejects. I've been in shop and seen them. Ah, so have I. Oh, I had Spanish tummy when I were in Majorca. I'm not letting myself in for another go. How can you get Spanish tummy from English chickens? Well, you can if they're off. Look, it's well known the bugs and germs lurk in meat when it's gone off. And meat includes chicken. They're not off. They're just defrosted, that's all. Look, it's the same as you going into the shop, right? Buying a frozen chicken, taking it home, waiting for it to defrost. I'm saving you the waiting time and half the purchase price. You know, for once it's quite right. There's nothing wrong with them chickens so long as they cook today. You'd be perfectly safe eating them. I'll have one this all. Mrs. Sharples, you're an aristocrat. Right, yeah. well, if she's willing to risk life and limb. There we are, Mr. Tatlock. Don't eat it all at once, you'll get half there. I would mind a chicken, mate. Eh? Better than fish and chips. All right, go on, then I want. Uh, make it too. The last week. It's your housekeeping, I'm thinking of. Oh, is it? Ah. For a minute, I thought it might be your big fat belly. Go on and make it too. Yeah. Hey, she's not paid yet. As I was about to explain, I haven't got 50 pence on me. I've got the money at home, so we can call in as you fashion. No. Oh. oh, well, you've been here tonight. I'll fetch it into you then, if you can trust me till then. It'd be nice to think that somebody trusted me. I've got nothing to trust you for, Mrs Sharples. You don't owe me nothing. It's a belated Christmas present. Thank you very much. Well, if she gets a free present, why not me? Because you are not a sweet old lady. I always was quick, especially on my feet. I don't remember inviting no visitors. I'm not a visitor, I'm a guest. 
Baldwin's the name. Oh, I remember. The Mr. Baldwin. The one who makes his own rules. The fellow that walks into your life blows a hole a mile wide and walks right out again. Bet I, I didn't come here for a row. You won't get one. You won't get anything because you're not stopping. Peace offering? You think that's all it takes? Oh, well, uh, we'll call it a flat woman prison, innit? Right. Thanks very much. Don't you want me to stop and help you drink it? Sorry, Mike. It's over. You finished it, I didn't. And now I'm going to pick the bits and pieces up and get on with my life. You know where the door is. See you then, Beth. Thanks for coming. Well, said I would. I was going through some old junk today. Yeah. Came across this. Recognize it? Should do. It's the only engagement ring I ever had. I've still got the scar where you threw it back at me. Where? Here. Oh, come off it, Len. You're as relieved as I was when I did that. Admit it. Rita, let's forget about that. Take that ring back now and keep it this time. And then I'll give you another one. A plain gold one. How long does it take the bands to be read? Three weeks? I can't, Len. Why? I think it's three years too late. I'm petrified. I don't know what to do, and that's the God's honest truth. So I think the best thing I can do is go to Tenerife. Safest. Tenerife? Give me more time to think. Get used to the idea. You've had a lifetime to think. We both have. It's serious now. Of course it's flipping serious. Well, that's why I need more time. I don't want to be sure you're not asking me just because I'm going away. When I come back, still feel the same. If you go, that's it. Is that an ultimatum? Oh, no, no, I wouldn't do that. What I mean is, if you want to get married as much as I do, if you did care, as much as I care for you. You wouldn't want to go. You couldn't go. You wouldn't be able to. It's as simple as that. I love you. Yeah, well, you were a bit previous, love. I don't think you want to worry about, though. I'm certainly not going begging for my job back. I mean, they do have me pride, you know. It's not a question of pride, love. It's a matter of common sense. I'd listen to the man if I were you, love. Good jobs aren't that thick on the ground, you know. They're not. And look, the other thing is, do you really want to be in charge? I mean, think of all the problems. Scott, please. I'm going to be looking after all of you. Hey, who's he? I've got a feeling I know him. I don't know. He's round here this morning looking for Ken. I'm sure I've seen him somewhere before. Oh! Look, I told you you'd regret it polishing off both legs. I'll have no sympathy for you when you can't sleep all night. And don't go asking me to get you no indigestion tablets now because I can't. No bother, no bay. I find a bloke to put that in the magic service. <laughs> Oh, so you didn't find Kenneth Barlow then? No, I've just been to his place. He's still not back. Mm. That's his uh, uncle in the snug, Mr. Tatlock. Now, he lives in a cage, so he must know where he is. But... Top. Uh, Mr. Tatlock? Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm looking for Ken Barlow. Ken? But he's not here. He won't be back till tomorrow. What do you want him for? Is it out that I can do? It's about Janet. You know, you're not from police. Uh, there's no trouble. No, I'm not from the police. I'm Denton. Vince Denton. The bloke Janet lived with. Well, what do you want to know Ken for? Janet's dead and buried. Yeah. The problems she left behind her aren't. Tell him I'll be back tomorrow. And tell him it's urgent.
What are you doing? I'm waiting. You're waiting what for? Christmas? I am waiting for you, my husband, to put down that box and pick up me, your wife, and carry her over the threshold. <laughs> You're joking. You are, aren't you? I am not, you know. We didn't have a proper house when we were first married. Now we have, and I want carrying over the threshold. Oh, blimey, Deidre. <coughs> Come on. Oh. Oh. Well, I'll stare this for you, Langton. You may not be romantic, but at least you're sounding wind and limb. Right, hey, Tarzan! Cop all the uh, ball and chain mark to here. Let's oh, get the rest yeah, of the I'll stuff in, it. eh? Come on, lovey. Little Come and have a look darling. at your new house. Ah. Hello, Ken, you're back then. Yeah, I just got off the London train. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, we're just moving in here, me and Deirdre. Uh, not to forget, Tracy. Give the street a bit of class. Well, we can always do with that. <laughs> What's happened to uh, Ben, Mike Baldwin? Oh, it's a long story, but I gather they've broken up. Oh, no doubt, get a blow by blow account from Uncle Albert. <laughs> anyway, best wishes. It'll be a happy house for you. OK, Ken, thanks very much. Uh, Ken, about Janet. Your Uncle Albert knows. Nina Sharples told him. How'd he take it? Very badly. But I think he's getting over it now. Good. I wish I could say the same. <laughs> Aye, right. Yes. OK. Hey, where do you want this, love? Oh, um, over by the window. <sighs> no. This side of the fireplace. No. I'll make your flipping mind up. Hey, hey, that's my missus you're telling off. It's my prerogative, is that? Make your mind up and stop messing about. Oh, just plonk it down there. I'll sort it out later. <sighs> right. Well, that's about the lot. It's a damn shame that Blanche is your landlord, you know. I mean, it's a pity you didn't owe a lot of money. With these few bits and pieces that you've got for furniture, you could have easily done a moonlight. And now we've got an house already furnished. I don't know. What's bothering you? I was just thinking. I mean, really, I'd have liked to have bought the stuff for myself, you know. Gone round the shops, had a good way up. I wouldn't have minded camping out for a bit and buying the stuff as we could afford it. Ah, you'd have had to and all. Listen, don't forget we're paying for this furniture in with the price of the house. I know, and I know we got it cheap considering. Not grumbling. Oh, keep your face straight, then. It is straight, honest. I'm very pleased with it. Some of the stuff's not what I'd have chosen myself, but I reckon I can live with it. Good, cos you'll have to. Baldwin threw this furniture in with the price of the house, did he? Yeah, well, it's better for us. The mortgage should cover the cost of the whole thing, I'm hoping. Uh, when we get it, fingers crossed and all that. Do you know, I'm surprised at my Baldwin letting us move in. I mean, we don't know for sure we can buy the house till we get that mortgage. Yeah, we'll get it. Yeah, but we're in now. For all he knows, we could tell him to whistle for the money. He's not daft. He's got hostages, me and Ray. He knows damn well that we need all the work we can get from that factory of his. Ah. Oh. She won't feed him. She shouldn't do, not for a bit, any road. You're a little belter, you, aren't you, darling? Do you know that you're growing up next door to me? You got any problems, you come and talk them over with your Uncle Len. She really likes you, Len. I should think so. She's no fool. Yeah. Women are all fools when it comes to fellas. Look at Deirdre. She's crackers over me. <laughs> You've made fools of a few in your time, I know, haven't That's you? That's very true. So why isn't it working with Rita, then? Have you lost your knack or something? You know, I'm beginning to think I have. <laughs> Just think, Mavis. This time next week. Well, what about it? Well, you'll be stood round there, as usual. It'll be light now. There'll be a bit of a lull. You'll have stopped for the first time since you started at crack of dawn, and you'll be thinking to yourself, I wonder whether to have chips for me dinner or a pie from Rovers. And where will I be? Well, where will you be? Well, just picture the scene. The swimming pool of a first-class hotel in sunny Tenerife. And beside the pool, reclining in a daring new bikini, already lightly tanned by the caresses of the sun, me. And surrounding me, half a dozen virile Spanish caballeros, all of them plying me with their attention. I might even think, I wonder if Mavis is having chips for a dinner or a pie from Rover. It's fantasy. Pure fantasy. It's now to so. Of course it is. I mean, in the first place, at this time of year and this time of morning, it's not all that boiling hot in Tenerife. And if you were by the swimming pool, you'd be thinking, ooh, it's a bit on the parky side. I don't know what you're talking about. Of course I do. I read a lot of holiday brochures. It's one of my hobbies. 
And, and if you are lolling by a swimming pool, I don't know where you think all these virile Spanish cavalieros are coming from. Place is crawling with them. <laughs> but they're not lolling about by swimming pools. They've got work to do. And them as haven't don't get anywhere near a swimming pool because they haven't got any money. That's why a lot of them come over here. Do you know, you'd take romance out of anything you would. You're only jealous. I'm not jealous. I don't envy you one little bit. In fact, I think you're making a big mistake. Mavis, I don't hear a word about Len. I wasn't talking about Mr Fairclough. I still think you're absolutely daft. Mavis! But anyway, you, you might not like the job in Tenerife. Of course I will. It's got to be better than this for a start. Yeah, but you don't know that and you won't find out until you get there and then it'll be too late. And even if you do like it, they might not like you. Well, it's quite possible, Rita. I mean, well, they are foreigners and what, what we like in the way of singing and what they like is two different things. Thanks very much. Yeah, I mean, even if everything is all right and you do like them, what are you going to do at the end of the summer? You'll have to come back here and you won't have a job. You'll have to find somewhere to live. Oh, I think there's a lot of snags with it. You can find snags in anything, cos you're timid. Well, I'm not, and I'm jumping at this chance, and I'm not worrying about nothing till summer's over and not before. Well, I think you've been very short-sighted, especially since you've had this Mavis, proposal. Mavis, I have warned you. Anyway, I've never been that impressed with foreign men, really. Oh, no? What about that Spanish waiter you nearly threw caution to the wind over? Well, I'd, I'd rather not think about him. Just as I suspect you are trying not to think about Mr Fairclough. That must have been an early train from London. Yes, it's seven o'clock. Well, do you want filling up? No, thanks. No. Who were it you went and stopped with? Dave Robbins. Oh, that chap you were at college with. That's right. Ah, well. You want a friend when something happens, like what happened to Janet, and you've got none of your own folks nearby? Uncle Albert, uh, I should have contacted you about Janet, and I'm sorry, but I couldn't. I just couldn't bring myself to ring up and tell you over the phone. And then there was the inquest and no, the police. No, that's all right, Ken. I, I know what a big shock it must have been to you. It, it worked to me when I heard. And, I, I mean, you don't want to go worrying about me because, well, I know exactly how you must have felt. Thanks. And don't go blaming yourself. I know that's a daft thing to say because you will. You're made that way. But, look, it weren't your fault. Well, I should have been able to do something. Prevented her from... If you'd have known what she was going to do, do you think you could have stopped it? Could you have been with her every minute? Well, she just wanted a little help, that's all. All that she wanted was something that nobody could give her. Happiness. Anyway, how are you? Oh, I'm all right. I stayed two or three nights at Enid Sharper's place. I couldn't face coming in here, not on my own, straight away. Oh, there were a, a chap yesterday, the, you know, the, the chap that Janet went off with. Denton? Aye. He was at Rovers asking for you. Well, what did he want? He didn't say. She came round here because he kicked her out? Yeah, he looked that sort. Well, what the heck does he want with me, I wonder? I don't know, but he says he's going to keep coming until he does see you. Are you telling me that that Vince Denton used to knock her about? That was the suggestion I heard, and apparently well-founded. Tell me something, will you? Why are women so stupid? Why does a girl like Janet leave a nice bloke like Ken to go and live with a swine like Denton? Well, perhaps the kindest explanation, and the most charitable, is the old expression, the heart has its reasons. Hmm. What's your explanation? Don't ask me. I wouldn't even hazard a guess at what makes women tick, especially now. Hang on a second. What are you going to have, darling? Uh, no, thanks. I'm not stopping. You only just walked in. Yeah, no, I'm looking for somebody. There he is. Hey, Ernie. Hello. How much do I owe you for them passport photographs? Oh, don't be silly, Rita. You don't owe me anything. Are you sure? Yeah, absolutely. It was my pleasure. Oh, I just oh. enjoyed doing the photographs again. It was rather like old times. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> are you sitting down? Have a, have a drink? Uh, no, thanks. I'd like to, but I'd better not. Uh, thanks again for the passport <laughs> photographs. Hey, I've got something else for you, as a matter of fact. Oh. Are you going to be in the cabin later this dinner time? In the flat, trying to sort out some uh, packing. Right. See you. I'll see you. Bye. Mr. Fairclough. What? Well, people say a lot of things in the heat of the moment that they don't mean. Oh, do they? Yeah, I'm referring to what I said to you yesterday. What was that? Well, about the job and everything. I mean, perhaps I was a bit hasty. But... Oh, were you? 
Well, yes, I mean, Mr. Fairclough, I, I don't really want to leave, and, and if I gave you that impression, I just wanted to correct it. Oh, well, I didn't really think you wanted to leave anyway. Oh. No, well, I, I've been thinking it over, and I, I've decided that I want to stay on at the cabin. That is very good of you, you know. Oh. I mean, you've taken a weight off my mind. I never really thought you wanted to leave, love. I'll not waste time messing about. That's why I've come. Oh, what? Uh... It's a building society passbook. It belonged to Janet. Oh, I see. Well, thanks for bringing it around. Well, look at the balance. Oh, good Lord, this can't be right, surely. £7,520? How much? Oh, where did Janet get all the money like that? Off me, mate. That's why I'm here. That money's mine, and I want it back. Every penny of it. All right, well, that's a bit more to your liking. I think I'll nip down to the Rovers for a pint. No, hang on a minute. I think I'd rather have a settee here. Well, that's where it was before, and you said it wasn't right. Well, I don't like it there, no. Well, let's leave it there a bit. I mean, it hasn't had time to make dents in the carpet yet, has it? No! Oh. <laughs> I, uh, I just thought I'd drop in and have a look at you. You know, say welcome to the street and so forth. Oh, thank you very much, Hilda. Oh, you too, of course, Raymond. Hope you'll be very happy. <laughs> Do you know, I was only saying to Stan in bed last night, if Ray and Deirdre are as happy as what we've been, they'll not have much room to grumble. <laughs> what did Stan say? Pardon? Well, when you said that, what happened to Stan? Did he fall out of bed or what? <laughs> oh, uh, he agreed. He said, Hilda, that's very true. Oh. Oh, well, it's very nice of you both, Hilda. Thank you very much. Oh, don't mention it, love. That's what neighbours are for, isn't it? Mm. Oh, and I just thought I'd let you know that if there's ever anything you're short of, don't hesitate. Just pop up the street and ask. Oh, thanks. I'll do that. Yes. Uh, by the way, while I'm here, would you have such a thing as a drop of vinegar? Only Stan's brought chips home, you see, and he's not salted and vinegared them, and I'm right out of vinegar, not a drop in. Well, I'm sorry, Hilda, I haven't got any myself. I have a big box of stuff to unpack there, but I'm pretty sure there's no vinegar in it. Oh. Uh, pickled onions, then, cos they're stood in vinegar, aren't they? No, I haven't got any pickled onions either, Hilda. I'm going to do a big buying in this afternoon for all that sort of stuff. Oh, well, don't worry yourself, love. Don't apologise. No, no, Stan will just have to make do with tomato sauce, Stan, and that's all. Yes, well, I'll not keep you. Now, don't forget, anything you want. <laughs> I reckon Hilda Robertson's faster off the mark than James Hunt. <laughs> he wouldn't stand a chance. <laughs> Happy as me and Stan, flipping it. If I thought I was going to finish up like poor old Stan, I'd join the Flaming Foreign Legion. Don't worry about it, love. If I see you going anything like Stanley Ogden, I promise I'll mention it. Do you know, I think we will have that set here. Oh. Yes, I gave her that money to put into a building society account, but not as a present, not for her to keep. Then what did you give it to her for, then? Well, come on, I'm waiting. Well, well, it was a sort of tax thing, wasn't it? I mean, better in her name than in mine. Well, better for me. You know what these tax people are like. They'll, they'll squeeze you like a lemon, and what with her and me not being married... Are you saying it involved Janet in some kind of tax fiddle? Fiddle? Who's talking about fiddle? It's just a way of keeping your hands in some hard-earned brass. Everybody does it. Not round here, they don't. Nobody's got that much money. Now, look, Yeah, it's you... all right, Frank, it's all right. Go on. I find this very interesting. Well, that's all there is to say. It's my money. That's all there is to it, and I want it. Oh, I come to me. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Well, now that Janet's dead, you're a next of kin, being her husband, so on paper it'll all come to you. Well, I don't suppose she left a will, and I can't touch it, not in there. Hard lines. And what do you want me to do? I knew you'd be reasonable. Well, when the lawyers are finished sorting out her estate, that money's going to come to you. It's bound to. And when it does, I want it. It's mine, and I'm entitled to it. Seems to me that it's the blooming income tax office that's entitled to it. Is that agreed? Don't worry, Denton. I wouldn't touch anything of yours, including money. It'd be very foolish to try. Just a minute. You don't mean you're going to sit there and let this fellow tell you what to do? It's all right, Uncle Albert. But how do we know he's telling the truth? That might be Janet's money. I mean, her own and no to do with him. Oh, rubbish. She was your wife. You know she didn't have that sort of money. Yeah, she was my wife. But for the best part of two years, I knew nothing about her life, thanks to you. Look, I've already said I wouldn't touch anything of yours. But before I hand any money over to you, if and when I get it, I shall want to make very sure that you're entitled to it. Yeah, come on up, Ernie. Ah, that's a big surprise. That is it. Oh. Yeah, go on, open it up. 
It's all song arrangements I did for you way back, only I've, uh, I've been transposing them. Oh, you've gone to all that trouble. It wasn't any trouble. I enjoyed it. I just thought you might want to do one or two of your numbers to guitar accompaniment. Well, that's marvellous of you. Well, it's Emily's idea, actually. Yeah, well, she sparked it off. You know, she yeah. was saying the other night that this hotel in Tenerife that you're going to is going to be a bit different from the clubs around here. That's what made me think of it. Well, it's a wonderful gift, Ernie. And I don't know what to say except thanks. Well, don't say anything. I just hope they'll be of use to you. Oh, I'm sure they will. You know, when I see things like this, it makes me wonder why I'm going. Well, if you weren't going, I'd have been wasting my time, wouldn't yeah, I? Yeah. Anyway, we'll be back later in the summer with a progress report, eh? Well, I hope so. All right, well, I'll be off back to the to the Rovers then. Finish me lunch. Right. I'll see you. Thanks. Right. Oh, hello, Len. Hello. What are you doing here? Do you know, sometimes I'm very tempted to tell you to mind your own business. But if you must know, he's been doing some song arrangements for me, the sort that might be useful in Tenerife. Tenerife, it's all anyone's ever talking about around oh, here. Oh, look, don't start all that again. Don't start what? You know what. You've said all there is to say. It's no use going over at the same ground. Is that why you walked out the rovers? If, it's a, if it bothers you being in the same pub as me, then say so and I'll do something about it. Don't get your hair off. Yes, that was why I wouldn't stay and have a drink with you. Suddenly felt you might have caught me in a weak moment. You? A weak moment? When? Oh, it has been known. Point is, it's no use keep going on about it. I'm taking the job. Right, there's no more to be said. Right. That being the case, will you do me a little favour? What? Will you get that suitcase down, not off at wardrobe? I won't start me packing. Let's get one thing straight, shall we? I don't like you. I never did. And now you're round here like some kind of vulture. I like you even less. So let's get this business over as soon as possible. Well, please yourself, mate. But I don't want to stop you. I'm only here to claim what's mine, that's all. All right, now you say this money in Janet's account is yours. That you paid it into a building society under her name as a, let's not beat about the bush, tax fiddle. Not a fiddle, just a way of paying less tax on money you've invested, money you've earned. Well, I'm helping people to buy houses, mate. You try and ask the ready government yeah, well, for a Yeah, well, a fiddle's a fiddle, but I don't want to argue about that anyway. Now, Janet did have some money of her own. I'd forgotten about that. And she had some money in a building society account long before she could have met you. No, oh, well, now, wait no, a minute. No, no, you wait a minute. And there was a thousand pounds in that when, well, when we were together. And that should be shown in this book somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, maybe she, yes. In fact, she did have, she had about a thousand five. But, but all the rest is mine. She had it off me. You told me you're giving her all the money. Yeah, well, I was going to mention the rest, but you didn't give me a chance. Yeah, well, what I want to know is what else you didn't mention. I mean, how do I know that everything you said about this money isn't a lie? Because I'm telling you, mate, that's why. Well, what's your word worth, Denton? Right, that's it. Kitchen sink will just have to stop here. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Not particularly, no. Nobody did enjoy packing up. You know what I'm talking about. I think you're going away just to spite me, myself. Well, why would I do that? Because I've been playing hard to get for the past six months. Rubbish. I'm simply taking a smashing opportunity. Something I should have done long before this. Here. Come and sit on here like a good lad. Help me get this fast. You've got a damn cheek, I'll say that for you. Here's me pleading with you not to go, and you're asking me to help you pack? Look, if you don't want to help me, you better leave it, get on with it, haven't oh, you? All right, all right. You know, when I asked you to marry me, I was dead serious. I Look, meant it. You promised you'd stay off the subject of marriage. I know. Well, stick to your promise. I can't. Think it over again. Give it some more consideration. I have to. I'll, I'll make changes if that's what you want. What sort of changes? Well, I, I can rebuild my place. Just like we did Baldwin's. Even better, I can... And you needn't work at the cabin if you don't want to. I mean, if you want to stop working, that's okay by me. Oh, good, Len. I've thought about it and thought about it. More than you'd ever credit. The answer's got to be no. I'm going to Tenerife. It's not the end of the earth. Marry me, Rita. I'm sorry. Of course, for young people, moving house doesn't have the same problems. You haven't all those memories to disturb. Oh, you'll feel settled in in no time. Oh, I'm settled in already. 
Best move we could have made. Only three doors away from your best bitter, Mrs. Walker. Hey, you won't be spending any more time in here, mates. You may have gained on walking time, but you're certainly not having more booze in time. Listen, you watch it. You're only here because you got lucky and found a baby minder. I was going to ask you, dear, where is the baby? Oh, Mrs. Sharples came round with a little bonnet for her. Lovely little heart. Knitted it herself. Anyway, she just asked if she could wheel her out for half an hour. Just a short bonnet off, you know. I've been thinking they're that keen on babies round here. I reckon we could hire Tracy out by the hour. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you won't forget what I told you, will you? Anything you're short of. Don't worry, Hilda. I'll definitely be taking you up on that one. Yeah. I expect you'll be wanting to borrow one or two extra chairs, won't you? Like for your housewarming party. Hey, that's not a bad idea in housewarming. Oh, no, you don't. In the first place, it's not ours to warm yet, not so we get that mortgage sewn up. And in the second place, I've had enough of them sort of parties. I still haven't forgotten Eddie Yates and his weird girlfriend. Oh, well, you know, they do say it's very unlucky not having housewarming. You know, there's one party we're all forgetting about. Rita's farewell party. Oh, yeah. she's on I expect there'll be some folk round here glad to see her go. Oh, not that I'm one of them, mind. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I've always found Rita very nice. Do you owe a lot of money a summit, Elder? Not as much as you do, I'll bet. You're absolutely right. I do think we should give Rita yeah. a good send -off. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we could have a kitty for the booze. Mm -hmm. Hey, I don't mind starting a whip round going. Well, fine, you do that and I'll provide the grub. Great. Hey, what? why don't... Oh, no, no more. Oh, I was, oh, was just oh, going to oh. suggest a theme for the party. I mean, Rita is going to Tenerife, mm. which is Spanish territory, so why don't we have a Spanish-style party? Hey, oh, that's not a bad not idea, is it? Yeah, give me a chance to wear my Spanish hat. <laughs> it's still not a bad idea. And don't get any ideas about hanging on to any of my money, Barlow. I've already told you I wouldn't keep anything of yours. I suppose eventually that money will come through to me, and if and when I'm convinced any of it does I'll belong... I'll convince you, mate. Don't worry about that. How? There are ways. I'll be back. Don't want any help. The summit dead satisfying about doing a job you've always hated, knowing it's going to be for the last time. Still raining? Oh, cats and dogs, yeah. Daft expression, isn't it? How could it rain, cats and dogs? Yes, it is, isn't it? I've often thought that. I mean, everybody knows rain comes down like stir rod. <laughs> hey, it seems funny not having you around. Miss me little jokes, will you? Yes, I will. Mm -hmm. Seems funny to me, you know. Not having to get up before a milk fella. Oh, oh, God. Oh, oh, I don't know whether the rain's getting colder or I'm getting softer. <laughs> oh, that would seem to have gone on forever. And it's all right for some, Miss Rita Littlewood. Hey, love it. Time I get to Tenerife, it'll probably be snowing. Aye, and Albert Tatlock's a grenadier guard. <laughs> Never mind, you can always come out to me to your old days. Oh, you must be joking. I can't even raise the fare to get to Not End. <laughs> Has my book come yet? I'll have a look. Oh, why wasn't I born a singer? Oh. You know, when I was at school, I can remember we had a teacher called... Uh, Miss Prend Prendergast, mm. that's it. And one day she called me out after class and she said, Elsie, Elsie love, come here. In future, dear, will you just sing in your art? Welcome, <laughs> 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 will you? All right. Are hey, you coming back later on, aren't you? To this farewell do everybody insists that I am. Oh, I wouldn't miss it. Oh, oh and lovey, don't worry about Len while you're away. I'll look after him. <laughs> You've only got yourself to blame. Look, just tell me what they'd be in it for me if I did marry Fairclough. Sloppy, there's no ambition, drinks like a fish, Thousey lives in like a midden. And while I'm in there clearing it up for him, no prizes for guessing where he'd be. Exercising his supping arm. Who are you trying to convince, Rita? Me or you? I am convinced. That's why I'm going to Tenerife tonight. You're all right for tonight, then, Ken? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, what about you, Albert? I'll have to see you on fix, won't I? Oh, don't do me any flipping favours, will you? What's up with him all of a sudden? No prizes for guessing, Uncle Albert. I think, Kim. What about this money of Janet's? Well, what about it? And what are you going to do about it? Well, in all conscience, Uncle Albert, what can I do about it? You heard what Denton said? He paid that money into Janet's account to avoid paying tax on it. Oh, I know what he said, but I don't know that I altogether believe him. Well, you know how much money's involved, over £5,000. I mean, where would Janet earn money like that? Perhaps she didn't earn it. Then how did she get it? I know. 
Somebody could have left it to her. Like who? How would I know? And you don't know either. But before you get chucking good money away, you know you want to make a few inquiries. Yeah, but where? I mean, where could I make inquiries? Oh. Unless her sister knows something. <laughs> that we didn't have much to say to each other at the funeral. Well, was she upset? No, she's more offhand. They did say, though, that they moved from Leicester about two years ago to uh, Oldham, I think. I wonder if she's in the film book. Well, if she is, I, I should look it up and, and get in touch with her quick. I mean, before you know where you are, this fellow's going to be back chucking his weight about again. Yeah, now, uh, what was her married name? Uh, Ormrod. Ormrod, that's it. Oh. You know, I reckon I look about as bad as what I feel. <sighs> All this sleep you're getting, love. How long was it last night? Two minutes or three? I've been looking at that carpet on the landing. I'm on a track in the pile, facing up and down. You know, I think baby should have a big switch on them so you can turn the flaming sound down. Ah, never mind, love. They said the first two years are the worst. Oh, yeah, let's look on the bright side. <laughs> anyway, what about this do at Reese's tonight? Are we going? Wouldn't you rather go to bed straight after tea? Yeah, it'll not be a late do any road. She's got a plane to catch. Well, what do you think? Are we going or not? Well, chance would be a fine thing, wouldn't it? What about the tyrants upstairs? Mm. Or that we can take her with us and play past the parcel with her? Oh, no, Ray, I want a break. I'll have to get a babysitter in. Yeah, who do we know is a masochist? Oh, she's not that bad. She's a little love, really. Yes, it's just that she's like the city. She never sleeps. It's only me. Oh, is that who it only is? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just popping back them two eggs while I can't stuff you. Oh, uh, you shouldn't have bothered, Hilda, love. Well, I thought you said you wanted a back first thing without fail. Oh, well, you just caught me on the op, you know. How are things? All right. Actually, I was just going to pop up to your house, wasn't I, Ray? Are you? Yeah, I told you. How are you fixed for tonight? Fixed? Yeah, for a spot of babysitting. Oh, I see. Uh, well, no, Deirdre, I'm afraid I won't be able to oblige you there. No, I mean, there's this do on, you see, for Rita. And when you lead such a dull and uneventful life like what we do, well, you can't afford to miss out on a bit of fun and games, can you? <laughs> I didn't know you'd been invited. Well, we've not had a card through the letterbox with gold edging, of course, but we will be expected to put in an appearance. I mean, as old friends of long standing. <laughs> Pity. Ta ra. Ta ra. Mm. Not as clever as what you thought you were. Well, it's all this sleep I'm losing. You're losing? Yeah, well, it's not something I want to talk about over the phone. I'd rather we met. Yes, it is important. It's about Janet's estate. Yeah, apparently, there's some money. Oh, well, I've got a bit of a tight schedule today. Uh, yeah, 8 o'clock tonight. Yes, that would suit me fine. Good. Well, it's right next door to the pub. OK. Goodbye. She's driving over tonight. Is that as soon as she can manage? She works. Well, what about this fella? What if he gets here first? Well, if he does, he does. I mean, there's not really a lot I can do about that, is there? And what you should have done was send him off yesterday with a flea in his ear hole. Oh, yeah. Just like that. Another large scotch, please, oh. love. Right, I love it. Do you know Tenerife at all, dear? No, I don't, Mrs Walker. Do you? No, but I know New Yorker very well. And from what I hear, there's quite a lot they have in common. Uh, so the one word I would say to you is you. caution. Thank you very much. Caution? Now, I know you're over 21. Well over. You're up there, Clough. And I know full well that you consider yourself a woman of the world. But you have to remember the difference. The difference mm -hmm. between the temperament of your average Englishman and his Spanish counterpart they get carried away when it comes to an attractive member of the opposite sex. Oh. It's all due to the Latin inferiority complex, you Inferiority know. complex? Oh, yes. You see, basically, as I see it, they have this enormous inferiority complex about the Nordic races. So, they overcompensate in, well, other directions. Well, I see. if that's the difference, viva the difference, that's what I say. What do you say? I don't know, love. I've never been out with a Spanish fella. <laughs> hey, darling, don't get a taxi to the airport. I'll take you there. I'd rather you didn't, if you don't mind. I hate tearful farewells. Well, I promise not to cry, if you will. <clears throat> it's 
tonight? Yeah, just for a couple of hours, you know. Deirdre, I'd love to, but I can't tonight. Yeah, we've been invited round to Rita's for a farewell drink. You know? Who hasn't? Well, uh... Oh, not to worry. It was just a thought. Well, what about Mrs. Sharp? She's in bed with a cold. Oh, dear. Well, it must be somebody. Yeah. Oh. How's that little bambina of yours getting on? Oh, sleeps like a baby, Betty, all night. She's oh. great. No trouble at all. <laughs> that explains it. What? They're match doctors to keeping your eyelids up. Still, they're only young ones, love. Yeah, so am I. Only trouble is, she's aging me fast. <laughs> right. Hey, listen, you know that brilliant idea you had about going to bed straight after tea? Yeah. Well, it might just happen anyway, seeing as there's not much else to do tonight. Oh, no look. No, there's not a babysitter left within a radius of 20 miles. Well, we'll just have to go to that party in relays then, won't we? You go for a bit while I babysit, and then I'll go for a bit while you babysit. Hey, that's good thinking, that boy, wonder. You're not as daft as you look, are you? What? I'm famous for it. Right, I'll take the first hour. Why? Because I know you. If you take the first hour, I'll finish up with the last five minutes. You just don't trust me, do you? No, it's your face, love. You've got a face that's very easy to distrust. Oh, <clears throat> oh give away your tough devil. <laughs> <clears throat> He's in, is he? How would I know? Well, I'll check, Grandad. Come in. Right. Where have we got to, then? Oh, well, we haven't really got much further on. Oh, come. I meant what I said, you know. Yes, well, I'm not entirely convinced that money's yours yet. When I am convinced, I shall, of course, hand it over to you. Oh, I see. And what's it going to take to convince you? Well, I have something in mind. Like what? My business. And my money? At the moment, I only have your word for that. Oh. You want proof, do you? Something on paper? It would help. Right. I've got this sideline, see? Buying and selling. All strictly cash. Now, I've got records here of all the deals I've done in the past 12 months. And I've made a list of all the transactions, the sums involved, and the dates. And if you check them with Janet's passbook, you'll find that they tally exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, uh, this seems convincing. Sense at last, so you'll do as I say. As soon as you get probate, you draw out the cash and hand it over to me. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you half the interest for your trouble. Yes, there's somebody I have to see first, tonight. Oh, are you stupid or what? What the hell else do you want? It's all down there in black and white. Well, what difference is one day going to make? Well, I'll tell you what I think, shall I? I think you're lying through your teeth. I don't think you've got anybody to see tonight. I think all you're interested in is getting your hands on that money. Not true. Oh, come on, I know your type. All wind and principles, till it comes to the crunch. Till you can get your hands on some real money for the first time oh, in your God's life. For God's sake, Janet died here upstairs in my bed. You honestly think I'm remotely interested in her money? For somebody who's not interested, you're certainly putting up a hell of a fight to keep it. Look, you kicked her out that night, the night she killed herself. You think I'm going to hand this money over to you just because you tell me it's yours? It is mine. Yeah, well, then maybe you gave it to her. Men do, don't they? They do give money and presents to their mistresses, so in a way she could have earned it. I'm not going to argue with you anymore. Either I get that money or... Well, I don't have to put it into words, do I? <laughs> Yeah, fine. Well, go on, then. Get me one while you're at it. So, this time tomorrow, you'll be out in your little bikini, getting brown all over. Well, nearly all over. This time tomorrow, love, I shall probably be in some stuffy hotel disco, going through me songs with a pianist who don't speak no English. That's tough on you. I'll survive. So here's to you. Salud. I'll drink to that. Put my stuff in car. Yes. Yeah. You will look after yourself. You know me. That's what I mean. Anybody at home? Yeah, mm -hmm. come on up. It's a shop. Hey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, What's Gary Glitter got? What I have? <laughs> you can come to my farewell parties anytime. Lovely. Yeah, where can I put this where it won't get sat on? Uh, try a bedroom. Look. Oh, uh, would you take this for me, please? Oh. Love. Uh, what are you going to drink then, Emily? Oh, just a bit of lemon for me, please. My right, darling. 
just a little something to say bon voyage from Ernest and me. Oh, Emily, you shouldn't have. <laughs> yes, you should. <laughs> well, it isn't really very much. It's just a little memento. Well, thanks very much. Can I open it? Oh, please do. <laughs> Oh, thank ah, you. and that's oh, smashing. Look, it's Weatherfield coat of arms. And very useful, too, especially when they start throwing Spanish oranges at you. Oh, <laughs> you can use it as a shield, oh. can't you? There'd have to be little oranges, though. Shouldn't you be putting a record on? Oh, oh has she she gone yet? Going fast. Oh, yes. Merry Christmas. Oh, thanks very much. That's dead helpful. Thank well, you. Well, you don't like it, you can always bathe your feet in it. Don't blame me if your toes drop off. <laughs> well, cheers, Rita. All the best, love. Yes, oh. all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, how the hell did she get it? Well, how does draft find its way through a window? Finds a crack and whistles in. Hello, oh, I'm glad you could make it. Yeah, well, I couldn't let you go off without offering me very deepest solicitations. <laughs> oh, thanks very much. Get a load of the fun, then, eh? Yeah, well, I did hear there was going to be a sort of Spanish flavour to the evening, you know. It's just somewhat I picked up on my last Caribbean cruise. Yeah, she brought it back with a mop and bucket. Well, you've never been to Caribbean, Elsitana. No, that's true, very true, but then I've never been a char lady, either. What are you going to have, Hilda? Well, that's a bit very nice, thank you. I'll have a gin and orange since you're asking. Uh, not too much orange. <laughs> hey, how did you get rid of your husband? Well, actually, he's buried in the cellar with a big hole in his head, but my story is he's babysitting. <laughs> oh, you weren't successful then. Oh, I don't know, Emily. Look, I mean, I'm here, aren't I? Yes. Lad, I'll have a large anything. Hello. 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 Just a spot of paella, if anybody's interested. Oh, is it fishy? Right, yes. Oh, well, it's not that I don't like it as such, but uh, I'm afraid it doesn't like me. Oh, well, it can't be all that bad then, can it? <laughs> I heard that. One gin and orange, shake and not stir. Thank you very much, Well, Rita, yeah. here's wishing you all you wish yourself and many of them. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. All right, can I take your coat? I'm all right, thanks. Ah, oh, how about a cup of tea? Nothing for me, thanks. You mentioned something about money. Uh, yes, yes, I did. Yes, well, kid, the moving finger right. Aye, all of them. Why don't you ask her not to go? You think so? Oh, come on, I'm going to read you like a book. It's her life, darling. Aye, and it's yours too. Well, Denton was obviously right, and the amounts and dates he showed me certainly tally with Janet's passport, so that money obviously came from Denton. But if he didn't mean her to have that money, why did he give it to her in the first place? To avoid paying income tax. That's what he says now. We don't have to believe him. Look, it's not as even as if he needs it. Well, he can't have, can he, else he'd never have done it. What right has he to avoid paying income tax? My husband's crippled with what he has to pay every week. I could use some of that money. But it's not I our... am her sister. We were always close, me and our Janet. You've certainly no right to it. You were separated nearly two years. You wouldn't even take her back when she asked you. Neither of us has any right to it. All right. I'm not greedy. We could split it. Well, why not? Look, it's all right for you, but I'm telling you we really need it. It's Denton's, Mrs. Olmrod. Well, maybe it is. He couldn't exactly make a fuss about it, though, could he? Not without getting into trouble with the tax people. What do they say? Possessions, nine points of the law. <laughs> Ten more minutes. Right. Have you told her yet? No, not yet. Are you going to? When I'm ready. Tell her now. Put her when, in misery. When I'm ready. Yes, why? Well, it's part of my charm, darling. Not actually. Will you miss me? Just a bit. Yeah, of course I will. Especially that white hungover face, first thing in the morning, yelling, why it taking down again this week? Yeah, I will, actually. I'll miss you, too. 
Isn't it about time you relieved Ray? I'm a little of you. Make him sound like Maffa King of Summers. Besides, this is first proper night out of our for ages. Hey, it's all right, this stuff, isn't it? Yes, in moderation. <laughs> I'm only interested in one thing, Barlow, my money. If you've asked me to talk about anything else, you're wasting your time. Yeah, but if you just listen. I never did. I can't understand what poor Janet ever saw in it. Uncle Albert, you said you'd keep quiet. If you can't... All right. All I want to say is, when the money from that estate does come through, every penny in that building society that belongs to you, you'll get. Oh, well, you've seen sense at last. Very wise Yes, but you. not for any of the reasons that you think, Denton. I don't like you. We all did our bit to destroy that girl, but you did more than your share. You're in no position to lecture to me, Barlow. No position at all. Perhaps not. But at least I cared. But not enough to do anything. Look, can I say so much? No, it's all right, Uncle. You keep out of it. That's all I want to say. Right. I'll keep in touch. You're a fool. My privilege. What about the rest of her money? Her sister can have it. She uh, needs it. What about the twins? Don't they need it? Aren't they going to need it? They're growing up, you know. British Airways announced the arrival of B.E. You don't have to stop, you know. I've got nothing else on. I'd rather you didn't, actually. In my case, I'll go. All right. Good. Promise me, Summer. You'll tell Mavis you'll make her manager as soon as you get back. I've already told her. Thanks. British Airways flight BE 130 to Tenerife. Would all passengers who have checked in for this flight please use gate number nine? Yeah. Girl. In you come, that's it. What the hell's been going on? Hello, love. I'm Billy, aren't I? I'm afraid she whined rather well, but not very wisely. She's stoned out of her flaming mind. Sweetness. I give me all loving that baby. You don't know what it took out of me. I told you it shouts at me. Oh, I there, there. Come on. Me. Now, come on, up the stairs, love. Come on, one foot in front of the other. That's... She'll be all right, Wait, don't worry. Yes, oh, oh, only you, but yes. you. Hey, no, 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 don't. Come on, come on. Do Some party. Yeah, well, it's, it's sort of uh, warmed up a bit. Peace offering. Spoils from the party. Oh, well, thanks very much. Is it drinkable? Just. Right, well... Here's to Rhea Rita. Happy flipping landings. Oh, no wonder she's tight. Will Miss Rita Littlewood, passenger on flight BE 130 to Tenerife, please go immediately to gate number nine. Miss Rita Littlewood, passenger to Tenerife. You're a fool to yourself. You know that. I must be. We'll find out tomorrow at the same time in classic Coronation Street. Coming to Granada Plus on Sunday, we have another classic series, Upstairs, Downstairs, kicking off with a special double bill at both three and at nine. Next tonight, live life to the full with the Good Life Guide. <laughs>